everyone. Welcome to our Teacher's Voice Hello. Marathon. So I can see that we have so many people online. It's really great. So today's marathon will be hosting by two people. The first one is our charming Olga Zdan. And Thank you. <laughs> and, and me. <laughs> yeah, me so well. let's get started. Yeah, I, I can see we have so many comments. I'd like to ask you, just let us know if you can hear and see us well. Also, um, yeah, I can see that we have Morocco here. Hello, Morocco. Yeah, let us know what country you are from, just to see how many teachers and how many countries are here with us. Yeah, hi, Miss Olga Fedorchenko from Ukraine. Maria Mamuladze, hello, Abdel Majid Buzian. Yeah, we'll see you today later on. Okay, so let's get started. And the first thing that I'd like to start with is that now we have our founder and CEO of SR Teaching and Learning, the person who allowed us to arrange this marathon and to share all our ideas, tips, tricks, and techniques. So, Mr. Samad Samadam, welcome. Hello, everyone. Hello, Olga. Hello, Eva. Uh, it's very Hi. nice to see you uh, both and actually uh, everybody uh, who is going to join today's marathon. Uh, I wouldn't like to take your time and uh, I'd like just to welcome everyone, uh, everybody from all around the world and say a lot of thanks to ev everyone absolutely who found this time, I mean, to be to to be with us, to join this marathon. It's going to be uh, fantastic, with no doubts. Uh, so uh, I, uh, I, I just um, want to say that uh, all the things that uh, have been done so far, uh, uh, you know, are for uh, you to get uh, more knowledge, more experience, and to be more involved in this uh, amazing event. So uh, I wish you all the best, and I'm more than sure that uh, the marathon uh, will be uh, fantastic. Thanks a lot. So see you. Good luck to you. Thank you. See you. Bye -bye. See you. Okay, let's get started. So uh, we'd like to remind you that our official hashtag is Teachers Voice BTS. So take pictures, post them on Facebook or Instagram. By clicking the hashtag, you will be able to find other uh, attendees and start your international friendship since we have registrations from more than 25 countries. Some of you are watching now and some will watch it later due to some time uh, difference, but it can't prevent us from finding each other and uniting. So we do support collaboration and it is exactly what this marathon is about. We do not compete. We want your voices to be heard. Yeah, that's great. So actually for those who see us and our company for the first time, I'd like to share some kind of information with you. So SAR Teaching and Learning has been established as a teacher professional development company in Baku, but nowadays we have representatives in more than 10 countries. Actually, we are growing, expanding, and you know, we do believe in, in collab uh, collaboration and cooperation. And we do know that together we can do more because we are all in this together. Um, also, um, I'd like to say special thanks to our partners because this time we have partners from different countries. As you can see, we have Ukrainian Teacher Training Center, Suda. Uh, also, you can see that we've already signed a memorandum with Batumi State Maritime Academy in Georgia. Also, please pay attention to our special partner from Ukraine, um, Agency of Foreign Languages, Runa, INT, English Language and Training Center from Batumi, Georgia. We have our partner from Poland, Diesel in Poland as well. And you can see we have another partner. We are proud of being in such kind of good relationship, Lexicolab from the UK. Also, we'd like to mention that it's not the end, as we say, uh, we are partners with Uzbekistan ELT community of teachers, as well as TESOL um, in Uzbekistan. And you can see that here we have a representative from Morocco. Um, you will be able to listen to those speakers as well. So um, I'd like to share some ideas about um, 
what you can get with our company. So soon, coming soon, as you can see, we're going to have a workshop with Rauf Pasha Bailey. So this workshop will be about public speaking. Um, in case you'd like to improve or develop your public speaking skills, please come and join. We'll send you all the information later on. Um, also, I'd like to emphasize and highlight that we are going to conduct a free webinar um, about this very special idea that we as a teachers can have some kind of side income or let's say passive income. So this person, education project manager, Olga Bond from Poland, she um, managed to cooperate with Udemy platform. If you know it, just if not, you can check it. And for this time, you can find her course there and people from all over the world can join her course. And actually, as you can see, she is a teacher can have that uh, additional income. And we'd like to teach you how to do that because we do believe that all of you are really special, creative and talented teachers. Also, we'd like to let you know that it will be our third international IELTS instructor course and actually our trainer is really well known, Mr. Samad Samada. Hello, India. Hello, Uzbekistan. Yeah, so it's highly recommended for you to join this course because, you know, IELTS is really popular all over the world. So we do know how to train you to prepare your candidates to achieve the highest scores. This is our surprise for today. This is something new from our company. As you know, our top trainer, Paul Harvey, uh, he is going to conduct a 25-hour course on TKT preparation module one. So come and join. Uh, believe me, it will be something unforgettable as well as very productive because Mr. Paul Harvey has been training teachers to pass these exams for more than 25 years. So come and join. And another thing for you to know, I'm pretty sure that you know our trainer, Sonia Cook uh, from the UK, who's currently based in Morocco. So she's going to deliver um, a course on setting up and running effective ESL clubs. Actually, I do believe that it's really important to know how to do that. As you can see here, we have so many questions for you to think about, and all the answers can be found during the course, uh, which Sonia is going to conduct with our company. Yeah. And so, so guys, uh, how was your summer, by the way? If you could describe it in color, what color would it be? Could you please uh, share your colors in the chat box? Yeah, yes, sir, that's the question. What about your summer and which color can explain us how you spent your summer? Because, you know, these are the last days of our summer. Actually, as for me, I think that my summer was like a rainbow but mostly orange and green colors. So while we are waiting, what about you, Olya? So, you know, I think that for all the teachers and for all the people on the whole, the summer was different from all the summers we have had before, yes. But for me, it was like my blouse today. It was orange, bright and orange. Yeah, okay, so uh, we are waiting for your answers. Just be active, feel free to participate in any kind of interactive activities because we prepared lots of them for you actually and you can use it them all of them in your classrooms anyway we should continue so uh let me introduce our first speaker um this is tamar delizzi from georgia since 2004 she has been a lecturer of efl at batumi state university georgia uh, then she holds the position of assistant professor since 2014, she has been employed at Regal Rabakidze University as associate professor and from 2020 as a professor at the School of Humanitarian and Social Sciences. And nowadays she works for Maritime Academy teaching ESP subjects. Yeah, hello, Ms. Tamar. Hello. Hello, it's my pleasure to welcome you to see you there. Yeah, perfect. By the way, I'm sorry to interrupt because I do wish to show you the colors and we have the summer was like green and yellow. Also, okay. ah, wow, that is the creative idea, like black and white polka dots. <laughs> perfect. I do, I do like it. Mr. Rashida, it was golden. Yeah, it sounds so wonderful. Yellow, yellow and green. Natia, hello, Georgia. Yeah, okay, yellow. Nice to see you. Super. 
Tamar, we can't hear you. Yeah, ever since I came. So I'm going to share the screen with your presentation. Yeah, Thank and you. then we go. So let me do it. Okay. My summer was a bit like a pink. I care like the ultra pink, but today I'm wearing like a the summer color. Yeah. I need something the summer mood for today. <laughs> for this matter. So can 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 you see the presentation? Yeah. I think perfect. Yeah, just let me know when you want me to change slides. Okay, let's go. So actually, let me introduce myself. My name is Tamar Dolita. I am representing Batumi State Maritime Academy is my great pleasure to be here with you to give you some update uh, before we all return to back to Kulo University for our academic life, which is going to be full of like uh, emotions because we have not actually seen, seen our students for many just uh, to have to say face to face for a long period. Uh, but I really hope that we will be meeting them face to face. So. Uh, now, what is important uh, for us today, yes, nowadays, uh, when we are returning to the back to school, uh, it is very important to actually uh, build classroom community. So what is classroom community? If you go, uh, just go on uh, to like a uh, next slide, Eva. So classroom community, this is a uh, very important uh, so, uh, I say concept nowadays, uh, which we all um, actually uh, so carry out, uh, which we actually encounter. Uh, when we uh, meet each other, when we greet each other, when we want to build up friendly uh, relationship with each other, like uh, this can be like a professor-student relationship or like a teacher, uh, like pupils or children relationship. So nowadays we can all see that. Uh, uh, so it's very, uh, now a custom community during pandemic, during this COVID-19 has removed, has changed its scene actually. And it has removed to our online just environment like uh, when we actually were mandatory, so when we had to, had to move to the like um, uh, online education. So I would like, so uh, Eva, can you please uh, move the slide? I'm already on the third slide. So now I can tell you that the success in the EFL classroom definitely depends less on techniques and materials. Because I think that from my experience of teaching English and meeting students, it mostly depends on like a relationship, yes? On like on the environment, on the attitudes. So this is very important for us to be aware. And nowadays, especially we can say once again that after mandatory transition to the online learning, after the outbreak of COVID-19, so we were tasked as educators and teachers to increase student motivation, student engagement, at, 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 at the same time, we were forced to reduce some kind of extreme anxiety, which was actually related and resulting from COVID-19 situation all around the world. So we as teachers, educators, as parents, of like, of like I have like two sons, and they also go to the school. And so we were actually tasked to engage them and to create positive classroom online, in our case, atmosphere. So uh, now, why is it important to build that sense of community? First of all, it's important not only in like a ritual or for definitely in the real life situation, because it definitely ensures and provides the students with comfortable, uh, I have to say, environment. Uh, and of course, there are many, many, many ways of uh, creating sense of community among adults, because I mostly deal with adult learners, because I mostly teach students at uh, Batumi State Maritime Academy as well as another institution. But still, I try to incorporate in my practice three common ways of, uh, of uh, just a uh, classroom, uh, just community uh, building activity. First, it's very important to know and ask about student identity. This is very important. Another important issue is to listen to the opinions uh, in discussions and understand the perspective, their attitude towards life. And last but not least, it's very important to promote interactions uh, amongst themselves so that they can definitely get to know with each other and definitely start respecting each other. This is very important, believe me. And when we talk about uh, like a, a classroom community, uh, it is definitely formed, uh, uh, it's comprised of students uh, which actually uh, come together uh, to the class, but we, they are on, uh, united under one common goal, an objective, yes? And a classroom community, uh, which is uh, properly organized and which is uh, properly, I have to say, um, uh, established by the uh, so educator and the lecturer, it definitely helps the students 
to feel valued, to feel respected, and at the same time to get connected to, with the student, with each other, and with the uh, educator. And that's why uh, see, we can say that see, like a student and teacher relationship, they are very important. They are even critically important, yes? Because when teachers and students, they have positive relationships, this is definitely uh, positively reflective on the like academic process and academic outcome. So this is very important. And at, at the same time, it increases what we actually want to achieve from uh, all our students, uh, participation. So increases at the same time their yeah, self-esteem. So this is very important. So I'm going to suggest uh, three types of activity, how to build actually classroom community. You are, I, 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 I don't see my slides, are they shared? So in this case, I, I will to continue. So like this. So there are three ways. Now the, the way number one it is to build commu uh, so communication building activity. And how to, can we achieve this? First of all, this definitely strengthens and shares the thoughts between the learners. At the same time, it allows the students to ask questions around the activities, ideas, and gives them with like ready-made solutions. Second, this is collaboration. And how can it be achieved once again? Collaboration means working together, uh, collaborating, cooperating, in peer work, in group work, in project work. Yes, there are a number of options. Number three, this is very important, a skill which is called critical thinking and which I, I think that it's like a 21st century skill. And it's very important for building classroom community and why? Because it uh, teaches the student to look around the problem, to ask questions around the problem, yes? And later on, to make some assumptions and like a conclusion based on this like critical thinking skill. And last and not, and last and uh, not least idea, this can be, I uh, to say, creativity. So boosting creativity, so uh, this is actually slide number like um, uh, six. This means that uh, we need to try different and new approaches in order to get, to get the things done uh, equal with innovation and the innovation. So this is very important, believe me. So when we talk about community building activities, we need to be aware that as teachers and educators that there are a lot of group activities which definitely serve the purpose of getting relaxed get comfortable, move around, so become at ease with each other as possible, yes? But of course, at the same time, they help uh, the students and at the same time, even some uh, like uh, uh, teachers to break some kind of psychological barriers which may uh, exist between people because we are all individuals, yes, with different like a psychic like, um, organization. But there is no doubt that peer work and group work definitely it's an integral part of second language acquisition process, SLA, because it not only provides a unique opportunity for students to improve an array of such kind of like critical thinking skills and problem solving, but also say at the same time, it enables the students uh, to experience diversity of uh, personalities and new perspectives. This is very important. And now I'm going to list some benefits of classroom community uh, building activities. First of all, it fills the students' needs for belonging that they belong to one particular group of the society, community, because they know that they can both contribute to the community's success and they can at the same time uh, benefit from its rewards, yes? Uh, at the same time, it uh, provides a way for all students to be included, yes, and it allows the students to form and maintain some kind of positive relationship, which is definitely very important. And uh, so, so it te teaches the students um, a specific social skills like importance of collaboration uh, and sense of responsibility. Nowadays, we all witness how important social responsibility was for everyone, for teachers, educators, and the students during COVID-19, because we were actually uh, taking care of ourselves, yes, and caring for each other. And positive relationships, we can say that in class, they have a lifelong impact. And why lifelong, a lifelong impact? We can say that students who feel more connected to the teacher, they have some kind of higher academic environment and they are more involved in school activities as they process social, emotional, behavioral and some kind of cognitive adjustment to academic process. At the same time, while all students benefit from positive teacher-student relationship, they are especially important for students at risk. Because believe me, there, are, there can be a student at risk with like a low academic uh, 
uh, achievements or like uh, potential, like uh, uh, low achievement in this case, it uh, helps to protect against negative influences such as negative life events, poor, maybe uh, parent child relationship, a lot of like a psychological problems. This can be a uh, list. And uh, why? Why community building activity uh, important for us teachers and educators? Uh, not only for students, for us as well, it's very important. First of all, we are increasingly under pressure. We, uh, I think all my colleagues, some of the teachers like, from uh, all around the world will agree that especially during COVID-19 situation, we have definitely suffering from this, like, uh, uh, I would say, a uh, very uh, difficult period of being uh, addicted to the online communication, that when you have to solve the problems in like a very limited period of time, that's why uh, it's very important for us to help have healthy class classic community activity because uh, we should also care for our well-being yes not all of it, together with our student learning a second one as language teachers and language educators we know that taking like a, a taking in the language it sometimes this is like a listening and reading we can say like a receptive skills uh, so in it comes uh, together with the poor uh, productive skills like speaking and writing and we have to be patient uh, for our students to get comfortable enough in order to uh, to be ready to get the you know to say necessary uh, output and of course we so we can say that it's very important to use it, the PGD activity which is called positive greeting the door and online greeting because nowadays we have no uh, other way of options sometimes we have to greet our students online yes it can be done in many many ways and of course uh, students feel like that they belong uh, the way when they are part over like a, some kind of inside job, yes? And students feel like a part of community where they have sometimes some specific role. Uh, or like, um, yeah, and it's, uh, some, sometimes when I especially teach like adult learners, uh, so many teachers assign some kinds of student jobs and most students love their jobs because I know that my students sometimes do a lot of summer jobs, yes? And when they speak about it, they really get involved and get engaged. Another very important activity, this can be a student-centered activity, which is called um, classroom meetings. So nowadays we can have it, we can call it online meetings. We some, where some teachers uh, hold some kind of meetings, this can be on particular days, uh, but at the same time, this is very exciting idea uh, because this will enable the teachers to share lots of comprehensible input uh, with the class at the same time to celebrate the success together and often asking more questions to get more information. This is very important. And now we need to be aware that beginning of the new academic year, it is time for creating a sense of community. And of course, your room and our online platform, if it's going to be uh, start and uh, initiated with the online like learning, this is a gathering place, yes? And here, all students should feel secure, nurtured, and supported by the very important environment. And of course, uh, so this new group of um, individuals bring, uh, should be bring with some divergent interests, abilities, cultures, and uh, of course, families. And of course, uh, we need to be aware that, uh, first of all, uh, three principles which we need to also incorporate. This is this includes building communities through identity. This is very important. And your students need to see uh, themselves as protected uh, in the classroom. And uh, that's why we need to even invite their family members to be uh, allow them to speak about families, about their like a group members and etc. Second activities, this can be building community with them. Uh, uh, so through familiarity, and what does it mean? Moving into a new year of group of schools, this can be quite challenging. Imagine uh, when you are uh, receiving new newcomers or whether you are receiving uh, just new students, students, students from new groups, this means that they should be given something familiar. So because in order to feel uh, that they are needed, they are welcomed by them. And the last and not least, building community through warmth and beauty, this is very important. And uh, how can we uh, just say uh, it's a better and the best idea to build warmth? This is smile a lot. So we should smile, we should make just positive eye contact with our students, yes, in order to get connected with them. And of course, trust and credibility. We as teachers and like uh, educators and of course lecturers, we need to actually uh, so make them trust us. And, 
they should have strong belief. This is very important because in order to feel part of the classroom community, they need to feel the same sense of trust as they do at home. So we should be trustworthy individuals for them. That's why we can uh, just once again reassure with eye contacts, building their sense of trusting you. This is very important. And of course, and uh, last but not least, this is predictability. And why is it important? Because uh, predictability is another part of building an environment of trust and at the same time safe. And why? Uh, because uh, when you go to a, like a classroom and when you're a newcomer, this means that uh, you somehow want to foresee what's going, uh, what's going to happen in the next uh, semester, next term. That's why if students are wondering what comes next uh, when I go home, they can look at the sequence to see how many more activities are left for the day. That's why it's very important to give them some plan, some curriculum, some sketch, or like uh, some timetable, what they are going to cover, what they are going to achieve. Yes, this will definitely give them, give them some ease. And, uh, uh, and I can just say, I would like to make some kind of conclusion and like uh, unite all the thoughts which I actually was trying to uh, deliver to you that ultimately essential element of creating a sense of community in our classroom, this is you, this is us, this is me, as teacher, as like lecturer, educator, because at the same time, it's not the number of activities and the materials and the size of the content of the text we are going to cover, but it's our loving, it's our comprehensible, considerate and caring attitude towards the students, towards the children in our classroom family, which helps to create a joyful community. This is very important. And I can tell you that it's the beginning of a new academic year. So now, now my dear colleagues, my dear friends from all to many countries of the world, yes, and I would like to encourage you uh, to create definitely secure nurturing, caring and supporting environment, whether it's like online classroom community or like a face-to-face. -face. Thank you very much for your kind attention. It was my great pleasure to be uh, seeing you here. So am I now I just uh, I'm going to tell you that my colleague from Poland is going to speak about more specific activities for building classroom community. And once again, we need to build the most positive community ever in the classroom. That is true. Okay, thank you, Tamar. Thank you for sharing these ideas. And yeah, thank I'd you. Like, I'd Can like you just press you. the red button like leave okay. studio? Yeah, thank you. See you. Hope Bye. to see you on YouTube. Bye bye. Okay, so let's proceed. And I'd like to introduce a great teacher from Poland, Olga Bond, who is a teacher with more than 10 years of practice, CELTA qualified. Udemy course creator experience as a state school teacher, a university lecturer, an education project manager, and currently is a representative of SR Teaching and Learning in Poland. Hello, Olya. Hello, I'm really hello. happy to hello, say. Ladies. Hello, ladies. Yeah. Hello from Poland. Warm regards. Okay, we don't want to waste our time, so that's the reason why we are going to share your presentation. And actually, good luck. Okay. Thank you. So uh, I will continue. Uh, Ms. Tamar Dalitz, uh, as uh, she was explaining why it is extremely important to uh, work on the community building uh, inside the class and use the activities. And I will show you, uh, I hope I will be able to show you four activities and I have a little bit more. So you will receive those in the PDF uh, document, which you're going to have after this marathon is finished. So the first one, which I would recommend you to use offline, and it may go very well with the young learners, with the teens, and even with adults, it might be a lot of fun. And this activity is called Go. Uh, of course, uh, it will help to develop the collaboration, the attention, and even gain some trust within the uh, group between the students. So um, you will need only to have the space and approximately 15 minutes of your time. Uh, the, uh, how it works, uh, that you need to ask your students to stay in the circle uh, facing each other. 
they can hold uh, even their hands if they wish. Um, then you should pick up the volunteer, let's say student number one. He, in his turn, will have to find student number two who will share the eye contact with him. Student number one will start approaching student number two if student number two gives him a sign. He can nod or he can blink his eyes, but no words should be used. Once number one receives the command from number two, number one starts approaching number two. Meanwhile, number two has already to have some eye contact with number three and so that number one will have some space to step in the place of number two when number two starts approaching number three. I hope you, uh, you get my point. So uh, the game finishes when all the students actually replace uh, the places. It might be, as I said, a lot of fun with the adults as well. Uh, and the best way to actually explain this activity is by demonstration. So you might be willing to demonstrate this activity first and then you can play it. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot tell you if there will be any idea how to do it online, but if you come up with one, please share in comments below and it will be much interesting, of course, to know if uh, you come up with such idea. So the next one would be the bus stop, or you can call it, I love it. So this is brilliant uh, activity because you can do it offline and online. And again, you can do it with all the ages uh, of your students. Uh, it will help students to know each other better, no matter how long they have been together within one group. Uh, basically, to play this uh, game for offline, you will need to have something like two ropes or anything like two desks, maybe two chairs, anything what would uh, allow you to separate the space into two sections. And basically, the space to play with no obstacles. For this activity, you will need approximately 20-30 minutes. So how you start is you ask your students to stay all together uh, within as a group, all right? So between those buses. So basically the ropes will act as two buses. And then you will start giving them some statements, some, um, some uh, words, like pair of words, depending on their age. So for example, for young learners, you can use something like cat or dog book or TV. For teenagers, maybe you will want to say book or movie or McDonald's or pizza. Or for your adults, you may say city or village or maybe uh, Facebook or Instagram or something like that. And the point is that your students will need to make a quick choice. What do they prefer? So the first word or the second? If they prefer the first word, let's say book or movie, they prefer book, then they hop on the left bus. And if they like movie more, they hop on on the right bus. Uh, they need to make their choice within two seconds. And those who cannot decide within two seconds, leave the game. Then to make it collaborative, you know, to make them pay attention to each other after you run approximately, let's say, 10 pair of words, you can ask them with whom have you, uh, have you been the most? And you may hear something like, I was with Peter, uh, I was with Peter like three times, or I was with Natalie all the times for all the words, or something like that. And again, they know each other much better. How you can do it online? So, for example, it's just one option. Maybe you will come up with a better idea. You can ask them if they like the first word more, they turn right on their right, their right hand, you may see it as the left, or they like the second word more, so they turn uh, left, their left hand. So obviously you will need to give them something like 10 seconds to look around, maybe half a minute to look around in order to remember with whom they are in the same group, who likes more uh, the books and who likes more the movies. And after, again, after you run approximately 10 pairs of words, 
you will ask them with whom they cooperated the most in the same group. And so here I will share with you a ready-made pair of words and of course this list can be endless, you can continue with um, your students' preferences because you may know their taste and you know what to put, what will be interesting for them. So another one is emoji stories. Uh, as a crucial part of our modern world that we are using uh, mobile phones and we are texting each other and always use emojis. So probably the most interesting it would be for the young learners and teens. However, again, you can try to play it with the adults as well. And this activity is also very good because you can play it offline or online. So it encourages brainstorming to come up with a commonly accepted idea and design. Of course, it will uh, enforce students' creativity, storytelling and analyzing, and it will develop attention and, of course, collaboration as uh, expected. What you will have, um, uh, what you will need to have for this activity is ready-made sentences, stories, which I created for you and you can, of course, extend it. And if you are playing offline, then you will need at least one mobile phone within the group or maybe a tablet or maybe you will have a computer or a smart board and approximately 20-30 minutes of your time. So how it works that you, uh, depending on how big your class is, you may split your class into three groups, let's say, and you want to name them as ABC or 1, 2, 3. Uh, or you can give uh, your students choice to pick up a name for their group. Uh, then you will explain to them that each group will receive their own sentence and they will have some time to actually transform this sentence into emojis so that the other groups will have the chance to guess what this sentence is about. For example, for young learners, you may pick up something like a girl likes her doll. Right? So they will use the emoji of a girl, heart, and for example, a doll. So they will have some time, so group A will have some time to write this sentence using emojis. Then group B will have approximately 30 seconds, you decide, of time to guess this sentence. If this sentence is incorrect, group B didn't guess, then group C tries to guess and the group who guesses gets a point. So at the end of the game each group will have some amount of points and of course the, the biggest amount wins. Otherwise you can use uh, emojis already so you can give your students the sentence with emojis like for example here in this picture. What does it mean? Two and two dancing ladies. So they may guess that it means it takes two to tango. So, of course, such idioms or famous expressions or some um, phrases can be used with the teenagers or adults if you had uh, studied idioms previously. So, obviously, you can practice it and it will be fun. Another option, of course, that you can give your students absolute freedom and they will have time to come up with some story, maybe some dialogue. So here it's like your imagination is not limited and your students' imagination and creativity is not limited. And how you can do it online? If uh, there is the option, you may um, split your groups into breakout rooms and either give them the sentence or give them time to come up uh, with one. And then um, uh, they present it and the other groups are uh, guessing or otherwise if you do not have the chance to to use the breakout room so you can just play this as group A has the sentence they presented group B so like one by one so again if you will come up with the better option please let us know in the comments below and here um, I prepared for you some sentences which you can already use tomorrow if you wish. So for the young learners you can say something like uh, there are three cars and one bus near the school or uh, let them try to do it rained at 6 p.m. or something like that. And for teams also there are, there are already 
pictures which you can just print and cut or draw by the way another uh, option that your students can draw those emojis if you have enough of time uh, and as you can see some uh, idioms right and here you will have the pdf file and those emojis will be uh, well visible for you and these are the famous phrases uh, said by famous people and uh, in the same pdf file you will have the link which you can check and use uh, even more of these famous phrases so another activity is common ground and i would recommend you to play this activity with the teens or adults and again it is absolutely amazing one because you can adjust it for playing offline and online and this activity will help your students to uh, discover fellow like minds in their class and of course it will focus on communication between team members and teach them uh, to be open-minded and respect other people's opinions so what you will need to have is a ready-made set of statements applicable to the age of your audience which i also prepared for you and you will get it with this pdf file and approximately 30 minutes of your time which of course you may extend in case you wish so what you will need to do is to split your class into two three four groups as you wish they can be as big as you wish but approximately the very good number is seven uh, people in one group it's like the golden number uh, so they stay each group stays in one circle and um, all of them receive the same statement which you give them so for example for teens you may say summer is the best season of the year and you give them approximately you say start you give them approximately two minutes to start discussing what they think about this statement do they agree or they strongly agree or they disagree or they strongly disagree so after talking to each other within one group uh, for two minutes, they see who has what kind of opinion on this statement. So if it is, for example, adults, you may say, all restaurants must be required to say how many calories are in their food and let them discuss do they agree or strongly agree, disagree or strongly disagree. So once the time's up, you say they need to turn within the same circle, turn back to each other they cannot see each other and you you give them the signal I give them the signal what is your choice in two seconds they need to give you uh, their choice they don't need to talk don't let them say any word but beforehand uh, please agree what kind of sign they will give you for strongly agree strongly disagree and so on so for example uh, the fastest which I can come up with is one thumb up for agree two thumbs up for strongly agree so disagree or strongly disagree then they uh, made their choice within two seconds and they say now turn so they turn again face to face within their circle and they need to count how many people have the same opinion so for example the majority would just agree so if you have more than 50 percent of the same choice then the team has one point let's say or if everyone agrees on the same opinion so all of them strongly disagree let's say so they have two points and of course the group which has the most points wins uh, and uh, again you may ask them uh, like what was the uh, what was the biggest number of the same opinions or why did you disagree you had the time to uh to understand what, what other people's opinions and so on just just let it be a fun and again how you can do it online so you may split the groups into breakout rooms if you have such possibilities so they can discuss if you don't have such option as breakout rooms just give the group the sentences one by one and obviously in such case they will be different uh, so in order to make other groups busy for example group a has their own um, sentence and they discuss and they 
close their eyes let's say and they show you thumbs up or they can turn backwards and show you like that or something uh, so again you can come up with a better idea uh, and share it below um, and the other groups group b and group c will have to count so that they uh, they stay in touch and they are busy while the other group is showing their opinion so everyone is involved so here are the examples which uh, you can use uh, examples of the sentences for example for adults you can use like alcohol should be illegal or you may say television is the leading cause of violence in today's society or for the teens you can use breakfast is the most important meal of the day and so on and so on again the list can be en endless if you come up with the uh, good sentences please share it below uh, another activity is dream car, uh, which probably would be the most interesting for young learners because it will encourage them to draw. Teens also uh, can be involved, but maybe they will want to draw not a car, but something else. You can come up with this idea or even with adults, it might be a lot of fun. So what you will need to have for playing offline uh, is some kind of pencils or pens, chart papers, markers, whatever they can use for drawing. Uh, if you come up with an idea how to do it online, please share it. Uh, I think you can use the same chart papers and markers and just stick it to the screen, but obviously you will need a little bit more uh, time and, you know, but it may be very fun. So what you will need to do is give each student a piece of paper this chart paper a few pencils and markers and give them um, a time to draw and design so they need to decide which part within the group for example if you split them into groups uh, who is drawing which part of the car for example one will draw a a door another one will draw a wheel and so on and so on then they have to cut it in case it is fine with you to give your students the scissors if you don't want that's fine you can still place the papers next to each other so after your students are done and they're finished um, let's say you gave them something like 15 minutes of it if it is too much you can um, uh, you can give just five minutes and then as in one group they can uh, place this um, picture on the floor and see how it went so of course it will be a mess but uh, expectedly everyone will be laughing they will have a lot of fun and still this is collaboration this is work together this is timing and this is stick to each other's design this is pay paying attention to each other within uh, the group and also there is a tip for you uh, if you never did something like that before try to do it yourself see how it goes because then you will understand uh, what exactly you can suggest your students to draw maybe it will be a dream car maybe it will be a bus a school a house a spaceship or maybe if it is with adults ask them to draw imaginary planet anything what can work with your students you know them better uh, and uh, basically if you try this on your own this will help you to understand how much time they need so another activity which you will get with this pdf file is don't wake uh, the dragon that would be imaginary village and students cannot talk to each other but need to leave to escape this village uh, in order of their height right so of course you as a facilitator will be checking if they succeed it or not or instead of high you can choose something like a birthday date or street number or flat number so anything what you can come up with another activity is the plot like a storytelling so here you will have the instructions uh, and you can use it night trial also another wonderful activity uh, which you can play offline you should be of course um, sure that the space you have is safe for your kids so uh, please adjust it to young learners and teens and again you can adopt it uh, for playing with your adults they might might receive a lot of uh, joy as well 
So here you will have the uh, instructions and in the PDF file, uh, you will have the pages uh, which uh, I am um, responsible for. So this is Tissel in Poland in Facebook. On Facebook, please subscribe, please follow us. Um, Olga Bond is my private Facebook page. You can connect as a friend, of course. Uh, Tissel in Poland for Instagram and my email address. Please stay tuned, please subscribe because we have a lot of uh, uh, events. We are doing the interviews with the absolute absolutely talented and wonderful teachers from around the globe we have three events as this one like a web webinars or seminars and of course the courses and we are announcing uh, these on our social media pages so thank you so much for your attention and for being with me thank you for your comments i was trying to do it fast so that i I was not able to read uh, the comments, but I saw the hearts and it's so kind of you and it's extremely warm. Uh, thank you so much. And as I promised, you will have the links as well for the activities so you can have even more activities. I'm done. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Can I ask you to stop sharing your screen right now? Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah, definitely. We get so many comments. All of them were great. Stop sharing. I stop okay, sharing. so I, I'd like you to see this comments. Yeah, you can see. Thank you. It's these comments you. are from Morocco. This oh, one is from that. Azerbaijan, uh, from Georgia. Mike Birch, thanks a lot for your round of applause. So many nice comments, and you'll be able to thank read them. Uh, yeah, great. So, just thanks for your presentation. Thank you, uh, you can continue watching this on YouTube. By the way, you can contact other teachers and just discuss what you want with them on YouTube in the chat box. So, guys, okay. Olga is coming. Okay, great. Um, so, what I want you to know now. Yeah. So, can you see these books here? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you know them. So, what do they have in common? What do you think? Actually, this is our surprise for you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you know that very famous book, like Teaching Lexically. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of you use that one, like Roadmap. By the way, Ola, what do you think? Do we have something in common here? Or do you use any of those books in your teaching practice? Yes, to be honest, I use all of them. But uh, what's in common, uh, I guess, the brightness of the cover? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 what about teaching lexically? So, guys, if you have any ideas, what, what, we, what do we have? What kind of idea we have behind all these books being here presented on one page? So, yeah, we still have thanks a lot. But I do wish to get at least one idea what's going on right now and what you yes. will see. I see Olga Fedorchenko is... Is the right. Yeah, yeah. Here's the correct answer. You can see, yeah, because I I know that Miss Olga, she is a great fond of lexical lab. So for today we have uh, two very special surprises. So the first one is coming. Hello there. My name's Hugh Della, and along with Andrew Walkley, I'm the co-author of the Six Level General English series Outcomes, which is published by National Geographic Learning. And we also wrote together the methodology book Teaching Lexically. And on top of that, we run the website and online English language school, www.lexicallab.com. I'm basically making this video just to welcome you all back to your new academic year, to wish you lots of luck and lots of success as you go ahead in your new academic year. And also just to remind you, as if you needed reminding, um, of the importance of ongoing, continuing professional development. Like all of you, uh, I sometimes find it hard to keep up with professional development. Uh, I'm busy. I teach a lot of hours online. I do a lot of writing. I do a lot of training. I do a fair bit of traveling, or I did 
in the days before COVID-19. Uh, and also I've been teaching a long time. And so I think it's easy to get to a position where you feel like, ah, I know everything already. Or you get to a position where you just feel, I don't have time, I'm too tired, I'm too stressed. But I think for all of us, we need to do our best to keep up with what's happening out there, to keep up with new ideas, new technological developments. And that doesn't mean that we have to wholeheartedly embrace all of the new ideas that are out there. Sometimes, I'm sure for many of you, this is also true. Uh, I read about what other teachers are doing or I watch videos about what people are doing. And I think, yeah, I'm basically doing something like that myself. Or else I think, ah, I don't agree. I think actually it's better to do things this way. And even if that's all that continuing professional development brings to you, I think that's still really important. Um, giving you a kind of yardstick against which to measure your own progress, against which to measure your own development, your own ideas. On top of all of that, of course, even for myself after almost 30 years of teaching, Sounds terrifying when I say it like that. Um, I still sometimes come across ideas that strike me as interesting. I see things where I think, oh, I could use a little bit of that in something I'm doing. And I also know that I got to where I am myself in the profession because of a hunger for new ideas, for comparing and contrasting my own beliefs about language teaching with the beliefs of those that had gone before me. And as a result of all of this, I think I would just urge all of you to try to build in some time for professional development in the new academic year, even though I know it's not always easy and it's not always how we want to spend the little free time we have as teachers. Um, Finally, I guess I should just say how pleased I am and how pleased Andrew is, how pleased we are as Lexical Lab to be working with SR Teaching and Learning uh, and how pleased we are to be working with Samed and we're looking forward to further cooperation, further trips, further tours, further courses that we run together. So enjoy your teaching. Um, if you don't, who will? All the best. Take care. Yeah, that was great and rather unexpected. But as we say, the best is yet to come. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. By so, the way, by the way, at the beginning of the conference, Eva promised that you would get lots of surprises during this magnificent day. So guys, please meet a co-founder of Lexical Lab and the co-author of over 20 course books, workbooks, and teacher manuals, innovations, outcomes, perspectives, and roadmap, as well as the methodology book teaching. Wow, wow, wow. It's because of so many Lexically, <laughs> outside the club. Oh, sorry, outside of class, he does sports, football and running and enjoys long walks around London. He has an allotment where he grows fruit and vegetables and he also likes reading, film and the theater. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Andrew Walkley. Yes. Yeah, hello. It seems that you covered the whole biography right now. <laughs> I didn't know that stuff before about growing something. Yeah, hello, Andrew. Really, Sorry, thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> so embarrassing. Oh, dear. Right. Well, thank you very much for that introduction. I don't know if I can let ever live up to that, but um, yeah, it's wonderful to be here on this. Uh, Teacher's Voice Marathon and working again with SR Teaching and Learning. It's good to be here. How's it going so far? Looks good. It, it, it oh. looks good. Yeah, we have so many teachers online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, they have comments like you see, wow, what a biography. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds so That's nice. So actually, this, this kind of uh, educational event is less formal as usual. We do have something like conferences, so that's the reason why we don't call it as a conference, but as a marathon where we can share our ideas or just we can lift up each other, um, just 
I don't know, to say something good and beautiful. Exactly. Yeah, which we all and, need. And, and to discover time. some new facts from your biography. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Good. So, actually, if you have any nice ideas to share with our teachers, but you have time limit, like five, seven minutes, not more. We yeah. would be more than happy just to hear your words. Anyway, the main thing is that we are going to go back to our schools. And as nowadays, people say that we are going back to the new normal. So maybe you have some kind of ideas to share with us. Yeah, so I mean, uh, I, I kind of thought very briefly to think about why, how we become teachers in the first place in a way. So, I mean, uh, you know, when I, I started 30 years ago, I was my, in September, I stepped into my first classroom as a teacher, as a teacher in Spain, in Valencia. And uh, I suppose uh, I was told I would have some training before I went. Uh, but actually the training turned out to just be a kind of little pattern on the back of encouragement. They gave me a course book, which I had no idea what to do with. And then I was sent off into, uh, into the classroom. And so um, in a way, uh, my first inkling was like thinking about the past, which in my case was uh, a very formal school where we had to listen to um, recordings of people going, écoutez et rappelez. And then you repeat whatever they said. <laughs> or uh, the teacher kind of standing at the front and kind of, um, you know, telling us, dictating basically questions and answers that we would have to have in the, in the exam. And neither of those seemed a very good, <laughs> good models for me with my students, my new students in, um, in Valencia. So really my first, my first CPD, in a sense, was just working in a little tiny staff room, more like a cupboard, where we would exchange lots of, kind of like we're doing today, just this kind of quick ideas for what we could do in class, exchanging kind of good speaking tasks, little kind of things like this. And, you know, tips about how to do the, the, the classroom. I would say it was a bit chaotic, and I had no idea how it fitted in. My main principle, actually, at this point was just filling the time. Uh, but then I did some training. I did a CELTA or equivalent of it. And then later I did a diploma. And I think the important thing about the training is, in a way, I'm not the same teacher as I was back then. But it did allow you a bit of time, and this is why I would say, even if you haven't done training or if when you're approaching CPD, is thinking just a, a little bit of time about what what you really think about language and teaching and learning. What think about some of the principles that you have, and that's certainly what we tried to encourage uh, here at Lexical Lab, and that maybe allows you to then think about what it is that you are going to do with uh, your uh, CPD. Because in a way, I'm not the same teacher as I was in uh, when I finished my diploma now in 1994, so over 25 years ago. And what's happened is what's filled that time has been continuous professional development and you know i've been to training days workshops conferences webinars i've read books i've seen journals i've been very lucky in seeing the odd observation and but the two kind of big things throughout all of those things was one was actually just trying to write material for myself and for my classes and sharing that material. And if you have time, I would really recommend that as, as, as a, a point to help you think about how teaching and learning and how your classrooms work and developing your skills. And But the biggest thing was basically going back in a way to chat. It was sharing my student stories. 
enjoying the successes that I felt I'd had in class, laughing about the failures that I've had. So, uh, and throughout that, that's, you know, been the main thing which has led to me, you know, being what I, I am today in the classroom. And I would say if you can find it, you know, I, I've been like, I always say that actually Hugh and I have, are really mainly friends, uh, but it's been through that friendship and friendship with other colleagues, which has allowed me to develop as a teacher because it's allowed that space to have those, those conversations. So really look for that in your teaching if you can. So just as a kind of final idea of thinking about, you know, on any day, any kind of CPD that you're doing, thinking about these kind of eight things. I think the first thing is be a bit skeptical, as Hugh kind of mentioned. Not everything is going to agree with what you have. And, you know, I personally always doubt anybody who says this will change your life. This will change everything about your classroom. There are no magic bullets. What we're looking for, you, you know, yes, we some things may help us improve the learning for our students. We hope that they will do. We believe that they do. But most of the learning happens beyond our classroom. And what we need to be thinking about is how we can enjoy our teaching, enjoy our learning more. So think about your principles. How do what you're seeing on your CPD, on your sessions, how do they fit with those principles and practice already? And it, it is being open, despite our, you know, including our skepticism, still being open, even where we don't agree, as Hugh said, perhaps there is still something there that you can adapt to your teaching, your situation. And obviously in this, the new context of lots of online teaching. But from there, what was key is basically talking about it, talking with colleagues, sharing what you've learned, sharing your ideas, and then actually where you think there's something in it, trying it, putting it into practice. And then what do we do after that? Well, talk again, talk to our colleagues, share what we're feeling. Uh, and, you know, if you can then further use that ideas to write your own materials or to adapt the course book materials that you have. You know, I think that will help cement some of these ideas that you are building up through your CPD and events like this. And over time, really what we're looking for is deciding if it helps you and and finding, you know, the enjoyment for you and your students in your teaching and learning you know, finding the, the, the person you want to be in the classroom, because ultimately this is what will make everybody uh, feel comfortable and, uh, and enjoy our, our work situation. So thinking of those in mind, enjoy the rest of the day with uh, this uh, marathon. Uh, we've already seen some great uh, presentations and you can think of I'm sure enjoy some more and uh, just to reiterate what uh, Hugh said I really look forward to working further with um, SR teaching and learning we are developing some online uh, courses ourselves which we'll be sharing with with them and uh, have a great day great to Thank be you. here Thank you a lot, Andre. So uh, I'd like to add just that out of everything you have uh, already mentioned, we can uh, make a conclusion that in order um, that the uh, teaching process would be, um, we can say, productive and enjoyable. So that's the teachers who need to make a community. Yes. Yes, absolutely. It's kind of like sharing, sharing and talking with each other is so important because in the end, while we have a, a very communicative uh, you know, we're, we're working with other people. Actually, in some ways, we're, we're always quite a lonely profession. It's just us in the classroom on our own and, you know, without people seeing and interacting with us. So in a way, you know, these kind of events are all the more important for that, to share those ideas. Okay. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks a lot. You can see so many comments here. Just cheers. Thanks motivational uh, so motivational just as i can understand these comments 
they're going from Azerbaijan, then we have from Morocco, Philippines. So many people are inspired with your ideas. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Okay. It's a pleasure. I hope it goes Thank the rest you. of the day goes yeah. well at the beginning. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. So guys, we should continue with our marathon. So the next person we are going to present right now is our academic, because as you can see, the format of um, this marathon, like we decided, actually the story is that one month ago we had an interview with Mr. Paul Robertson, who is the head of this international journal, he's actually the founder of that journal. And during that interview, he mentioned that, that unfortunately academics and classroom teachers are like from two United planets, from two different planets. So we decided to unite these two different planets. And that's the reason why we have like 10 minutes of rationale and then practitioners, they go to explain what they go to their presentations and they explain you what should be done um, in your classrooms. So the next person I'd like to uh, let you know about is Elmira Tashibaeva from Uzbek uh, from Kazakhstan. Uh, Elmira is a PhD student, student majoring in pedagogy and psychology master program coordinator in Karaganda State University. She has been teaching English since uh, 2003. Her research interests focus on educational technologies, including the use of linguistic corpora and shaping pre-service teachers' digital competency. So please meet Ms. Elmira from Kazakhstan. Hello, Ms. Elmira. Hello, Elmira. Hello, everyone. I do hope you can hear me well. Yeah, we can see you and we can hear you well. Okay, that's great. So, a new generation of teachers and trainers are known to be moderators, exploring new ways to make the online and offline world a creative and happy, productive place for... Um, I'm so sorry for, sorry for interrupting you. Just can I ask you to make your presentation in a presentation mode for us to see the whole screen, and then I will add this... Yeah, like the full screen, can you do it? Actually, I'm sharing with my... Yeah, sharing. Yes, please open your presentation now. And it is open for me? No, no, what it's about opened. Now? It is opened. Can but it's still not in a presentation mode. You can see it. Can you see? Yeah, we can see. But if you go there, like... Um, we should view it in a presentation mode. Is it possible to do it? Okay, let's go further. Yeah. Maybe you will do that for me? Yeah, that's okay. Let's continue. Okay, so uh, a little bit of introduction. As I told you, a new generation of teachers and trainers are known to be moderators and exploring new ways to make the online and offline world creative, happy, productive place for successful learning, and it is a question of high importance in our agenda. Today with Sonia, we're going to raise two different issues at a time. What is online learning, its content, approaches, some tips, and uh, the second issue is the English clubs as an effective tool for language delivery, some strategies and benefits. Let's first get some basic theoretical understanding together. Different terminologies have been used for online learning, which makes it difficult to develop a generic definition. Terms commonly used for online learning, such as e-learning, internet learning, virtual learning, computer seats, web-based and distance learning are very, very common. All of these terms imply that the learner is at the distance from the instructor, that the learner uses some form of technology to access the learning materials, and the learner uses technology to interact with the instructor and with the other learners, and some form of the port is provided to learners. Carolina defines online learning as education material, while Khan seizes as an innovative approach for delivering instruction 
to remote audience. However, online education involves more than just a presentation and delivery of material using the web. And therefore, the definition found by Alice is more accurate in this regard. For learners, online learning knows no time zone and location and distance are not issues. In asynchronous online learning, students can access the online materials anytime, while synchronized online learning allows for real-time interaction between students and instructors. Learners can use the internet to access up-to-date and relevant learning materials, can communicate with experts in the field which they are studying. Situated learning or the application of knowledge and skills in the specific context. It is facilitated since learners can complete online courses while working on the job or in their own space and can contextualize the learning. For instructors, tutoring can be done anytime and anywhere. Online materials can be updated and learners can see changes immediately. When learners are able to access materials on the net, it is easier for instructors to direct them to appropriate information based on their needs. When it comes to online learning approaches, there are two general approaches accepted and better known as a self-paced online learning and a facilitated one. Self-paced learners are alone and completely independent, while facilitated instructor-led e-learning courses provide different levels of support from tutors, instructors, and collaboration among learners. Within self-paced online learning, it must provide as much learning support as possible through different kinds of explanation, uh, examples, interactivity, feedback, glossaries, in order to make learners sufficient. While facilitated online learning is based on a linear curriculum, it integrates several content elements and activities into chronological course or syllabus. The course is scheduled and led by facilitator through an online learning platform. E-learning content for individual study can be integrated with instructor lectures, individual assignments, and collaborative activities among learners. Learners, facilitators, instructors, all the members of the learning process can communicate, use communication tools such as emails, uh, discussion forums, charts, polls, whiteboards, and of course, sharing with audience video conferences for communication and for effective collaboration. At the end of e-learning courses, Combine both approaches, but for simplicity, it is easier to consider the two separately. As you might know, uh, in education, there are three primary traditional learning series, uh, such as behaviorism, cognitivism, constructivism, and the most uh, recently proposed theory is connectivism, which appears to the rapid growth of um, education technologies. All the series have contributed in different ways to design the online material, and they will continue to be used to develop learning materials for online learning. Behavioral strategies can be used to choose the facts, cognitive strategies, the principles and process by answering the question how, and constructive strategies to choose the real life and personal application contextual learning. There is a shift towards constructive learning in which learners are given opportunity to construct their own meaning from the information presented during the online. And in addition to existing learning series, connectivism should be used to guide the development of online learning since the other learning series were developed before which became a networked world.
When it comes to the content, as you may see from the slide, they start with simple learning resources, interactive classrooms, collaboration for different kinds of discussions. Uh, be sure to supply with the virtual classrooms, teaching aid or job aids, and have electronic simulations at handy. Now we're going smoothly to a second part, uh, which is rather different from online, but still it has relation to the language delivery, starting an English clubs and its benefits. Uh, initially, they were introduced with an extracurriculum activities at schools and other different kind of education establishments. English clubs come in many different guises, but they pro all of them provide an opportunity for English language learners to practice using English in a relaxed and friendly setting. They can make an excellent contribution to students' life. English clubs are mostly moderated by English teachers, but it doesn't necessarily always have to be the case. And student support workers or even students themselves can often make moderators. When it comes to the principles or strategies, uh, here I would like to share with the four with you and make an emphasis to the last one. Uh, giving participants opportunity to express themselves creatively in English, uh, make it possible through adding drummer, poetry, or storytelling. Alternatively, give the learners opportunity to explore visual communication, for example, art or a dance with a post performing discussion in English. Uh, as, um, as for practical activities that the scholars suggest you to in, uh, introduce in your English clubs, they are given in the bar chart, as you see in the table. Um, they are discussions, online activities, and themed English clubs. Uh, the benefits of all given activities that they can be adapted in any kind of language clubs. For successful English club meetings, uh, the role of the leader is crucial. After every meeting, English club leaders should answer the question demonstrated in the slide. As a leader master, the skills of helping the group communicate more effectively, it will become easier to facilitate the discussion. After every meeting, a leader can ask the members for their feedback by asking the yes or no question, and if there is no physical space for the meeting, the leader can read the question and members can hold their thumbs to indicate yes and thumbs to down to indicate a no. So for the closing part and summarizing the given information, I would like to say that the online education is an important long-term strategy and uh, for many institutions it's going to be very relevant for many years and the literature addresses that student achievement and uh, student satisfaction as two means to assess the quality of course we can't ignore another fact and the critical element of teacher training and uh, faculty support. As for English clubs, they are potentially a very valuable part of the English language student experience. We have applied four principles for successful English clubs that all based on a participant-centric learning. And three types of activity presented uh, uh, today are suitable for any um, or for different age learners within the clubs. And finally, I can add personally that 
never give up on learning through practice and serious. Ever? Can you hear me now? Yeah, thanks a lot. I can hear you perfectly. Yeah, great. But there was a problem with the presentation, I guess, yeah? yeah. No, no, it wasn't a problem. You just uh, decided not to make it in a presentation mode. And, you know, I saw so many comments. People, they were supporting you, sending you instructions how you should okay. do that. But I simply didn't want to interrupt you. Uh, anyway, I'd like you to know that all the speakers' materials will be included into the follow-up email, which you're going to get tomorrow evening, I believe, because some of our participants, uh, they will be able to watch this recording a bit later due to the time difference we have. So, yeah, definitely you will get all the materials. Okay, thanks, and Mira, thanks for your explanation for rationale. And while we are waiting for Sonia Cook to continue uh, this idea about ESL, EFL clubs, as well as about some kind of teaching tricks and tips um, on different teaching aspects, how to teach online, I mean. So, okay, Elmira, you can join us on YouTube and you can chat with other teachers and academics as well. Thanks a lot. Yeah, great. Yeah, press that red button. Yeah, great. So now I'd like you to relax a bit because we're gonna play a short game right now, but please be attentive. Yes. Olga. Mm -hmm. So guys, I'm Olga. I'm going back to school and I'm going to take an orange. Listen again. I'm Olga. I'm going back to school and I'm going to take an orchid. Eva, what are you going to bring? So it seems I, I want to bring a sofa. Can I? No, you can't bring a sofa. What will you bring? So I'm Olga. I'm going to bring an orange. So I'm Eva and I'm going to bring an elephant. Yes, that's great. Elephant is a good choice. So we're going back to school, guys. Uh, what are you going to bring? Could you please type it in the chat box? Okay, let us see it. Yeah, it's really interesting to see what our teachers are going to bring into their classrooms. Yeah, and I'm sure that you got the idea how it should be done, what kind of words you should write there or type in the chat box. So again, this is Olga, and she's going to bring um, an, what? Orange. Oh, an orange. And mm -hmm. I'm Eva, and I'd like to bring an elephant. So what about you? What are you going to bring? Yeah, actually, Ola, can you see the comments right now? Because I can see that That's Rashida fine. said English clubs are definitely useful, fun and interactive. Yeah, that's it. So before you dive uh, into all that stuff about English uh, clubs, I'd like to, to taste a bit some kind of activity. So I'm Rashida, I can see it. Miss Tatiana, she says that she's <laughs> going to bring a tank can you imagine wonderful what the idea to go back to school and to bring a tank yeah lily to bring a lollipop perfect um and i'm going to bring yeah daisy's great idea um i didn't imagine it. i'm not sure if we're talking about sounds yes yeah, you can it, bring it, an umbrella but what about the first letter of your name um, Fatima Aliva, I'm going to bring my books. Unfortunately, Miss Fatima, you can't bring your books. We are so sorry. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Rafshan, and he's going to bring some sweets and chocolate. No, you can't bring sweets and chocolate. Again, we have Miss Tatiana. She can bring toy tank. Uh, Natalia, are you going to bring a tiger? No, you can't bring a tiger. So if I'm just Nadia, yeah, yeah, Nadia is going oh, to yeah. bring nuts. That's great. That's possible. Yeah, yeah, and Rob, I'm going to bring doll. Perfect, a doll. So Nargis to bring napkins. Good idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got it. I see. Rahal, I'm going to bring a laptop. No, sorry, you can't bring a laptop in this case. 
Eva, what about if you think about, uh, if you think out of the teacher's perspective, for example, I'm Jessica and I'm going to bring some joy into my classroom. Yeah, perfect. But we, we do have so many nice ideas. Like I'm much, and I'm going to bring mobile phone. That's great. Mm. Yeah, so while you're thinking, let us present our next presenter while she's sharing her screen. And actually, I can see her on the backstage. And great. she's doing, a, yeah, she's sharing her screen right now. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, Ola, guys. can you let us know? Yeah. Sure. So, guys, let me introduce great teacher from the UK, Sonia Cook, who has worked in ELT for over 12 years as an English teacher, drama practitioner, and more recently as a teacher trainer, working both with adults and children in EFL classrooms, Moroccan primary schools, as well as in business settings. Sonia has also been working with a branch of an international drama academy for the past six years and has recently launched the French in Mohammedia. The academy has over 80,000 students attending dynamic drama classes in 34 countries worldwide. As director, Sonia works to build confidence, creativity, communication, and collaboration in the lives of school children and adults in Casablanca and Mohammedia. So, guys, welcome, Sonia Cook. Yeah, hello, Sonia. I'm really happy yeah. to have you here. Yeah, yeah we're waiting you? for you. We're nice looking to forward you. to see you to seeing you here. Yeah, great. Because we had to play a small game just to warm up our participants before they start listening about ESL clubs as well as about tips and tricks and how to teach online. Okay. Right? So, so now I'd like to ask you to share your screen for us yeah. to be sure that we can continue with it. Yeah, and people are still playing. I should tell you because mm -hmm. uh, I can see they they started discussing what was the logic in that question and we have like <laughs> different ideas yeah very nice and uh, mary bell i'm going to bring a mat yeah that's great you can do it <laughs> so the logic was to, to name the sound the object which starts with the first letter of your name so if i'm olga i'm going to bring an orange and I should tell you that I always play this game with my students and actually we can say we can start like, okay, I'm Eva and I'm going somewhere, wherever you want. And then you should create a word that starts with the same letter as your first name or last name starts, it doesn't matter. So this way we, we have some kind of flexible mind to think and to brainstorm. Okay, so Sonia, sorry for taking your time. It's okay, <laughs> yeah, no problem. Okay, so um, we wish you good luck, and I'm pretty sure that it will be a rather productive session. Yes, yeah, thank you. Okay, I just want to thank SR Teaching and Learning for this wonderful opportunity. What a great and amazing uh, marathon. And the second one, I'm, I'm just sad that I wasn't involved in the first one, but I'm so excited to be here today and to have everybody here um, taking on board all these new ideas and uh, different teaching tips for going back to school. It's an amazing, uh, an amazing idea to help help teachers all around the world. Um, all the countries that are participating today as well are really going to benefit. So let's just ju jump in. Um, I have two topics today that I'm going to talk about. The first one is um, about tips for teaching English online. And um, so we'll just go straight in. Um, tip number one, is um, choosing your platform. There are several different platforms available on, on the internet um, by which you can teach online. And here are like G Suite, Google Suite is one of them. Google Suite is, is like um, a cloud where you can, you can have like a virtual classroom. You can use the Google, Google documents like Google Slides, Excel, and all those wonderful um, documents that help us to work you know as teachers and to work especially online um, this is a, a very nice application um, another one is skype i uh, it's been around for a long time it's it's a little less classroomy um, but it's definitely good for conferencing and video conferencing and meeting up with students um, another one is google hangouts which is similar um, it's a very similar kind of application and with google Han handouts uh, hangouts you can uh, have the same kinds of uh, 
uh, sort of features like sharing screens and, and doing all these kinds of things. There's a new one that I discovered called Flipgrid, um, which is more just about video content and sharing videos uh, with students. So I haven't really looked into it so much, but it's, it's something new. Um, and the one that is my favorite and the one that I use is Zoom because it has so many features and, and just later on in some of the slides below, we can see some of these different features that can, can help with student engagement. So here we have like the Word, the Excel, the Google Slides, documents, all of these um, are good for teaching online. So, you know, the first tip is choose your platform. Um, you know, choose the one that is suitable for you and, and train yourself on it a little bit. It takes a bit of time, but give yourself some time to, to navigate and to get to know um, how to use your platform. Okay, tip number two is about technical requirements. Um, now, of course, we're going to need either a laptop or a desktop or a professional tablet, something that we can connect with people. But in addition to this, and very important, is your Wi-Fi connection. We need to make sure that we have a very good Wi-Fi connection, otherwise teaching online is going to be torturous. Um, <laughs> another thing that helps is also to have your headphones because it kind of blocks out any noise and enables your learners, your students to kind of uh, hear what you're saying and you can hear them. So recommend them both for yourself as a teacher and for your students. And if you're thinking of doing more things, um, you know, more than just live teaching like um, online, like maybe making videos or, you know, having a YouTube channel with some tips and things on how to learn English, you know, those short little videos that are really interesting for our students, then I would suggest um, investing in a mic, um, a microphone to, to, to record those videos so that you can have clear quality of sound. And also, like for, for myself, when I teach drama, I, I have a little clip microphone because I'm away from the laptop standing up and moving around, and it's really necessary for for that kind of activity. Okay, tip number three. Um, we're talking about here privacy and safety um, because you know well, once we get online and we have students online, we have we have sort of a responsibility for them, especially for the young learners. You know, so first we need to make sure that information is kept, you know, private and in a safe kind of context. Um, also you know, permission from your students. If you like, for example, I recently did a, a summer camp online. Um, and before I shared any of the screenshots of our Zoom classes together, I took permission from the parents and made sure that that was OK. Um, and for the parents that didn't want their children to be online forever, we, we had this possibility to put like an emoji over their face, but still to show, you know, to advertise that we had done something amazing together. And also, like, if you're going to be teaching online, you might want to think about payments online. So just make sure that you have a secure way for receiving payments for your for your work. So that's tip number three. OK, tip number four is about training and classroom management. So pre-workshop notes, um, things like using headphones, like um, students should have their own laptop. I did have a, a couple of times where two of the young learners in my summer camp had were sharing a laptop so they were kind of like hey, it's, I want to be on the screen I want to be so it kind of makes it a little bit difficult to manage so if they all have their own laptops it's much more fun for them and, and easier for you to manage as a teacher um, a quiet space is very important you know you don't want to have you know your student kind of being distracted whether it's a, a young learner or an adult they should try to find a quiet space a reliable internet connection for them too, because this will, you know, reduce any frustrations. If you can't, teacher, I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Oh, you know, we, we really need to try and avoid this kind of thing. And, you know, it says here camera on, but I don't, I don't, you know, oblige students to put their camera on because I want them to feel comfortable within their learning environment. And some people are very new to, uh, things like Zoom and, and, and learning online. So camera on, off, I don't think it's too important. Now, when we get online, these are some of the other things that will help you to manage your classroom. So just make sure that everybody knows these, knows these the kind of rules, classroom rules before you start and remind them from time to time. You know, and, and train your students, even if it takes like 10 minutes or five minutes of the beginning of each class, 
to remind them and just to help them to use and navigate their Zoom system, then it will help with the management of your class as well. Okay, tip number five is about student engagement. I mentioned it a bit earlier. Uh, my favorite platform for teaching at the moment is Zoom. Um, Zoom uh, is currently, it was available for 40 minutes for free, but I think they have a new offer on now for teachers where you can have this 40 minute limit lifted so you can teach, you know, unlimited uh, without the, you know, fear of being cut off in the middle of your session. But I actually, you know, the academy, we have the package, so, you know, we have unlimited time. And, you know, part of the student engagement, we, we, we can see these different strategies. At the bottom of this screen, you can see a link to an article that I found that talks about all the different strategies for engaging your students while online. And these are some of the ones that I use, like screen sharing, breakout rooms, those are really fun. Um, the whiteboard option, if you need to just, you know, make some notes on a whiteboard and then they, people can copy and paste the information. And to annotate, you know, to, especially for the young learners, I, I give them the opportunity to just mess about on the screen. And so they're interacting. They're not just sitting, you know, and taking in the information. OK. All right. Tip number six. This is the last of my teaching online tips. Uh, it's about adjusting to learning online. Now, when our students are in the classroom, we have certain learning objectives, uh, classroom routines and procedures that we, we give to our students. Um, to help them to feel comfortable and settled within the class. It's exactly the same when we when we go online to do this. So make sure that you have a structure where you can um, you can uh, share your learning objectives with your students for that lesson. You have a routine. It's kind of it gives them that comfort and that safety when they're adjusting to a new kind of environment and a new kind of way of learning, which is distance learning. Um, you can also use the chat box options um, to send messages and to communicate. If, if, you know, maybe you have a shy student, they don't want to talk, they can send you a little message, you can reply to them privately, or you can talk to the whole group. If, if something's not clear, you want to explain something or there's a spelling, you know, question, you can use the chat box or the whiteboard to, to kind of communicate those ideas across. And then in return, like the students, if they have to have a question, you know, instead of interrupting or feeling uncomfortable, could use you the raise hand button on the Zoom um, application and that will let you know that somebody's waiting to ask a question. And also we have the thumbs up and the thumbs down, which is clear. Um, so, you know, all of these will help your students to adjust to learning online. And these are my six tips, okay? Um, I hope that you found them useful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Um, but I'm going to move on to topic two now, which is talking about ESL clubs. Um, I spent, I've spent quite a long time working with students, English students who were interested in different subjects. And we kind of decided at one point, well, I decided that maybe if we took them out of the classroom setting where they're in the, the textbook all the time and they have a curriculum to follow and they have tests to take at certain times. And then at the end of the session, they have an exam, you know, and that's one way of learning English, but there is a whole other world. And this whole other world is through ESL clubs. So here I have a little picture of my, my sunflower that um, gr is growing these clubs. Um, and this is all about setting up and running effective ones. So if you see down at the bottom on, on, on the first leaf, we have seeds and then seedlings and then saplings and, and the clubs grow and develop. And, and the more kind of inspiration um, and passion that you have for the club, the more it kind of becomes contagious amongst students. And, you know, they, they really become places of, of intense learning um english language learning and it's it's so it's so wonderful to see it's really a really good experience so the benefits of learning english through clubs are immense and i can't stress this enough because i've had such good feedback from students over the years and even now students that i met when they were 16 years old um, and they were just kind of you know still at school and they were learning english and they joined one of my clubs whether it was a drama club a music club we had a community service club where we we worked with charities very hands-on we had um, a talk 
club where we talked about all different kinds of topics, even topics that people, you know, some people might find taboo. People found their space and their safe space to be able to express freely amongst friends. And a lot of the people that met during these club sessions are still friends now, 10 years later, are still in touch. They still meet for coffee, but they're older, and but they have this special bond because they connected on a, a different kind of level and they, you know, they they have such fond memories and those cre the creation of those fond memories really helped them at the time to learn English better. I had one student I remember was so shy. He, he felt like he couldn't express himself. Um, so he was very quiet and he used to say to me, it's not my personality. I'm normally, I can, I can talk more, but not in English. And I said, well, you know, that's fine. Just take your time and, you know, you don't have to input straight away. You can just absorb um, the information in the beginning. And then, you know, slowly and sure, slowly but surely he became more confident. He learned more the practice you know, was frequent and he was amongst friends in a safe environment and, and he became, you know, a great speaker communicator in English. So, um, so yeah, the, the benefits are immense for students and they cover a variety of teaching methodologies as well for the teacher, um, which is really interesting because you get to kind of, you know, try out different teaching methodologies just in one kind of a setting, just in one club setting. Um, so these are the ones, these are some of the ones that I've kind of picked out and, and thought, yeah, well, this is definitely um, a teaching methodology in a club setting. So we have total physical response, um, which is uh, a language acquisition method, um, which is a, it's kind of a combination of, you know, physical activity with um, language acquisition. And it really kind of gives students that extra, you know, that extra kind of benefit of, of learning. People can remember more when they add an action to the, to the language that they're learning. So that's the first one. Um, introducing, there is the opportunity to introduce items of cultural and personal relevance. So unlike sometimes in the classroom, you know, we have the textbook and we, you know, we're kind of, you know, focused on, you know, making sure that we cover all of the topics. Sometimes they, they're not very relevant to our students' environments, you know, real life settings and things like this. So in, in a club setting, we can actually, we can introduce, you know, things that are familiar to our students that make them feel comfortable, but also they can bring things as well. And bringing things from their kind of personal world, from their personal culture, has it just adds that added engagement in an added investment into the language learning so it's a really nice way to to have students progress with their uh, english language um number three on my list is using using authentic materials you know we talk about using authentic materials in the classroom and how it can you know how it can m make the class more interesting but then to actually have real life situations and settings within a club, for example, I will give you a really good example. We had um, we had a club a community service and I watched uh, a TED video online and it was about an artist in Brazil who was helping the the rubbish pickers who, who have these kind of corrosas and they put the rubbish, the recyclable rubbish in there. Anyway, long story short, we, I contacted him, um, you know, I, I asked him about his project. From the video, he, he challenged me and everybody else that was watching the video to, to do the same kind of a project in their city. I spoke to the community service club students. They said that they were very interested. We did this whole project and it was it was with the community and it was, you know, it was really changing people's lives and making a difference. And this is as authentic as you can get, I guess. It was a great experience. Um, okay, number four on my list is about displaying and co-creating visuals and realia. Um, this I can relate a lot to Drama Club because we kind of made our own props for the sketches that we had developed together, you know, and, and just having that scene, the setting the stage, 
really motivated the students and gave them this passion for performing arts and for public speaking and really helped to improve their language. And so to, to kind of co-produce something that goes along with that shows that you're very committed and that you you're you have vested interest in, in this activity and it and it just makes it all you know worthwhile. And, and lastly, um on my list it's about remembering the different stages of language acquisition because there are there are five I think there are about five different stages of language acquisition. Um, the first one like I mentioned earlier was my student who was very quiet and just wanted to kind of absorb we call this the silent receptive stage um, and during this stage students are kind of non-verbal communication like pointing and nodding you know they understand what you're saying but to put a phrase together or a sentence together they're not quite there yet so that's step number one step number two is early production when you can kind of respond with one or two words um, and and you kind of warming up a little bit you're feeling a little bit more confident you're acquiring new vocabulary and, and a, a stronger ability to speak English and um, the third step is speech emergence so this is when you start to put together sentences and your sentences become more complex and longer and you've gathered a little bit of you know, grammar and a little bit of vocabulary in your vocabulary and grammar bank and you're ready to use it. Um, step four is an intermediate kind of fluency where you're, you know, you're, you're kind of still thinking in your mother tongue a little bit and translating, but you're managing to get out you know, a lot of the things that you want to say. You might get stuck on one word and then you, know, want, you might just say it in, in your mother tongue. Um, but you know, your, your level of fluency is, is getting there. And then the, the fifth stage of language acquisition is advanced fluency. And this is where people feel at ease, they can talk, they, you know, they have that, had that, that practice and, and they know, you know, that they can rely on the knowledge that they have. And this stage takes about maybe between two and sometimes 10 years to reach. So it just depends on the, the, le people, the level of people's practice, how long they learned English for before they came to learn English with you, you know, how much, you know, because I, I, I studied German. I studied German for six years when I was younger and I was very good at it and I was kind of this advanced level German speaker. But now I can't understand German at all. So <laughs> I didn't practice anymore. I didn't speak it for a long time. So if I had a German club that I could go to, I'm sure I would do much better. I would remember all that stuff. It would take me a little bit of time, but it would all come back to me and then I, I, could be, I would be able to speak German again. So anyway, so this is a little sort of introduction to and a little bit of information about setting up and running effective ESL clubs. Um, so here are my, um, my LEAF system. Um, I would say that step one, you have to kind of define your reasons for running a club and make sure that you have the passion because you're going to need that passion to convince others. Step two, understand what the difference is between a club and a classroom setting, you know, because you don't want to kind of repeat what you're doing in your classroom in the club because then it, it's, it's not anything different. And um, step three is getting your students to sign up. Now, this can be a little bit challenging in the beginning, especially uh, it depends on the environment, you know, the kind of the atmosphere of the language center or the place where you're, you know, going to be setting up these clubs. But if if the if you're like me in the beginning, there was no kind of there was no link to anything like this, and so people found it very strange and they were very reluctant to sign up in the beginning. But we got there in the end. Um, keeping your students engaged is step four. You know how to you know keep it alive, keep the the club interesting. And a lot of this depends on how you manage the club and whether you can link it to the real world, you know, and make it something that is more than just what you would learn, you know, how you would learn English in the classroom. So that's step five. And step six is ultimately to kind of become the facilitator and hand the club over to the students so that they're really in charge of what happens. And this really, you know, gives them that confidence, helps them with their communication skills, helps them with their creativity, you know, and all, all these other things that we talk about in, in personal development. So that's all I have for you, um, except to say that if you're interested in setting up and running your own ESL club, 
um, then I will be doing a training course all about it. First, from first step to last step with SR teaching and learning. It's coming soon. I don't want to say when it's coming. We're going to leave it as a surprise. But if you're interested, um, just watch this space. Keep with keep you know keep with us. Um, look out for the course, and and then you can learn about how to set up your own, and you can start your journey to um, these these amazing environments with with your students. Okay, so that's all I have for you today. Um, I hope it, I've not taken up too much time. Um, here are my contact details in case you're interested. Yeah, thanks a lot, Sonia. It was really nice. And I should tell you that I, I looked through different papers about how to go back to our new normal. And um, actually here in Ukraine, we are going to go back to school and to have offline teaching. But you know what? We don't know how long we'll be able to do that. And some papers, some some educators, they say that it would be better, even if you teach offline, it would be better to keep teaching, not teaching, but establishing some kind of ESL clubs to have that yeah. internet connection with your students. So this yeah. is really a great idea to have an ESL club. So Sonia, yeah. we have so many wonderful mm -hmm. comments here. As you can see, Gulbahors, thank you, Sonia, for a very informative presentation. Yeah, this is Uzbekistan, I know for sure. Yeah, you can see, great. Then Georgia, mm -hmm. I believe, it, I don't know the exact country, I'm sorry. Yeah, fantastic resources, thanks a lot. And also guys, I'd like you to know that Sonia included so many ideas into her folder which will be sent to you as a follow-up email after the marathon so you'll check it and you'll be surprised with so many ideas she decided to share with you and anyway as soon as we announce the course designed by sonia please come and join uh, i'm pretty sure that you'll be satisfied because actually sonia uh, she ran a course with the teaching and learning which was like four C's. It was about, you know, four C's. Yeah, it was about creativity, communication, collaboration, creative thinking, plus one, and confidence. And that was a very nice course. So I'm looking forward to participating in your next course. I do hope that it will happen soon. We'll reveal this information a bit later. Thanks a lot, Sonia. Thank You're very you. Welcome. Come and join us on YouTube because we have an active communication here and you can join yeah. other teachers just yes, to discuss anything because they had some questions. Maybe you can discuss them um, in the chat box. Okay, thanks okay. a lot and we should continue. By so the way, more than uh, 2,000 people have watched Sonia's webinar for SR teaching and learning. Yeah, actually, if you wish, you can check the webinar by Sonia. It is completely free. You can find it on our channel. Uh, we had something like 2,500 views there. So you'll check it and you'll see it. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. And we Thank should you continue. Much. And we should continue. So the next session um, is about importance of effective classroom management to the teacher. So let me introduce the next speaker. His name is Akbar Kafari. Um, Akbar has been teaching and training for 28 years. He has worked as a teacher trainer in countries such as South Africa, Japan, Georgia, Azerbaijan, and Iran. She has been working as the mentor for the Ministry of Education of Iran for eight years. He believes teachers should focus on the way the students learn instead of focusing on the way the teachers teach. So let me greet Mr. Ab Akbar Kafuri. Hello, Akbar. And really, I miss you a lot. It's so nice that you decided to join us just and well, to cover this very important uh, session. First of all, hello. No just feeling like walking in the clouds you know right now but so many words that you just talked about me thank you very much i'm absolutely surprised and shocked and kind of elated you know am i yes. being heard globally by all the teachers around the world right now yeah, yeah. <laughs> globally. And I know that's yeah you know that and i know that's because of the creative and innovative idea of us are teaching and learning so this is the best time to thank you, Ms. Eva, also Mr. Samat, to just 
create this atmosphere for the teachers like me to be heard by the colleagues around the world. I cannot thank you enough, but thanks a million, two million, let's go to billiard. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay, thank you, Akbar. <laughs> thanks a lot. So we give you a plow, please start doing your job because I'm pretty sure that we will hear something really interesting. Okay, see you in thank 10 you minutes. Much. Thank you very much. Only 10 minutes. But first of all, I would like also to thank so much. Akbar, I'm sorry. So, Sonia, I... thank you very much. Sonia, thank you very much. Okay, let's talk about the importance of effective classroom management to the teachers. Unfortunately, um, because of the lack of time, I'm going Akbar, I'm so sorry for interrupting. Akbar, sorry for interrupting you. But while you're, you're moving your hands, we sometimes have some kind of breaks in sounds. Okay, so okay, I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe so, I'm I going to do the hypnotism. Wow, yeah, 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 like yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got a point. So I try to just set facts and talk. Akbar, like since I have to, I have to stay next to you all the time <laughs> for you to <laughs> be heard. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is a teacher's voice, so it means let your voice be heard, and I should stay next to you all the time. <laughs> okay. Okay, I do my best. So the importance of effective classroom management to the teacher. Before that, I'm going to just ask you a question that you're supposed to answer me at the end of my presentation. What is the most important importance of effective classroom management? <laughs> Such a funny question. <laughs> What's the most important importance of effective classroom management to the teacher? Ready? Let's start. You know, classroom management, I know that all the teachers, like me and you lovely teachers, can see their students' behavior management as one of the top stressors in our professions. Let me give you an example. You know, Richard in Jersal in 2001 found that approximately 30% of 400 teachers who left their professions, who left teaching, cited that students' management as one of the reasons why they left their job. You know, in a study of approximately 6,700 teachers in the United States. That's a shame, you know, 30% of 400 teachers out of 6,700 who left their jobs cited that student management as one of the reasons why they left their job. I'm not gonna leave my job. I'm going to learn how to manage my class. And it's going to happen today. After my presentation, Ms. Nana is going to talk about the strategies, how to manage our classes. Another earlier you know, study that has been, I think, had done by David Chan in 1998 revealed that teachers, revealed that teachers rated students' behavior management as the second the second most stressing factors for the teachers. Wow, so this is kind of important. We cannot ignore classroom management. We cannot ignore it. It may even lead to leaving our professions as well. So let's talk about the importance of classroom management. Ready? Let's go. The first one, you know, the first one, I love that importance, you know, it creates a conducive learning environment. I love that word, conducive learning environment. That is to say that your classroom management skills can help you to create a favorable environment that will make all your students have a sense of belongingness so that they will feel free to explore more learning opportunities within the boundaries of within the boundaries of the rules, within the boundaries of the standards. 
that are being established by you and me, between you and the students. That's it. So the first thing is that your good classroom management creates creates what? Yeah, a conducive learning environment. What about the second importance? The second importance of classroom management is that it helps a waste of time and energy. You need, as a teacher, a proper, a proper classroom management. Why? To guide all the things that happen in the classroom within the day. Otherwise, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Otherwise, we will waste our time. We will waste our lesson period trying to do what? <laughs> trying to control and manage the behavior of one or few of our students while the majority of the students do not learn much. This will even, remember, this is kind of important, you know, this will even force some of the quiet students, some of the obedient students to join the clowning students, to join the disrupting students. I'm sorry, but that's true. The first, what was the first one? Let me see if you have good memory. Yeah, number one, it was that. It leads to a conducive learning environment. What about the second one? You were right. The second, let me see the answer. Let me see the answer. Perfect. That's awesome. Yes, it avoids waste of time and energy. What do you think about the third importance of classroom management? What do you think that one is? Okay, I'm going to explain. You know, I love that word, boost the morale of teachers. Yes, classroom management helps boost the morale of the teacher. You know, it makes you feel like a majesty of your class. It makes you feel like a master of your job, a master who does not only brings out the best in her or her students, but also drives strong satisfaction drives strong motivation from what you do as teachers. So, boost the morale of the teachers. You are the majesty of your class. You are the master of your class. It drives a strong motivation, drives a strong satisfaction from what you do in your class. That's why classroom management is important, isn't it? Still not believing? Let me give you another importance. The another importance of classroom management. I'm checking your answers. That's good. Thank you. Is that it informs students about what is expected of them. Yes. When you manage your classroom, in fact, you tell your students what you expect of them. In managing behavior in the classroom, you and your students will always have to lay down rules. You and your students have to lay down routines. You and your students have to lay down standards. Why? That's clear. To govern behavior, to control behavior. You know, everybody, lovely teachers, research suggests that all students are motivated to learn as long as as long as there are clear expectations, as long as the tasks and activities have value, as long as the learning environment promotes, I love that word, intrinsic motivation. What? Shall I repeat that again? By all my heart. You know, research suggests that all the students are motivated to learn as long as there are, there are what? Yes, clear expectations. As long as the task and activities have value, as long as the learning environment promotes, you remember those two words, 
promotes what? Yes, intrinsic motivation. See, how many important issues have I mentioned about the important, the management of the classroom? Four, you're right. Do you remember number one? Let me see your number one. What was that? Yeah, okay. What about number two? That's it. Okay, so number one, remember my lovely word? Conducive learning environment. What about number two? Yeah, that's true. It helps avoid waste of time and energy. What about number three? Did you remember number three? Let me see the answer. Let me see the answer. Yeah, 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 true, true. That's it. You know, as you said that, it boost, boost the morale of the teacher. Remember, you're the majesty of your class. You're the master of your class. Mm -hmm. And the last one is you just heard from me. What was number four? Let me see the answer. Let me see the answer. Yeah, that's it. You know, it informs, it tells students what you're expected to do. What, what is expected of them. Another importance. Another importance. Amon, amon. Let's talk about the another importance. Wow, 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 wow. The another importance. It helps form responsible individuals in our society. As a trainer, I always keep asking my teachers, dear teachers, do not teach the students the book. Do not teach them only the language. Do not teach them being a nice student. Teach them being a nice person in the society. So, Effective classroom management, effective classroom management forms responsible people in our society. You know, better classroom management helps teachers to train responsible people for our society. Thus, therefore, teachers who are better at managing their classes tend to be, tend to be authoritative, authoritative, authoritative. I love that word. What does it mean, Akbar? What are you talking about? It means that they provide freedom. Wow, classroom management of freedom possible. I said, yes, they provide freedom for students and teach them to exercise that freedom. It's important. They provide freedom for students and teach them to exercise that freedom within the boundaries of the established rules to exercise that freedom within the boundaries of the routines, to teach them exercise that freedom within the boundaries of expectations. And that's why, by effective classroom management, we form responsible individuals for our society. Yes, those countries who have better citizens I do believe that they have better teachers because they know how to manage their classes. Effective classroom management. That is, the teachers provide a balance. Oh, balance. Oh, you know, if I ask me not to move my hand that many times, okay? That is, they provide a balance between freedom and control of the students' behavior in the classroom. This is the best recipe, the best recipe for training responsible students, not only in the school, but also out of school. Up to now, we have talked about five, five, yes, things like the importance of classroom management. Do you remember number one? Yes. I love that word, conducive, learning environment, number two. Okay, it avoids waste of time. Number three, yes, I love that word, boost the morale of the teacher. Number four, number four, what was number four? Yet, yeah, it informs students 
about what they are expected to do. And number five, as I said, exactly, it forms responsible for people. We bring up students who will be responsible people for their society, for our society, who we are living with. That's it. Another importance of classroom management due to the lack of time is that, you know, classroom management creates a structure and achievable goal for our students. We help students to get what they expect, what they need by classroom management. It also increases past time and reduces classroom, classroom interruptions and disruptions. Also parents, can you believe that? Parents become happy for their investment in their children. See, the importance of effective classroom management in our classes. I'm going to make it short because of the lack of time. You know, the conclusion of my words is that classroom management is extremely important in ensuring a safe, and favorable condition for students to learn effectively. I think as a teacher, I think as a teacher, that the most important importance of classroom management is that, that, that. You continue this. What is the most important importance of classroom management? Let me see your answer. Eva, can you help me reading the answer? I have there mentioned were so something many like eight. But you can see Mr. Abdel Majid Boussian, it seemed that he made notes of everything you mentioned. As you can see, we have just the whole presentation. <laughs> yeah, no, that's thank great. you very much. Thanks a lot for your presentation. Yeah, it was really nice because I do believe that it's like something that helps us create that atmosphere of collaboration and communication in our classrooms. And of course, it's about expectations, rules, routines, procedures, about everything. And actually, as we say, it's like a flaw in your classroom where you can put everything on. Yeah, definitely. So thanks a lot for these wonderful ideas. <clears throat> and yeah, you have you, you can see the comments like Mr. Akbar, bravo, uh, thanks, Satan, and so many things mentioned. Yeah, great. So as you can see now, we have such a diversity of different teachers and teacher styles on our marathon. I should add Olga as well. Yeah. Akbar, I do hope that it will be possible for you to join us on YouTube and to talk to other teachers who are chatting in the chat box. Sure. They discuss sure. everything. And they pleasure. can ask you questions and you can answer in the chat box as well. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. I have to add that, you know, the next presentation is going to be done by uh, Ms. Nana is going to be about the strategies of classroom management. So I was only the introducer of the topic that's going to be held the next person, by next person. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay, so and I'd like to give the floor to the teacher Nanam Sakuradze from Georgia, who is an English teacher at the center called INT English Language and Training Center. Nana is a member of the board at the center as well as promotion manager. She's currently teaching B2 level students at the center. However, she has been a teacher for more than 12 years now and has worked with different age groups and levels. Nana is also a teacher trainer at English Teachers Association Georgia. Her main aim is professional development and she attends numerous trainings held at the center as well as other institutions. So hello Nana. Hello, hello, hello. thanks for joining us. Yeah. Hello, how are you today? What about Georgia? <laughs> the weather in Georgia, because you see, we are traveling from one country to another. We had so many Iran, Poland, Georgia, Azerbaijan, yeah, Kazakhstan, and now we're in Georgia again. 
So well, welcome virtually to Georgia. Well, the perfect weather to be outside. Well, and so sunny and creates a greater mood. I, it's really, really nice to be here. I feel really excited. It's a challenge for me. It's a very interesting thing to be here. Well, I've been watching since the start of the marathon and well, thank you all the presenters up to now. And so well, looking forward to the next ones. Well, so just what, what we should do right now, I'd like to ask you um, to share your presentation and as soon as it is ready, yeah, the screen is is okay, but I want to see that the presentation is on and then I'll add it on the screen. Wow. Yeah, great. Yeah, perfect. So good luck to you with your presentation. I'm pretty sure that people are looking forward to hearing all your ideas because I'm also pretty sure that we'll hear lots of nice and interesting things to use in our classrooms later on. Good luck. And here we go. Thank you, Eva. Well, first of all, I think that it was our pleasure to be listening to Mr. Akbar, who just made a great presentation and it was a perfect introduction. Well, I don't think that anything can could have been said better than this. Well, thank you personally from me and I hope that from all the participants as well. Well, as it has already been mentioned, I'd like to introduce myself again. My name is Nana and I'm teaching at the center called INT, which is not only the English language uh, center, but the training center as well. So my pleasure to be talking about classroom management strategies. Well, I think that 15 minutes, well, that's nothing. And of course, it's not enough to be talking about this issue. Well, uh, but as it has always been said, nothing is a dogma. But of course, the ideas that will be shared can be adapted. Well, and every single teacher can find something interesting. And then, of course, use those ones, OK? So and adapt to their own classes. Specifically, let's talk about rules, routines, and procedures. And, of course, we should never forget how to reinforce positive behavior. Well, as I have already said, Mr. Akbar just said everything about classroom management, so nothing to add about that. But I would just say, okay, well, uh, some few words that I took from James Scrivener's book called Classroom Management Techniques that I love the book. Well, he says your classroom management is the way that you teachers okay uh, you manage students learning by organizing and controlling what happens in your classroom and what i absolutely agree with is the classroom management strategies that we make play a large part in creating the individual working atmosphere of our classes so how it feels to be in a room with you with me with us as teachers. I think that's a very important point. Well, let's go to some specific things. Let's talk first about rules and procedures. Well, before I move to specific things, I think that you will all agree with one, one thing. Well, usually what we think about rules and procedures, this is a poster, which is stuck somewhere in the room. And usually students do not even pay attention to or if teachers do that. So this is the very first lesson that we just pay attention to and we say, well, you need to obey those rules. This is something we need to do. But usually they are forgotten, unfortunately. Well, we do not talk about, now we, we don't need to discuss the importance of the rules because everything has already been said, but let's think about how to make these things more effective. Well, well, let's compile and sign a contract. How and what do I mean? Well, the first thing first, this is, well, on the very first day of our lessons, whether it's a new group or the group that we've been uh, teaching for some time, well, doesn't matter. Let's have a discussion. Let's create groups when they brainstorm, discuss, and let's keep it to six, seven, not more. Let them decide on the most important rules that they would like to have in the classroom. Well, the second thing is, then it's a must to have a whole class meeting and finalizing and deciding on, okay, several, again, I'm highlighting, keep it to the short number is very important because they should be specific and that 
there should be maximum six, seven most important ones. So the next thing, let's agree, let students think about sanctions. Well, what do I mean is, well, they themselves, okay, think about why the specific rule is important for them and how, what should be done if someone does not agree or just, okay, doesn't follow the rule. Let them think about it. Let them utter those sanctions themselves. That's really important. Making them aware of why they would like to have this specific rule and, well, I don't want to say the word punished because that's not the word, but what the sanctions will be. And let's have it really intriguing and let's decide not a poster, but let's, okay, have a contract. The contract that we, okay, just, okay, compiled together, students and teachers all together because it has been agreed. And then it's time to sign it to make it look really serious. And, well, by the way, you can, okay, they can sign it the way they want, or they can use their thumbnails and, okay, put the, uh, well, prints there. That would be really, really interesting for students. And what's more important, they will be involved in the process themselves. Well, but I would say, most importantly, this is to revise them. You know, I, I think that you would all agree with me that, well, because I have already said that, we sometimes ourselves forget all about that. The rules should constantly be revised, referred to them. Okay, why? You all understand the repetition is the mother of wisdom. Well, let's just look at some okay, ideas how to refresh those rules. So, well, the first activity, very simple, but I think quite effective. What can be done? I think that you all know this, but instead of having something, okay, a grammar task or something, let's have one day when the students come in the class and you have this warm-up activity with the rules or procedures you have in the class. So you just write, okay, you prepare the slips when where you just have the beginning of the rule or just part of the sentence. They just take a slip and they have to, okay, say a full one, like, always come and they say well we have to come or always come on time or always come prepared they can have different ideas listen and the students okay who has a slip can say well listen to your teacher while she's explaining or listen to other students when they are talking well simple isn't it but i think we do not do that at times but we have to do so that students say it again and brainstorm refresh it in their head well, another example one is find the missing parts. I'm that sure you do it in your classes when you just have the rules on two different slips because they are split. You just put those slips, students come up, okay, just take one slip and they just, okay, mingle in the room and find their pair. Then they say, well, why do they stand together? Because for example, this is always come on time. Very simple. You don't need a lot of resources. You can just do it with your hands or print it. But again, a very simple rule, a uh, way of refreshing the rules again. Okay, let's move to the next one. I hope I am dead sure. Miming is everybody's favorite. Well, why not have students who get one mime, okay, like this? Well, and then others can just name that. Well, be on time or come on time or things like that or just do that or that okay and very easy but again they can revise the rules so, well i think well we all know are well technology friendly well we can use different websites various ones just to make those rules look more intriguing well for example a maze game well, just you can have a lot of them. Of course, it's just an example. A lot of them on the sleep. You can have them on the well board, or you can have several on okay, uh, well tables. The students can just count how many rules are there, or how many can you remember? Yes, and they can just look through the maze and name. There are five, or there are six, 
or the ones I remember, I can name five ones. Who can name more than five? There can be someone who can name six. Well, again, a very fun way of revising and refreshing the rules. But of course, this way, they remember it subconsciously. Well, I think this is my favorite, and not only, and it will be your students' favorite. These are the memes. Well, why not have the memes? Okay, and well, let them finish it. Well, this is what I look like. And they can just say, well, ideas. And they say, well, this is what I look like if you are interrupting me. Or this is what I look like if, okay, you are talking while I'm making my presentation. You say, perfect. Actually, it's if you are talking while I'm talking. And we all remember the rule. Oh, okay, another one. And they can think of an idea and say, one does not simply talk while others are talking. Well, you know, you can find plenty of them or you can find the means that would suit your age groups. Of course, you know your students' interests. And if you know that one, the group you have adores this Game of Thrones or other okay, so well, why not have them? And instead of having those boring posters with rules, we can turn them into memes, stick them, okay, around. And I'm dead sure students will be so encouraged to look at them, pay more attention to them, and hopefully, okay, follow them and obey them. Well, let's move to the next one. These are the routines. Well, again, I would refer to the book I have already named, um, where I found the part establishing regular routines can help to give a sense of security and calmness to stages of each lesson. I hope you all agree, don't you? Security and calmness. Well, there are, again, a lot of ideas how to do that online and in the books, methodologies as well. But I found out that signs can be used effectively. Well, for example, there can be signs, well, agreed signs. Yeah, this is not about the agreed signs for students and, of course, for the um, teachers as well. For example, let's agree with kids that if they want to go to the bathroom, instead of shouting it out or interrupting someone, they just do this. And the teacher cannot and the child can go quietly out. Well, this is only up to you. You yourself, teachers, think of what routines do you want to establish? What routines do you need in your classes for your students to know and follow? And those routines, once they are remembered, well, will give you the security and calmness. I'm that sure. Well, chance. Definitely, we can't uh, just ignore the chance. Well, well, they are perfect. For example, I just came up with one. Uh, I just found it on the internet. And you say, for example, we all have students who, don't you? We all have students who write something on the board that then they would never clean it. This is one of the routines we need to instill. So you say, you see that they forgot and say, hello, my friend, how do you do? My name is Nana. Watch what I do. And you, for example, clean the board. And the very student or the whole class can say, hello, Mrs. Nana, I will do that too. Well, every single time, well, the students forget. Instead of just telling them all, okay, it can be done in a very exciting way, yes? Especially with kids. This is so important so that they don't feel embarrassed and so that they have, okay, they feel encouraged to do it again. Well, of course, I'm not sure you can come up with better chance. And, okay, well, use famous songs for that. Well, that would be perfect. Then why not turn them into games? I think that everybody's favorite is Kahoot. I'm not sure all of you or at least most of you uh, Kahoot friendly, you use Kahoot in your classes. And even if you have no time to 
create your own Kahoot game. There are ready-made ones for rules, for procedures, for routines. But you know how easy it is. Okay, you can design your own Kahoot game. It's fun, really fun. But once again, a perfect way of revising those rules and routines in your classes. Well, hope up to now you found something interesting. And I'd like to move to a very important one encouraging positive behavior well uh before i go to a specific thing i would say well when i remember my school and even earlier there were the rules usually they were aimed at punishing yes they were punitive but now well what i really like is that we just try to see the positive in our students we try to encourage positive behavior. And I think that it works better than the ones that we used to have. So how can we do that? Well, one of the ideas is to have those classroom revert cookies. Well, you design again yourself um, based on, uh, well, the knowledge you have, okay, because you know what your students really admire. That might be teacher's desk, as you see on the screen. Well, the student, okay, can be given the opportunity to be sitting at the teacher's desk, okay, how they, or free assignment, when the student, if the one gets this reward token, can be given the opportunity to choose which assignment the one wants to skip. Or, okay, well, that can be the homework help personally from the teacher. You can have those ones designed, have in one space, and once you see that the student just managed to, okay, be stronger than, okay, the pet, um, uh, things that they were habits of him, you need to see it and encourage. By doing what? Just telling, well, you come up and you choose the reward type you want. And I'm that sure students would try their best to do it again and again. And others, of course, would copy that. Well, another thing, okay, that I found and we use it in the center as well, these are high fives. This, this is so easy to be prepared. You just need, okay, just to cut it out. You can find free well, ones, printable ones on the net. You just personally sign those ones. And once the student comes in and sees it on the desk, I'm that sure, well, for example, keep up the great work. High five from Miss M or from Miss Nana or whoever you are there. So the next thing, again, that works perfectly because we've been doing it at the center. They're thank you notes. But again, when they come in and they, and they see those thank you notes, sometimes we might do it in their books, okay? So when they do not see that, and when they open up and see that, well, they feel so happy about that. And we just did it um, uh, on, while, we, while we had online uh, teaching. For example, we would just, okay, well, seeing that, um, okay, I see that the student tries hard or tries hard to just, okay, uh, behave himself. I would either privately or it depends on the problem, right? Okay, or, okay, so that the whole group can see, I would write something nice in the chat and encourage the person so that this person is a role model. Okay, well, and don't forget the parents. Akbar mentioned parents, didn't he? And so we shouldn't be only sending reports saying what to work on and improve, but saying thank you to them as well. And brag tags. Well, or they can be some things like um, the badges where you can say, I follow the rules or write anything, okay, you want. Or they can be the bracelets where they can, I follow the rules, I'm the rule star. And they will be wearing this handbands, okay. Well, and of course, they feel privileged, okay, uh, to be behaving themselves well. And well, just sharing one of the pictures from our center. As you can see, this is one of the classes, one by Miss uh, uh, well, Nelly Kuchalishuli. And you see Zora. Zora has been encouraged to become the tutor 
of a day. Well, and this is something that he feels privileged again, and he has the right to give up the sleeps, yes, or can well help the teacher while conducting something can choose how many sticks or the words the student can get and of course well he tries so hard to behave himself okay again and again and again and by the way he has the right to choose the next tutor of the lesson well they're so simple you, you would agree but they're perfect because they all work perfect so to finalize this, I just created a word cloud that you can again use, okay, you just use any website and create, and you can, by the way, use the word cloud by typing in the rules or procedures you want to revise and let them build it up. Just to have a kind of a recap, well, I can see we talked about classroom management and the importance of classroom management has been highlighted not once. So don't forget to thank your children, encourage your children, revise the rules. Okay, make it competitive. Of course, share ideas, read uh, different methodology books, ones that has been, well, already been um, named by me and see positive things. Use memes because they are something that um kids like and it's more up to date and this is something that okay is more relatable to the students use different activities and i'm that sure you have many more ideas okay in your back pockets and of course i would be glad if you share the ones of course thank you for watching and listening and there are some useful links okay just okay at the end of the presentation that okay, you can find. Okay, and I will be glad if you like it. Well, thank you again and again. Well, that's okay. Th thanks yeah. a lot. Yeah, actually, um, I'd like you to. I'd like to ask you to stop sharing your screen. Mm -hmm. Yes, let's just yeah. a Because I want you to see the comments. So these are the comments. Can you see them? Like brilliant ideas, Nana, and you can see super ideas perfectly from Ukraine, Miss Tatiana wow. Uhina. Yeah, then this comment is from Turkey. Hello, Mr. Volkan. Again, Hello, and we have, yeah, yeah. yeah, you can see so many. Thank you. I believe it should be, I don't know the country exactly, but you can see so many things here. Thanks a lot. It was really creative and it, it's exactly what we need right now, just yeah. to have those cluster management ideas. Yep, great. Well, and I also, think... thank you, Mr. Ma Mike Burge. Yeah, ah, Jim Scriven is excellent, excellent. definitely. Yeah, yeah, as yeah. we say, this is our Bible of classroom management. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. My director also says when introduced the okay, to our book, well, and this really is. I try to keep it as useful and practical, and I try to, but of course, well, time, 15 minutes, of course, it is not enough. And of course, to have those teachers in the real classrooms, I will, will just experiment, do, conduct. But I hope that they would find it useful. And of Definitely. course, I hope they would share some more ideas with me. Yeah, and also I should remind you that the presentation will be included into the folder, which yeah. you will be able to find later on in a follow-up email, which we are going yeah. to send you just in a day or so. Okay, yeah. thanks a lot. And uh, I'd like to ask you to join us on YouTube because yeah. there you can communicate with other teachers and maybe to answer some of their questions yeah. as well. Thank you again thanks for a lot. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much. You. Okay. See you. Bye. Bye. Okay, yeah. anyway, so following the topic about classroom management techniques, I'd like to say something honestly. <laughs> you know, uh, during the period of quarantine and this all online uh, teaching process. So I had a couple of confusing situations um, while teaching online, since you should always care about your outfit, even if you are in your home classroom, yes? So I'm really curious and want to check up uh, on our teachers' work from home uh, attire. So people gossip that teachers love wearing pajamas all day long during home teaching. How do you guys stand on this fashion statement? 
please let's talk a little bit in comments. So put number one, if business, yeah, on, if. Top, business on top, pajamas on the bottom. Put number two, I literally took them off a minute ago. Mm -hmm. Put number three, if it's 100% yes. And number four, if you never done it. So again, number one, if business on top. Business on top, pajamas yeah. on the bottom. Actually, I'm bottom. sorry to interrupt you, but I had that situation. It was it didn't happen to me exactly, but it happened with my student. Uh, he was an adult and um, something happened and he had to stand up and to go to open the door and it was exactly number one point. I realized as soon as he stood up. So then we started having those classroom management rules because I asked them, guys, oh, please stick to your seats and don't stand up if you have number one as an answer or just pay attention to your outfit even if you are in online lessons. So that is a very important part. So we have the first answer, like number one, business on top, pajamas on the bottom. Yeah, it happens, we should admit it because we work at home. Yeah, nice, never, it's possible. Yeah, exactly. And Mr. Wolken said something like that because it seemed that he didn't choose anything. He doesn't want to pick up any ideas just to reveal his secret. Yeah, we have number one as well. Perfect. So you know, you... Eva, uh, sorry for interrupting, but I uh, even know some presenters, I mean women presenters, uh, who wear high heel shoes during their online presentations because they say that they give them more confidence. <laughs> so it's not about slippers, yeah, it's about high heel no, it's shoes. It's not about slippers, yeah. Yeah, great. So we have one, one and four, like business on top or never. It's was a tricky answer. Okay, so... Well, you're thinking about that. Uh, I'd like to go further. And it's my honor to present this person because right now we are going to listen to Mr. Abdelmajid Bouzian. He's a professor of education at the Faculty of Letters and Humanities in the Hassan II University of Casablanca, Morocco. He has been involved in teaching and research for almost four decades. He specializes in research on learning and teaching foreign languages. He is particularly interested in EFL, ICT in education, teachers' associations that create research methods and quality in higher education. He has published widely on his areas of interest in journals and books in Morocco and elsewhere. He has been involved in teacher training both in Morocco and in other countries for more than two decades. He served as the editor, editor of ELTECS, English Language Teaching Contract Scheme, Africa in the Middle East newsletter from 2003 to 2019. And he's currently in charge of e-learning in the faculty where he works. So please, guys, meet this wonderful person and this wonderful presenter, this wonderful educator, Abdel Majid Bousia. I do hope I pronounce your name correctly, and I'm so sorry if I'm mistaken. That's that's can exactly the way the way it is pronounced. I hope you can hear me. Can you? Yeah, we can. That's okay. great. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you are in the world. And uh, I am very happy to be among you. And I would like to thank all those who have managed to get these nice people together, particularly those in the front line, Eva, Olga, and Samad. And I know that there are other people in the back office. I would like to extend my thanks to them as well. Thank you. <clears throat> thank, thank you very you, much. So. so we need to see your presentation. OK. If you give me the hand to share it. Do yeah, I have, I have this. Hand? Let's share screen right now. Uh, I can't see your screen. It's below the video. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Okay, good. Yeah. Right. Uh, 
This is my screen and this is the presentation. Can you see it? Yeah, we can see it. Just, yeah, perfect. So, good luck. And this is your time to let us know everything about the importance of icebreakers and warmers. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, welcome to all the uh, participants in this marathon from different parts of the world. Today, I'm going to share with you just some ideas about icebreakers and warm-up activities in EFL classroom. And I changed a bit to the title of the presentation, and it's now Get Your Learners Tuned. Uh, it has always been a pleasure to work with my colleague and friend Rashida, who will be presenting some activities in this perspective or in this framework just after I finish my presentation. I I'm sure that all, all of you have come across these complaints or these worries, these queries from students where they say that they know grammar, but they still make mistakes, where they say that they want to improve their accent, where they say that they don't understand uh, words, they don't understand many things when, when they read or, or when they watch videos, when they watch films, etc. So uh, this is just normal in language acquisition, and that's why I am going to talk about not just the ice, the ice breakers, not just the warm-up activities, but also about the way we acquire language and the way we learn uh, the, the, the uh, foreign, especially foreign and second languages. Uh, we need uh, ice breakers for these reasons. It's just when you get students the first day of their first on their first day at school, so you get them to know another one another. So that. That's one way, uh, uh, or that's why we use icebreakers. Or uh, sometimes uh, the students are in, are in the courtyard and they are very excited and we want to bring them back to, to the, the mood of the classroom, to the context of the classroom. So you, you, you do these activities or you run these activities just to bring them to say, hey, remember, now you are in the classroom. So we, ha we have to abide by the rules that Nana has just talked about, and we have to abide by the classroom management that Akbar uh, talked about earlier. Um, or to introduce a new topic, to revise or recycle some of the items that we deem that the students perhaps might have forgotten about, and then we want to refresh their, their minds. Uh, and to engage, to get our students engaged, or sometimes our students feel overconfident about something that they have learned, and then they, they have still mistakenly have some, some things to, to fix, and then you, you run these activities just to draw their attention that uh, they have to fix these things. Uh, one of the theories that, that go with the uh, uh, language acquisition is when we move from ignorance to mastery. And <laughs> we have so, uh, these four stages of competence, and they go from a state or a stage where the students are unaware that they don't know. So they don't know that they don't know. That's what we call unconscious incompetence. Then they move a little bit to another stage, a further stage where they know, uh, they are aware that they don't know something. Now we are getting closer to mastery and the mastery has to move two other steps to where they know something, but probably they can't apply it. That's the, that's the case of the students who, who complain about uh, being aware of some grammar rules, but they still make mistakes. And then we move on to the last stage, and that is the unconscious competence. Here is when we internalize all the rules of the language, and when we are using the language fluently and without even thinking about how we are how we are articulating our words, how we are delivering our presentations, etc. So in, at, the, at this stage, you, 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 we reach the level of mastery. Uh, these icebreakers can happen at any stage of these, at any stage they say. It's not just at the first stage. The first stage is probably for beginners, when you have a, a classroom of beginners. 
that's where you start and then you say, hey, so there is this item is called like this in English. And this this uh, uh, this structure, this grammar structure works this way, etc. Then another another theory that you would like to, to share with you comes from the multimedia learning and when it becomes meaningful, and this is just not exclusive to multimedia learning, but it, it can be extrapolated to learning in general. We receive our input either through pictures. When, we, when I say pictures, it can be animated pictures, it can be a video, it can be a picture that we it can be cartoon, it can be anything that that, that we we watch with our eyes, or it can be or, or it can be words as well. So because we watch the words with our eyes. So we have these uh, this input that comes into our working memory. So what happens is that we select some sounds that we focus on in the working memory. But if we bring some, if we bring our prior knowledge, if we integrate our prior knowledge, it's here where we understand. It's here where the learners understand. What 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 can we get from this particular uh, uh, theory? It, it, it tells us that if we want to present something, we already have some prior knowledge about it, so that we can uh, we can uh, integrate new things, new incoming information in the system of the students. And that system is when the students, so the best or the last stage we can reach is when the student uh, everything in his or her long-term memory, and then it becomes part of his or her uh, repertoire uh, in, 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 uh, in the subconsciousness, and then he internalizes or she internalizes everything we, we provide him or her with. So the last theory is the theory of language acquisition. This one is particular to language acquisition. We provide input in the classroom. And there was a lot of debate back to the 80s, 70s, 80s, and 90s about how input becomes intake. Intake simply means that the input that we understand, or it means the input that happens somewhere here. Okay? Now, uh, when we have input, and it turns into intake, I said, was uh, there was a lot of debate. There were a lot of debates about this. Question said that input cannot become intake unless it is acquired, not learned. Because when you learn, there is a filter that takes place here. That's according to question. That filter inhibits, frustrates the learner, and therefore that input remains outside the spectrum of the, or the scope of the learner. However, in some recent uh, studies and some recent research, so it, it happens just like this. We have the input, which turns into the intake, and that intake is still developing. That's what we call the in the, the uh, uh, the uh, in, in, in syllabus or in, in individual syllabus. That's how we process the language. That's how the learner processes, processes the language. And then, if we give them the opportunity to 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 uh, to use it as an output, it's then when they demonstrate that they have understood, that they have learned something. Okay, so here the icebreakers or the warm-up activities give the students the opportunity to go all through these stages and to use the language as output. And it's then when I said they demonstrate that they have understood, that they have learned. It's, it, it's there where they show that, uh -huh, I can do it, and they feel confident about it, and then they carry on their learning. Uh, to recapitulate as, as a kind of uh, conclusion, 
the icebreakers are used for a diversity of purposes. I have already mentioned that it could be used for vision, it could be used for uh, new introduction or introducing things for presentation, etc. etc. And this can be used at any stage of the lesson. It's not just the beginning of the lesson, but you can use it as fair minutes, you know, those parts you know, that remain from your lesson. The amount of input to provide depends on which stage or which stage, yes, which stage of competition your learners are. And in case of new items, please contextualize, contextualize and customize them according to the learner's prior knowledge. To say it in one sentence or very briefly, ice breakers or warmers serve various purposes. They are effective when tuned to learners' prior knowledge and they get your students engaged in both language input and output. Therefore, your learners are acquiring the language. If you happen to work in very uh, good uh, conditions, you can use online or offline activities. So if you have an internet connection in your classroom and your students happen to have tablet or they happen to have smartphones and they can connect, Kahoot is the best way of using these, these kind of activities. Otherwise, if you have the connection yourself and your students do not have the connection, you can still use Bamboo and uh, you, can, you can find uh, here in these, in these two, you can either use other teachers' uh, uh, activities or you can uh, design your own activities and then use them in your classroom. Another type of, uh, this one is offline, you can download animated PowerPoints on place and customize them from from uh, uh, from that website, and this one does not need connection, but all it needs is to customize. So there are already some templates, and if you get those templates and and you customize them, uh, that will be better. So my references are as such. So you will have the opportunity for those who who would like to go further in this, and then they they would like to uh, to, to investigate and to know more about this series of language acquisition. Here you are. You have the, uh, the uh, you have all these uh, uh, references, and thank you very much. I hand it over to my colleague and friend Rashida. Okay, thanks a lot for your presentation. Yeah, we do have some comments like thank you. It was very interesting. Okay, great. Can I ask? I can do it like this. Yeah, great. Yeah, you can see the comments. I, what happened? I'm so sorry, but uh, but I'd like us to continue. Yeah, Ola, can you present the next speaker who's yeah. going to talk about the same topic? Yeah, we're going to discuss mm -hmm. the same topic of icebreakers and warmers. With a great pleasure, guys, let me introduce Rashida Guelzim from Morocco. Uh, who is the co-author? Yeah, yeah, we lost you. I'm so uh, sorry. I, we lost sorry. You. So it was. Yeah, it, I, it, it, I just yes. wanted to, to say just how thankful I am to you for this wonderful information. Yeah, because we do have those comments. I'd like you to see them, and I'm sure you will join us on YouTube because I saw you were so active on YouTube. By the way, guys, you saw so many comments written by Mr. Abdul Majid. So if you want to discuss something with him, you can easily reach him on YouTube because I hope you will go there and you'll be able to communicate with other teachers from all the parts of the world. Yeah. Thank you Great. very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Yeah. And we continue. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Ms. Rashida Gyozim, uh, who is the co-author of various Moroccan textbooks when she worked as a member of the National Textbook Commission. In the last four decades, she has been training novice teachers at the Ministry of Education and Teaching General English, Business English and Legal English at the British Council Rabat in Morocco. She is also a Cambridge and IGCSE examiner. She has attended several training courses at Bell College and at the Institute of Education, University of London, England. She has also been a Fulbright student in Chicago, Illinois in the USA in 1993. She is a former supervisor and teacher trainer at the Academy of Rabat and a teacher trainer and teacher at the British Council Rabat. 
She is currently a teacher and teacher trainer for the American Language Center Rabat. Rashida has delivered trainings in Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, the UK, and Poland. Yeah. Hello, Rashida. Hello. Hi, I'm really happy to see you finally. How are you there? Can you hear us, Rashida? Can you hear us? Because I can hear it just kind of strange sound. Rashida, can you hear us? Uh, I'm not sure she can. You can. I can see you nodding, but unfortunately we can't hear you. Can you say something for us to check the sound? Yeah. Actually, what you should do right now, please reload the page and enter the studio. Again, Hello. I think. Oh, it's great now. Hello. Hello. <laughs> can you hear? Yes, yes, now yeah, we can. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. Okay, can you share oh, your screen right now? I mean, I can see your screen, you but please open your presentation for me to see that it is ready to be shown. Okay, okay. straight away. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, great. Here we are. Have you got yeah. it? Yes, um, and also you can see that. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I yes. see some probably. You got it? Yes. Yes, yes, everything is okay. Eva, can you hear us? Okay. Yes. Oh, yes. Are we Eva. okay? Yeah, now, now we are. Okay. Share your can screen again. No, please, share your screen. Yes. I mean, uh, open your presentation. Yes. Again. Make it in a presentation mode, like a full Here screen. Here we are. Yeah. Yeah, and let's, and let's go. Okay. So, um, hello everyone. Um, thanks, Abdul Majid. I'm taking it from you, taking it over from you to some practical ideas. And um, the first one uh, would be, uh, I think, charity begins be be at home. Uh, a nice breaker that I call the cloud. And the cloud it seems to be a very, very successful icebreaker. And here's. Uh, 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 what you do is you ask your students to draw um, a cloud and write two places, two dates, two numbers, and uh, uh, two names of people that are important for you. You try to make them guess what all those places and all those uh, na names and 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 dates um, uh, what what they are for you. And what I do, and it's a beautiful icebreaker. It was absolutely marvelous. Um, uh, with every single group that I have used with. So uh, let me ask you, what does, uh, for example, uh, 1982, uh, what does it mean for me? Try to guess. Uh, the first one who gets it uh, gets a chocolate from me, from Morocco, all over from Morocco. Uh, so um, uh, 1982 is the day when I became a teacher. Fantastic. If you get it right, good. You get a chocolate. If you get it wrong, uh, you're done. No problem. So first, what you do is you do this with the, your, your, your trainees, your students, with anybody, first class, first class, and it is absolutely marvelous. Now, the second thing that, that you do, you ask all your students to do it and put one, one or two names, two uh, dates, two places, and ask them to do it in a mingle activity. Okay? Now, the second activity that I call um what's the question now who hasn't woken up one morning saying asking a question what time is it uh, am i late uh, is breakfast ready things like that so these are questions that you ask every day and our students seem to have sometimes a problem with questions so this is an exercise and in fact all the this presentation is the compilation of of activities that I have uh, hunted for and that I am using uh, all over the place. So, for example, you underline, you do this in, in, in different uh, uh, times. For example, first part, 10 questions. Uh, Senegal, I want an, a question for Senegal. I'm from Senegal, what's the question? And you can do it in a mingle or uh, pair work or group work. It's beautiful. Look, uh, you, you will get this on a PDF. It's beautiful, it's fantastic. 10 first questions, very easy, 
10 second question there are 40 questions so you just choose okay uh choose whatever you want to, to use which ones you want to uh you, you can just mingle them uh choose your the the, the um uh, uh the order you want to use them with and it's a beautiful icebreaker, a beautiful warmer, even even uh, as a as a filler in the end of a of a of, a, of a, a lesson, you can do it. It's absolutely marvelous. You'll see. And at the same time, you're revising the grammar, you're revising the vocabulary, you are revising questioning, and also uh, it's a nice acti It's a nice activity. It's a nice atmosphere, and people know uh a lot of things from each other correct each other and you are there of course to monitor so remember what's the question is absolutely a marvelous activity just do it believe me it works you can also do it either you know as a hard in a hard copy on the board or online okay so 40 questions you have it just do it of course you can add things okay now the next activity is called how did the 26 letters of the alphabet disappear so easily look at this it's really very nice you can do it as a as an icebreaker uh, as a warmer look at all this and it's very easy to do just have a look you have a list of words where one letter is missing and what happens is that you ask your students to use one letter of the alphabet there are 26 letters they have to find out which letter is missing. And very importantly, they cannot use the letter twice. So can you give me, for example, the last one, 26. What's missing? The U, a lot of people, okay? Uh, 25, what's missing? The C. And, and you can do it in parts, or you can do it as a whole. You can do it on the board, you can do it online, whatever you like. It's beautiful, it works. Even adults loved it when I did it with my trainees. They loved it. Of course, you can change, you can adapt, you can adapt whatever you like. Just do it in parts. You can you can change the words according to a top a topic or anything you like. So this is really something that I would like you to to try in your in your in your classes, and you'll see you will remember me for the ah, Rashida. Thank you for that. Now the next exercise is this one. It's called adjective hunt, but it could be adverb hunt or verb hunt, or noun hunt, or anything you like. So you give your students, like uh, you ask them to circle 20 adjectives in two minutes. Here it's adjectives, but you can do it with, as I said, adverbs, verbs, uh, anything you like, irregular verbs. So look, can you in two minutes find out the missing adjectives? Large, fast, hard, friendly, impressive, similar, apprehensive, Inclusive, conclusive, controversial, clear, definitive, interesting, independent, strong, uh, lost, soft, soluble, real, reliable, recent, and drunk. Okay, so that's a nice, another adjective that you can use. So look, you can change it. You can do whatever you want with it. The idea is there. You can do it as an icebreaker. It's very nice icebreaker. It makes the, the, the atmosphere enjoyable, and they love it. They love it and they really trust me, they would love that. Okay. Now the next the next activity is called is called let's see the wonderful worldwide names quiz. It's being written by Derek Strange. Okay, and look at this. I love this one because really uh, just can you name a notion beginning with A? Atlantic. A sort of food for beginning with B. In Morocco, B means bread. I don't know in your countries what B would be, but for us, B is a very important word for bread. And I'm sure that um, it could be broccoli for others. But here you have all, you have 20, I think 20 questions or 26, but it's just beautiful. It's beautiful. You can do it in part. You can do it on online. You can do it as a quiz. You can do it as a game. And to start your lessons with, it's absolutely marvelous. You'll see, uh, try it, and you'll see. I've done it with my students. I've done it with young learners. I've done it with the adults. It's absolutely a, a fantastic activity. You can start your, your 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 lesson with. You can finish your lesson with. You can break. You can do it as a in the, in the middle of the lesson to 
you know, to boost your students' motivation during the lesson. So, uh, look, uh, I like the one with X, okay, which is um, which start name uh, a musical instrument starting with X, and everybody starts, you know, looking for a xylophone. But there's so many, there's so many things you can learn from here: vocabulary, you can use geography, history, uh, words related to food, words related to all sorts of things. So please remember that you can use this, and it's beautiful. Now, the mind is for me one of my best, best activities that uh, that I use with my students. I pretend that I can, that I came in the morning and I have no voice. Can you? Tell me what's happening. I'm in a hotel. And so how do I do it? I, I'm talking to the receptionist. Please, mm, 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 can you book me a plane ticket for Barcelona for tomorrow night, please? And it's hilarious. You can see it. Uh, if you do it with your students, it's fabulous. You can just give, ask them to come to you, give them a, a piece of paper. Or can you do it? You can do it. Um, I mean, uh, as a, like when Sonia talked about drama and Paul Harvey when he talked about drama. The one that I like very much is this one. And it's hilarious when I ask my students to do it. If I have dropped my glasses in the toilet. And it's hilarious because they have to do it. They have to mind the toilet and the glasses. You'll see. If you do it in the class, you'll see that it's fabulous. What I'm doing here is uh, I'm taking into account uh, uh, places where there is no internet, no electricity, no nothing. So what you can do is really with nothing, you can have those icebreakers, you can use a board, you can use pieces of paper, you can use anything you like yourself, of course, you as a, as a powerful tool. Now, the other thing here is where did the vowels go? It's another activity. And here, it's beautiful for all sorts of levels. Uh, you, you have here uh, W, you have two, two and the W, which means that it's a word with two letters. Uh, the second word is three letters. Third word is two letters. So, for example, here, we can go to the street market now. Okay, number two, some people love to sing and dance. We are looking for vowels. And here, it's really very nice because look, number five here is business English. They have never purchased that car. You can use all sentences from the textbook, from any, from any, anywhere, you know, and you do it and it's really beautiful. You'll see that they like it. Now, let's go to the, the little ones. Color the correct spelling, for example, here, you, and you can ask the, the little ones to color the, the right word. And it's really nice, okay, you see? And then you can do a correction uh, activity. So here, you can it can be a warm-up, it can be an icebreaker, it can be a filler, it's really nice. Of course, you will get this all from on the PDF, it's really nice. The next activity here, this teacher is going to call uh, out uh, letters, and they have to find out the word. So here, the explanation is here. What's the word? You listen to your teacher and you call the letters you hear. What word does the, the colored letters make? It's up to you. You do it your own way. It's just the idea is there. It's a nice and warmer, it's a nice activity. Now, the next activity is, and I love this one. I made it up, but you can do it with your country. Do you know Morocco? If your answers are correct, you will spell out a famous Moroccan city. So, what is the famous oil produced in the south of Morocco? Aha! What is the name of a famous Moroccan band from Etzawira? Which tourist town situated on the Atlantic coast hosts the famous yearly cultural festival? So, here are some pictures that I made up, that I uh, imported from uh, Google and other places. So, Lwil Dargan, Argan oil, is something that is made in Morocco. This is Gnawa, so we have a for argan oil, G for Gnawa, and we have, uh, an, uh, this is another picture of Gnawa, and you have Asila, which is a beautiful city. So we have A, we have D, we have A. The next one is, what is the name of the Moroccan currency? If you don't know, it's Dirham, so we have D. In five, in which town is all, is Al Akhawain University, one of the best universities in the world. It's Akhawain in Ifran. So it's I, the city is called Ifran. And uh, number six, what is the traditional Moroccan house or palace with an, an interior garden called? It's the Riyadh. So it's R, this is our currency. This is the Akhawain University, and it's a Swiss, like it looks like a Swiss city. And 
And this is a Riyadh. This is a really nice place where you can, if you have money, you can stay there. Okay, or you can go to a hotel. Now, the famous Moroccan city is called Agadir. And this is Agadir. Unfortunately, we can't go now. It's uh, it's really, no. What I want really to emphasize here, everybody, I hope that these, all these activities will be useful to you. I'm sure they will be. Please remember, the, 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 the cloud is a fabulous icebreaker. Uh, find the letters is absolutely marvelous. The questions are really nice. The world uh, questions are really nice. The, the, this one, we, I have just made up this one. It's really nice. You can do it yourself for your country, for your city, for anything that you like. It's really nice with pictures and you can do it online. You can do it as a as a, uh, as a warm up, you can do it as a, an icebreaker, you can do it as a, uh, a filler, whatever you like. It's really nice. Uh, I hope that you will uh, use some of them. I'm sure that uh, you will like some of them. You might not like all of them. Uh, just forget if you don't like them, but try them first. Try them first. These are, this is uh, my email address. If you need anything, if you need more, more activities, please send me a message, send me an email. I would love to send you everything that I have concerning icebreakers, warmers, fillers, or anything else. Now, thank you very much, everybody, for, for watching. And I hope, I hope that you will like them. And remember, we don't all have tablets. We don't all have uh, inter I IWBs. We don't all have telephones. You might use these things in situations where there is nothing like that. So that's why I try to, uh, you know, mix the ones, the, the things that are in, uh, uh, that you can do online, things that you can do on the board, things that you can do just only, things you can use your body. So there is a mixture of activities. I wish you all the best and I hope that that you will use them and uh, get in touch if you need anything more. Thank you very much. And I hope I have been uh, uh, brief enough. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Roshina. It was really amazing, so energetic. So we had such comments like, I would like to be a student in her class. <laughs> <laughs> so it would be great one day to arrange some kind of international class for all the teachers. And actually, it would be great if one day you could deliver a workshop for SART teaching and learning where I we can invite teachers from all over the world I just to share our you. ideas, energy. <laughs> and also, guys, I'd like to remind you that we have that hashtag, like, like Teacher's Voice. Um, let me show BTS. you. Yeah, Teacher's Voice BTS, as you can see it right now. Why do we use hashtags? I'd like to remind you, because if you post on Instagram or Facebook and you use this hashtag and then you click hashtag, you can find all the teachers who participated in this event and then you can just find some, some kind of connection. You can start your project. You can start communicating with each other. Actually, this is a way how we can be connected. So please post your ideas, insights. You can simply write something like, thank you, Rashida, for this wonderful session. And then hashtag Teacher's Voice BTS. Thanks a lot. Thank you. My and pleasure, Eva. My pleasure. And I hope that they will be useful. Don't hesitate, everybody. Please uh, use the PDF that I have sent to Eva and Samad. And again, uh, Olga, thank you. Uh, Eva, thank you and Samad. A wonderful job, a wonderful uh, uh, team. Please go on. You are doing a great job, really. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank Rashida. You. You're welcome. Thank you. See you. See you. See you. Okay, and we should continue. Yeah, so I'd like to announce the next session. And um, the next person who's going to discuss a rather important topic is Fatima Samitzadeh from Azerbaijan. You see, we are traveling from one country to another. So this is uh, fast traveling. You see, we were in Morocco a couple of minutes before, and now we're going to Azerbaijan. And I should tell you from Azerbaijan, we will slightly move to Uzbekistan. So um, Fatima Samitzadeh is a TISL certified teacher and teacher trainer of TISL with more than 20 years of experience in teaching FLT methodology and ESP. Currently, she serves as a senior lecturer at Azerbaijan University of Languages. 
So welcome, Azerbaijan. Welcome, Miss Fatima. We are really happy to have you here. Hello, everyone. I am Hello. Really happy to see you all in this session. And I'm really happy to take button in this marathon. Yeah, I'd like to ask you to share your screen because I can't see it right yes. now on my board. Sure. But I know that you're well trained mm -hmm. to do that. Is it okay? No, I can't see it. I have shared this. Yeah, no, I can't see it. Sorry, can you do it again? But it's okay. Technology is technology. What to do? Yes, technology is technology. Let me try again. As usual, share screen, then choose the icon you need. Again, share screen. I'm sharing. No, I can't see it. Wow, what, what is wrong? Just try to do it again. Don't worry. You can share the entire screen, you know, not to go to those. Yeah, right now I can see your screen. That's great. Open your presentation in a presentation mode. Mm -hmm. I think it's... Yeah. yeah, I can see it's opening now. Yeah, and make it as a full screen right now. Mm -hmm. Is it okay now? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Here we go. So good luck with your presentation. See you in 10 minutes. Okay. So. So. Yeah, you can start, please. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Oh, okay, great. So, uh, revising activities, the key to effective learning is the name of our session. And I'm really happy to share uh, some ideas. I would like to share some ideas about this, I would say, important part of teaching uh, ESL nowadays. And today I would like to uh, focus on some key ideas about review and the way of its incorporation into ESL classroom. And the key points I would like to uh, draw your attention to uh, are as follows in this very slide. I think you can see this. What is review? Why to review? What to review? And the last uh, topic I'm going to speak about will be what should effective teacher do? While speaking about what is review, I think all of us, I think all uh, the teachers do understand that review is an important component of ESL learning and teaching process. And review can help us to strengthen the uh, connection between material we have learned. And besides review of previous learning can help us to recall words, concepts and procedures effortlessly, automatically, when we need this material for solving some problems or we needed to understand some new materials. While speaking about why to review, I would uh, mention uh, one of the main reasons, and the main reasons as for me, and not only for me, but for uh, to most uh, methodologists uh, nowadays, is forgetting. The problem is that uh, methods uh, that may seem uh, to increase our students' performance in short term, say, not during one lesson, may fail uh, to support our students' retention of knowledge in long term. Uh, just because our students see new language in a lesson doesn't mean that they will remember it. Uh, of course, if it comes in an engaging way, if their uh, effect is positive, they are more likely to remember this language but uh, and the new material which was presented during the uh, lesson. But as Jeremy Harmy says, but for a time. Uh, you know, what should we do in this case? Uh, sometimes uh, it uh, might seem as if 
students are performing well in the lesson itself. So teachers may think that what they are doing is effective, but in reality, students uh, rapid, are rapidly forgetting uh, the material they were uh, they have just been uh, presented as soon as they have uh, left the classroom. And the main uh, purpose, teachers' main goal here is uh, to make the transition from short-term to long-term memory. And for these students have to encounter language repeatedly. How can we do that to transmit the uh, material uh, from short-term to long-term memory? Uh, now, uh, here I would like to speak about uh, Barack Rosenstein. It's an American methodologist uh, who proposes 10 principles of instruction, uh, which is uh, a research-based strategy uh, based in, uh, there's, uh, this is a research in cognitive linguistics, by the way, and I would like to draw your attention to the first and the tenth principle, which uh, are sound like begin each lesson with a short review of a previous learning, and engage students in weekly and monthly review. And uh, speaking about these principles, uh, by the way, these principles are the first and the tenth ones. They are relating to regular review for long-term learning, which can be used in practice. And re re review of pre previous learning at the start of each lesson uh, is one of the ways to strengthen our students' retention of knowledge. For example, if you are teaching, if you are going to teach future simple tense form, you may wish to uh, use review for present uh, continuous. And besides, sorry, I missed the slide. Yeah, white review, it was forgetting, but sorry, I would like to go back to this slide. Uh, about forgetting. Even Weinstein, he called forgetting as an important step in learning process. Uh, coming to what to review, yeah. here are some uh, activities. There are a number of ways in which we can do this. Uh, and here you can see different activities which can be used in the classroom. I think you can see all this uh, clearly. The most popular is fill in the blanks, so matching up and so on. But as for me, I really love brain dump when students uh, are asked to write everything they can remember about um, the previous material, whether the work, topic, uh, anything else. And uh, knowledge retrieval. Knowledge retrieval task is really uh, useful. To, to be utilized in the uh, uh, in the ASL classroom for revision. So, of course, uh, students may struggle uh, with these kinds of activities at first, but the benefits of this initial struggle will be realized over long term. I would like to mention about some other advantages of using such kind of activities for review as well as improving retention of knowledge. These kinds of activities can also support formative assessment, providing teachers with useful information about gaps and areas of strength. Uh, since we are aware of our students' gaps and areas of strength, I think we can start, our teachers can start uh, planning for review. And when planning, teachers might want to consider which words, which procedures and concepts need to be automatic and which words, vocabulary or ideas need to be reviewed before the lesson begins. Reviewing previous learning isn't just about reviewing the uh, material of the previous lesson, from the previous lesson. And Rosenshine reminds us uh, about the uh, uh, of the importance of engaging our students in weekly and monthly reviews. It also helps to bring to mind previous learning so that students can apply this knowledge to new content. For example, 
uh, learning to use the word still or no longer, unfortunately, oops, sorry. Uh, or no longer in one of the textbooks they are given in the context of family. Uh, but without encouraging our students to use these structures, these words or word, combina word combinations to apply this to some other contexts such as sports, school holidays and so on, uh, our students uh, will, will, be, uh, will associate these uh, structures only with the original context. But frequent review allows us to encourage them to link these structures to a range of contexts. Uh, what should effective teachers do uh, in order uh, to implement revising activities into their uh, classroom? First of all, they can start to begin the lessons with five or eight minutes review of previously covered material. Uh, besides, some teachers uh, may review vocabulary, grammar, events, or previously learned concepts. Uh, these teachers may provide additional practice of skills which need to be automatic. Effective teachers' activities also include reviewing concepts and skills necessary uh, for doing homework such as reading each other's uh, papers, correcting each other's uh, assignments, uh, besides asking about the points which were difficult or uh, your students made errors. And these reviews help us to ensure that uh, students have a firm grasp of the skills needed for the day's lesson. It's important for the teacher to help students to recall uh, the concepts and vocabulary that will be relevant for the day's lesson because our working memory is very limited and if we don't review previous learning we will have to make special efforts to recall old material while learning new one and this makes it difficult for us and for us for our students of course uh, to learn new material and uh, uh, it's really important to consider what our students need to remember in the long term and make sure they are frequently are being asked to think about that across different contexts, in different types of tasks, and in both production and comprehension of language. And this will support our students, your students, in developing well-connected and automatic knowledge. Uh, this is all about Rosenstein and not only Rosenstein and other methodologies ideas about review. And now I would like to pass the baton to uh, Ms. Gülbahor from Uzbekistan, who will, be, uh, who will be presenting the activities uh, to be implemented into ASL classroom. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. I can you stop sharing your screen? Yeah, okay, great. Thanks for your presentation. And yes, we would yeah. like to pause the floor to the next speaker. Hola. Mm -hmm. So this is Gulbahar Mamadiva, uh, who is from Uzbekistan. She's an MA TESOL program graduate from Webster University. Gulbahar is an enthusiastic and motivated EFL ESL teacher and trainer with 10 years of experience. She believes in the effectiveness of a positive atmosphere where students can learn and grow. Gulbahar seeks opportunities to share knowledge and expertise with other professionals. Yeah, before I join Gulbahar, I'd like to tell very huge thanks for this presentation to Ms. Fatima, because, you know, some of those ideas, they are well known, it seems, from one side, from another side, it's really important to highlight those words. And I'd like to add one more thing, that people wrote such kind of things for allowing me to find uh, like-minded people here. So thanks a lot for your presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. 
And yeah, we lost Hilbahar somehow. Yeah. Anyway, Miss Fatima, if you want, you can join us on YouTube to continue watching this. Okay. Um, I, I don't want Thank to call it a webinar, much. yeah, <laughs> marathon. Thank you. Good luck to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So somehow something happened. We lost connection with Miss Gulbahar because I saw her. So let's wait for her. And while we are waiting, I'd like us to play a small game. So uh, Ola, could you remind people what should be done in this situation? Yes. So uh, you can see some objects. Basically, there are 12 of them. Uh, you will have a one minute time limit, and your task is to memorize as many objects as you can see. Uh, so, but at first, just look carefully at this picture. and try to memorize as many objects as you can see. They are all united around one topic. Yeah, I, I think that's enough time for people to memorize the objects. Yeah. Ready, Tamar said that they are ready. So <laughs> what should be done right now? So uh, now, uh, yeah, it's good, yes. Uh, when there is no picture on the screen, uh, you have to write down the number of the objects you have memorized. Mm -hmm. yeah, could you please, yeah, could you please write uh, this number in comments? The number of the objects you have memorized. So how many? Go, go, Gulbahor. Yeah, we are waiting. She's here, but as soon as we see those numbers, she will be added on the screen. She's waiting. Yeah, eleven. We have one. And so, like 11. Great. Do we have more? No. Do it's a kind, if we do it with our students in the classroom, this is a kind My of. My coach said that he has memorized 15. 15. Mm. Okay. Tamar says nine. Miss Julia, nine. Great. So, Mike, Mr. Mike, it seemed that he memorized the more. Nine. Rosie, seven. Yeah, actually, do you know about Miller's number? Like, we can memorize something like plus minus, uh, five plus minus two. Yeah. So, Rosie can prove this idea. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Lorena, I'm really happy to see you here because I do remember you from our previous marathon. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, 10. Okay, great. So, nine, five. Yes, super. So now I'm going to add again, and you can check. So how many do we have here? If we count like flags is one object, so we have how many? Well, how many do yeah. we have here? Really, you know, there are 12 of them, but uh, I didn't think about that. If we count all the flags like one object, Yes, so yeah. there are 12, but <laughs> there are lots of books. So again, it's about giving uh, correct instructions, but we're going to talk about instructions a bit later. And now finally, let me add, let me invite this wonderful person, Gulbahor Mamadiyev from Uzbekistan. Hello, Uzbekistan. I can see that lots of people joined us just to support the teacher. Hello, how are you, dear? Hello, hello, you have hello, Olga. Hello. It's so nice to see you, and uh, welcome to sunny Uzbekistan. It's a great pleasure uh, to be here, and it's honor for me to present revision activities for different age groups. Thank you, Ms. Fatima, for theoretical part. Let's move to the uh, practical part. Yeah. So. so uh, can can you open your presentation just yes can you see my presentation not yet just it's a blank page only uh -huh, okay yeah yeho gulbahor says crazy sam il <laughs> 
Yeah, I do understand what you mean, Mike, Miss Mike. I was counting books and bookcases, for instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the reason. Actually, I I wish to show that example as a as an example of poor instructions when you say count the objects, but you mean something else. Yeah. Okay. So, can you try to share it again? Uh huh. Okay. I am trying. No. Yeah, so we're still getting feedbacks about previous speaker, like revision is the key to learn. Yes, definitely. And now we're going to prove it. Good luck. Yeah, great. Let me check what we can see. Uh, it's still connecting, you see. Um, can, you yeah. stop share, can you stop sharing and try to share it again? Mm -hmm. So let me do it one more time. So can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you clearly. It's really interesting that... If you want, you can share the entire screen. Oh, I, my Chrome is not responding now. I'm really okay. sorry. Okay, reload your page. Reload your page. Join us again. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's okay. So, we're still having lots of comments. Thank you, Tamara. Uh, you see, guys, what I told you before, when you want... Um, yeah, when you want, you can be united with the help of education. As we can see now, this is an example mm -hmm. how Azerbaijan and Georgia <coughs> found each other. <laughs> yeah, great. So people trying to help you, just letting you know, try Chrome. And you see, we have people from Bangladesh as well here. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> Someone is still answering that question, Ola. Can you see it? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how many do we have here? A board, plant, bookcase, chair, um, chair, a pile of books, lamp, clock, ten. coffee table, ten. ten. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Gilbaro's prison. So, what students really uh, do? So, when they realize that this is the topic, uh, school, yes, they start naming all the objects they know or everything they can see in the classroom, and then they might have a, an opportunity to guess, even if they haven't memorized the object. Yeah. Okay, can you hear us now? Yes, I can hear. Can you see my screen? Um, no, I can't see. But anyway, we can do something with that, I believe. Don't worry. Can you see me clearly right now? Uh, no, no, no. She, I guess she she's, can't. She's freezing. Mm -hmm. So what? Mahar, can you reload again just and enter the studio? Yeah. So anyway, we should continue. Yeah. You still waiting for her? Yeah, actually I have um, another game to play, but I wanted to play it with Mr. Rao when we have at least three people here. Yeah. So I don't know. We're still waiting. Okay. Good luck on behalf of English teachers from Uzbekistan. So it's because so many teachers are wishing luck to Gulbahor that her internet connection can cope <laughs> with it. It seems like that. Yeah, Rosie, thanks for being so supportive. Yeah, yeah, we are supporting you. Can't wait to hear your wonderful ideas. I, I, 
I saw the presentation and I know how wonderful her ideas are and I do hope that it will be possible for her to share those ideas. Because actually that is the teaching treasure, I would say. So I think that all of us uh, has had any technological issues at least once. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you can see the comment right now. I would like to connect with teachers here watching the marathon. Yeah, that's the reason what I told you about. Just please write some comments on Facebook or Instagram. And don't forget to include the hashtag, like the hashtag. You can see it now, teachers voice BT. Us. And then by clicking that hashtag, you can find other teachers who are participating in this marathon. Also, uh, you will be able to share your ideas, your insights, or if you are interested in something, you can connect each other and discuss it and to have any kinds of projects you want. You even can visit each other's lessons on Zoom or whatever you use, just to have some kind of peer observation, encouraging each other and supporting each other and sharing your wonderful ideas. Because as you can see, we have teachers from different parts of the world. So, uh, Ilbahor, can you hear us? Uh, yes, I can hear. Great. So if you want, I can share your presentation from my screen. If uh, yes, if you, you can, please. Uh, yeah, yes, you can share my presentation. I can. The that only would be one, great. yeah, the only one thing I'd like to ask you because last time it happened, if you see that the slides are not moving, just let me know. I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. some kind of magic you know <laughs> because what i can do now also i can share my screen okay let's do it like this yeah can you see your presentation it's loading. Still loading. And now? Yes, I can see. So let's start our vision activities. So can you move to the next slide, please? Uh, uh, the Greek proverb says the repetition is the mother of all learning. Therefore, why do we need this kind of repetition and revision activities? What do you think? Uh, because they are helpful for uh, checking understanding, reinforced learning process, remind the students forgotten material and identify the, um, the uh, gaps and fill uh, these gaps in knowledge of the learners. So today I'll try to provide three uh, activities uh, for revision. Uh, let's start with the first one. Uh -huh. So the first activity is tree uh, mind mapping. Um, as you know, graphic organizers are um, great tool for vision uh, because they enable a meaningful learning and uh, it helps memorization and it's more engaging form of learning as learners are engaged in the process of brainstorming. So here uh, I have the activity. Uh, you can use it uh, with different age groups and uh, different levels of proficiency and uh, you should uh, use it. Uh, you can use it in groups, in individual, as a pair, pair work. Uh, you, you ask your students uh, to uh, organize the concepts, or it's also useful for revision of vocabulary. And uh, if you have 
uh, younger learners, you can ask them to draw and uh, or provide ready-made graphic organizers. If you don't know uh, how to use it, for example, online, I will help you. Uh, next slide, please. In the next slide, I will explain you how to use this kind of graphic organizers in online lessons. Um, you can use uh, Google that it for uh, creating graphic organizers and this kind of tree mind mapping activity. And you can ask your students um, to make this kind of tree, uh, inserting the information, main aspects of the topic or vocabulary. Or if you have very younger learners, you can ask, uh, draw uh, this kind of tree uh, mind mapping and uh, uh, upload it on the Padlet wall as well. So the next uh, brilliant activity is um, with balloons. Can you move to the next uh, slide, please? Balloon darts. Yeah. So you know that balloons are really fun, colorful, and it provides really positive atmosphere. All learners, all students, young and adult learners love these kind of activities. Uh, how to use this activity? You should divide your students into um, mini groups. Uh, you should prepare balloons with the questions. Uh, you will need a paper or board to stick with a scotch tape and uh, it can be used uh, in different purposes for checking vocabulary or checking uh, the material which you taught to your learners and believe me it will be great fun for your learners and uh, if you want uh, if you have for example i have problems with uh, blowing balloons you can ask learners to come five minutes earlier and uh, believe me you will have many volunteers and next uh, uh, yes uh, online version of this activity how to use it you will have you can include this kind of uh, picture with the balloons uh, onto your slide and uh, ask your learners to choose by colors or by numbers and it will be also a very uh, great activity to use in online during this uh, coronavirus pandemic and the next activity is also for different age um, and level students this activity is called space race game um, this uh, activity is really helpful to revise what have been learned. And uh, if you have this kind of uh, ready-made board, you can use But If you don't have, um, it's not a big issue. You can uh, take a paper and draw this kind of uh, activity, board game, and uh, you should divide your class into two groups and you can play. It, uh, this activity can be also modified uh, for different age groups. You can see here adults are playing this activity and having a lot of fun. You can use both with younger learners and adult learners. And how to use this activity in online classroom? What do you think? Now I'll give you some information about online version of this activity. Uh, in the next slide, uh, here is, you can see the link uh, where you can find the templates yeah, for space race game. Uh, here you have um, rocket ship and alien ship group. You should prepare some questions to your students and uh, uh, this uh, presentation, ready-made presentation, uh, moves uh, when they answer the questions correctly. The ships moves uh, towards the planet Mars. And of course, who reaches the planet Mars firstly is the winner. This is also a great activity to use in your classrooms. So next slide, please.
So Gardner and Lambert um, said that motivation and learning leads to success. Therefore, uh, use different kinds of activities for increasing the learner's uh, intrinsic motivation. Uh, motivation is the key for learning. Therefore, if the learners are motivated, they can learn anything. They can learn any language. So uh, next slide, please. This is the end of uh, my presentation and uh, my activities. Uh, you can find me in uh, everywhere in social media. You can write me in if you have any questions. Uh, I will be more than happy to answer your questions. And um, also, I am a monitor of the ELT community. Please join us and thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, just I couldn't check any comments here, so right now I'm going to do it. Um, as you can see, we have brilliant activities. Thank you. You know, from our previous marathon, I do remember when Miss Sauda joined us, our chat was overloaded with lots of supportive comments from teachers from Uzbekistan. And it's exactly what I can see right now. Here we have comments like, Fun of Kabum now. <laughs> Thank you very much to the presentation. You can see, yeah. Thank you and so much. So yeah. Thank you. So, and we have to go further because next speaker is going to present the next idea. Yeah. Let me introduce the next speaker. Uh, now we have to move to Ukraine. So the next speaker is Miss Natalia Dichuk who has been involved in teacher training since 1993. Being an active conference goer, materials writer and workshop conductor, she is a devoted member of different professional organizations. Back in, in 2000, she founded the Agency of Foreign Languages, RUNA, and as I mentioned before, they are the partners of this conference from Ukraine. We have two Ukrainian partners. So with a multi-dimensional activity profile, Ms. Natalia holds Cambridge CPE and CELTA certificates. And this summer, she successfully completed international IELTS instructor course organized by SR Teaching and Learning. Her scientific interests range from EFL methodology, media methodology, media pedagogy, study of um, aphoristic utterances to materials development on the basis of authentic resources. So, Miss Natalia, you're welcome. Hello. Hello. Hello, the world. <laughs> hello, hello. We are really happy to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting. Yeah. And what we have to do right now is to share the screen again. Because I can see the screen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now, can you put it in the presentation mode? Yeah. So, here we go. Yeah. Okay, shall I begin? Great. Press that hide and that bar. Yeah. Like not stop share, not stop sharing, but hide. Can you see that the bar? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, and your presentation is hidden now. So we have. To, can you open it again? Great flowers. Thank you, Mr. Abdel Majid. Uh, can you see the yeah. presentation? Yeah, it's okay. Let it be like that. So, good luck with your presentation. See you in 10 minutes. Here we go. Fingers crossed. Okay. I would like to greet everyone again. Well, 
Um, I'm sorry to say, but you just did something. Just a second. Okay. okay. No. It, it now it's better. Um, I can't see it as a full screen presentation. I see it like small slides, the bar on the left. Okay. Hi, Miss Veronica. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah, we can see right it. Now? Yeah, let's try it again. Okay, the first thing I would like to say right now is uh, the metaphoric saying uh, uttered by one of the famous people is that uh, we dance first and think later. Yeah, we can hear you. If you're checking somewhere else, we have some kind of time lapse. So it would be better if you continue. Uh, shall I continue? Yeah, 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 please. Okay. Uh, this thing actually illustrates the situation in modern education and definitely in any sphere of life and which typically characterizes Slavonic people. They start using their appliance and then read the instructions. The same happens in uh, experience of any young educator, professional educator. We get into the battle and then develop the rules while struggling. The insights from me. Um, I used to go into ballroom dancing I used to go into ballroom dancing, and uh, my children do uh, dance. Uh, my daughter and my daughter and my son. And uh, um, this is a different experience. But acquiring a skill, uh, acquiring a knowledge in uh, um, this sphere um, is, to some extent, developing the habit or is illustrative of bringing the habit or acquiring the knowledge in all the other spheres. Nowadays, it is very fashionable in, uh, among a lot of scientists and educators to visit a variety of courses which actually are not uh, their realm of study, but to uh, face the challenge in order to train how it feels to be a learner to train how it feels to be assessed, evaluated, graded, to feel how it feels when you are presented material in this or that way. So we can learn from a variety of extracurricular activities, things that would help us to apply techniques, methods, ideas, and philosophy of education in our classroom not speaking about the first day of study or the first week of study, throughout the whole study. Um, we, throughout all our lives, undergo educational plans. And I found this um, cartoon and saying, which might to some extent illustrate uh, what we are going to talk about in today's presentation. Which is more important as the standard, the journey or the destination? the company that time is driven. So in today's presentation, I will use a lot of illusions connected with dancing. Life is like dancing. It's not about getting from one place to another. It's about enjoying a step. What I am trying to uh, say by this, that throughout each and every moment, second, minute, hour of our classroom time, we have to create the atmosphere of enjoyment and fruitful learning. What is the company our learners uh, are surrounded by in their educational journey? 
actually a, a number of people and uh, uh, communities are involved in this. The teacher is an educational manager, a student himself or herself as a participant of educational process, a class as the community of people, which really is the illustrative, the, the thread of the society, and the parents who provide control and support. And we might ask a question to ourselves, where are the learners in this bland and educational tango? Well, no one is born a dancer. So, what models or roles we can face in our classroom settings? Our learners are sometimes alone their country, or they may be an active or passive member of a group. They may be the one encountering artificial experience. Recall how many useless activities or exercises you met in a variety of books, or you encountered while you were studying. Or our learners might be the ones who are running the risk of kids of her own. Or they may be the ones who are co-working with similar crazy illiterate partners. Or they may be the ones who dance in partnership with a bit more experience, like shy peers. Of classroom members, or they might be the ones who like improvisation no matter what. Definitely, we as teachers see ourselves in the classroom as the ones who provide guidance and instructions to those who might dance with a smart canoe. Some learners of ours are the ones in the hands of blind or visually challenged by experienced professionals. There are many among us, let's face it. Or there might be learners who are trying to dance due to the old school method. This is not good too. The conclusion that because you can't dance or you are not in the right setting, it doesn't mean you shouldn't dance from the retreat. So, what are the focuses of my presentation and the presentation of my co-partner? So, we have to acknowledge and think it over why we accept, why we assess. What are the formative and summative types of assessment? What is the notion and concept of assessment for learning? And what are the solutions and recommendations? It's not about the shoes, it's about what you do in them, says the inspirational quote for ballroom dancers. So what and why and what do we need to assess? So reasons for assessment. Actually, in the classroom setting, it is more important to be aware why we do the assessment, and only then we'll do it better. So among the reasons, we want to measure students' progress, we want to guide students, we want to grade them according to the level, ability, spread, scale, or diagnostic table. We want to diagnose their weaknesses, strong points, we want to assess them to provide feedback, or even to promote motivation. But in reality, what do we want to assess? Sometimes we set tasks which are assessed uh, easier than the ones which would demand more deliberate analysis and assessment. Of course, it's easier to make ABC tests rather than an essay and provide at least two, three sentences of feedback to each student. What do we want to assess? Product of the student's knowledge or the process through which he or she undergoes to reach or can create that product. What else? Do we assess knowledge of the language or the ability to use that language? In general, do we assess learning or teaching? Another block, do we assess in order to give a great mark uh, to uh, uh, analyze performance? Or we want to assess students due to the diversity of assignments, 
convergence and divergent tasks. In their way, convergent uh, tasks demand right answer, divergent tasks demand creative approach to uh, uh, the answer performance. We want to assess holistic or serialist performance. We want to analyze students' performance uh, in his or her ability to integrate the whole material of the whole course or module or unit, or we want to test specific language aspects and neglect the other ones. Or we want to assess non-reference or criterion reference assessment. We want to analyze student's performance in relation to the whole class performance, to the whole members of the class, or his personalized process, or his personalized success. The notion of formative and summative uh, types of assessment appeared in uh, uh, recently. So formative assessment uh, it is not the one which is aimed at evaluation. Uh, this assessment is aimed to read the information from the student to find out what he knows, understands, and is able to use. Uh, normally, you got used to the fact that the one who assesses them is the teacher. But the untypical summer student, in your real life, you will never be assessed by your teacher. If you are writing a letter, hardly ever, or hardly many students write letters to their teachers in real life. They have to focus on the focus audience, on the requirements. That is why we have kind of set aside and have a look at from the side for our students. On the contrary, summary, summative assessment assesses learning, and the result of it and the aim of it is evaluation of student achievement, the ability to uh, use the language. So in this table, you see subdivision of informal and formal assessment, which in this way, might be formative and summative assessment. You see variety of tasks. I hope we'll not waste time on this. We will look at the presentation again. The notion of assessment for learning. It's a brand new notion. Brandy uh, uh, put many words in a, in a way. Uh, assessment for learning. What is meant by this? This is kind of child-friendly or learner-friendly assessment. Assessment which is done with the aim to promote success, to boost success, to um, find out the issues which need improvement and are to be um, developed further on. So assessment for learning, abbreviation AFL, is an approach to teaching and learning which creates feedback, which used to improve students' performance, uh, which involves students as active participants of that very assessment process, which develops in its way confidence in students, and definitely it kind of bridges the gap between the teacher and the learning and the situation uh, in which needs to be improved. So in this type of assessment, the purpose uh, is uh, more important than the nature. The background of assessment for learning concepts and approaches so there are six ideas. Uh, students need to know what skills or what knowledge they would be tested. Uh, we can't set a, an essay and test it for everything. For punctuation, grammar, organization, content ideas. If you set this um, uh, in front of the class of the students, you will puzzle them till death. And you have to grade assessment. One day you test. The organization, the other day you said function, the other day you said grammar. By that means, you will develop a definite attention to a skill, definite attention to the idea, and students don't get that much puzzled immediately. Students need to know how they will be assessed, what, what would be the process. They, uh, uh, they need to know that the feedback they receive would be friendly. And the investigation proves that investigation is done on the basis of huge data that uh, just comment only feedback is more effective than the feedback with a grade, with a mark, with a, a C plus or, or, or some figures. Idea number four, learners um, need to know how uh, to self-assess assess themselves. 
culture itself evaluate as well as fear evaluate. They they need to know how to provide positive uh, as well as negative feedback to their peers who have to become tolerant and friendly, which would develop plus some atmosphere and improve it better. Definitely, uh, the activities we the teachers would use for the assessment are to be guided with the philosophy of positive assessment and uh, providing kind of formative analysis. There were a lot of research, researchers who recently uh, laid the ground to the notion and the phenomenon. Uh, Meta-analysis was done, uh, several stage models of evaluation processes were developed, uh, where the developed, uh, developments on, uh, of the impact on classroom evaluation practices were uh, estimated. Uh, there were uh, scientists who found out how uh, the frequency of testing affects um, the learners. I remember the days when my daughter was in the middle school and they had the station translation every day. Which, and at the beginning of the lesson, imagine, at the beginning of the lesson, children are puzzled, they are frightened, they are maintained, sit, stand still, and what happens next? No open-mindedness, no uh, freedom, no positivity in the classroom. This really, really blocks. So theory is behind. The theory of visible learning for teachers, formative assessment as, as a part of teaching uh, doubles learning rate, attribution theory, so uh, which is really, really nowadays trendy uh, when we talk about emotional intellect, that people explain their own success and failures to themselves in different ways. So the perception of one's um, uh, good performance or lagging behind in something may influence not just on his or her performance at your English class, it may influence on his or her performance as a human being, as a member of the society, uh, at the interrelationship and social level. So here, uh, assessment for learning actually equals formative assessment. So the process here it involves questioning, it involves provi uh, providing feedback, uh, it uh, involves uh, analysis of successful work. Students are becoming more independent, they are becoming more open uh, for uh, receiving and giving uh, peer assessment and doing self assessment, which definitely improves them. So, questioning. Uh, questioning definitely uses to, uh, is used by teachers to find out general uh, agenda about the student's general uh, picture of his or her performance. Peer feedback definitely is to be uh, taught to students, first of all, and definitely is to be due to certain criteria. Uh, there, there is a theory and recommendation that when you do peer feedback, say something bad, say something what was impressive, say something what needs improvement, and uh, your suggestions as to some negative things are to be done, reformulated in a positive way, not uh, in the way to blame uh, the participants. So peer feedback and peer assessment are a bit different things. Uh, peer feedback um, uh, presupposes advice, peer assessment, uh, it is uh, the way that uh, encourages students to do summative assessment, grading assessment, due to the definite criteria. So, teacher feedback in all this uh, definitely is to be focused on success criteria. Teacher is obliged to tell students what they have done, good, what they have improved, what is great about them. You, the more you praise, the better. Uh, it is to show where the students need to go, what should be done, and how it should be done. And uh, this shouldn't be like go somewhere, bring nowhere, no, 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 don't know what. Uh, it should be specific suggestions. Self assessment strategies. Definitely learners need to know how to do this, how to evaluate feedback, how to proceed, how to rewrite, how to restructure, how to remodel. So self-assessment incorporates self-evaluation, self-regulation, 
self-monitoring. So self-assessment definitely is to be understandable in terms of understanding the criteria. It definitely has to boost reflection. It definitely has to urge to act on the basis of the feedback received. Definitely students have to know their learning strategies because they might differ uh, due to the type of intellect, due to the type of um, um, type of personality even, uh, due to the type of uh, learning and uh, what not. And all, all this is to be successful and managed by the teacher. So formative and summative assessments are providing, teaching, marking the results, so which is really, really helpful uh, in the classroom setting. For students, definitely all these practices develop their ability to identify and answer the crucial questions for them. Where am I now and where I need to be? So they, by that means, being assessed from various sides, are not afraid of that summative assessment, of that end of the term, end of the year grading. So they approach it accordingly and um, being more prepared and be more um, equipped with uh, right knowledge. Uh, assessment tasks. Assessment tasks uh, are actually uh, aimed not at teaching. They are aimed at providing a calm atmosphere which uh, selects the, the possibilities to learn what is needed in the right place. And more than that, after that, checking whether the assessment was done and whether the, uh, uh, the proof and feedback of that assessment was effective. So teacher definitely, uh, as a professional, has to make decisions as to what to assess when, how to create as many possibilities for this type of assessment, uh, like delicate, I would say, assessment for his or her students. So uh, definitely all the tasks we are doing in class are connected to the curriculum, are connected with what we uh, learned uh, previously. Uh, uh, sometimes assessment even could be treated as a scaffolding activity, which kind of builds the skeleton to support a learner. Uh, some might find uh, in assessment resource for improvement. Uh, of course, it would be great if uh, you discuss the varieties of assessment, the criteria with your class, and provide good work samples. And more than that, definitely create follow-up activities. So the process of the task, description, preparation, setting the task and its performance, and only the final stage is to the assessment. So here is the example how the portfolio was uh, performed in a variety of ways and the variety of assessments provided by the teacher, by the students, and by the student himself. So solutions and recommendations. Benefits of the assessment for learning. Improved learner outcomes, increases confidence yeah, on the part of learner and even on the part of the teacher because teacher is confident that these students discuss these issues from various points of view. Increases independence of a student and definitely changes the culture in the classroom. So challenges, we are to be aware of them, otherwise we won't be able to foresee problematic areas. So sometimes it might cause misunderstanding between teachers, between students, within the field group. Definitely it needs training. Sometimes it's time consuming, but it's great to devote prior time to this in order to develop a good skill. Some teachers and some students definitely are um, afraid of changes, which is also an obstacle. But on good organization, creative approach, everyone can get it right. And culture issues. Culture issues sometimes uh, do not let providing that open-minded discussion or that crossing some kind of borders in uh, peer assessment. But uh, I hope um, each of us, those especially those who are working in multicultural uh, societies, know how to manage that issue. To crown it all, I would say that coming together is the beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. And today's event proves that on doing this together, we can overcome.
So thank you for your attention and don't forget to be awesome in your class, in your extra class activities, in your personal life. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this wonderful presentation. And as soon as you stop sharing your screen, I'd like you to see the comments we had here in the presentation. They're really amazing. Yeah. Can you see the screen right now? Miss yes, Natalia, can yes, you see? I'm yeah. So the first one that was impressive, like really meaningful presentation in each page, page there's a huge meaning. And I do agree with that. Then, um, Sanders, as the, I like the analogy you're making. Then uh, Dr. Abdel Majid Bussien, when dancing, we can dance for ourselves, self-assessment. We can show peers how well we dance, peer assessment, or we can show it to the world, performance assessment. Yeah, that's great. Um, hello, Ukraine, Anastasia and Chishin. It's really useful and informative. Thanks a lot. Great. Thank you, Matt. This is Azerbaijan Sevinch Bakirava. Thanks a lot for useful presentation. Again, Mr. Abdel Majid, very inspiring. And one more, this person is watching us. It's really nice. Mr. Samad Samadav, you're a brilliant educator, Miss Natalia, and I'm really glad to know you. And great presentation. I don't know what country this presentation came from. Again, could we have this presentation, please? Yes, all the presentations will be included into the follow-up email because the main idea behind this marathon is that sharing is caring and we would like to share our knowledge or our expertise. So we'll see excellent, this best Pereira, excellent presentation. Yes, thanks a lot. You are an awesome teacher, Miss Natalia. Yeah, I'm really proud By the of way. You. By the way, I'd like to add, Miss Natalia was my teacher on the fifth course of the university, and I'm still saving all the materials she had handed in uh, on that year. So thank you. Yes, thanks a lot, really. And we have to go further because the next speaker who is going to continue this topic on the practical part of this topic. Um, Ola, can you let us know? Thanks, Miss Natalia. Thank you. Sure. So, and the next speaker is Rosa Finnegan, uh, who's an English teacher based in Italy who specializes in young learners. She has a strong interest in CLIL and bilingual education. In June 2020, she presented the webinar Making Phonics and Pronunciation Fun for SR Teaching and Learning. And I'd like to add that that webinar is available on our uh, YouTube channel. It's again, it's free because sharing is caring. And if you wish, you can watch it. And believe me, there's lots of wonderful ideas for you on how to teach phonics. So let me introduce Rosie. Hello. Hello, Italy. Hi. Great Hello. to see you all. Okay, great. So we don't want to waste our time. Let's go straight to sharing presentation. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we have so many wonderful comments. Thank you, Lord. Miss Natalia Pantileva, great. Thanks, Maribel Buko, if I'm correct, correct with pronunciation. Yeah, Rosie, I can see your presentation, so we wish you good luck. See you in uh, 20 minutes, okay? okay? Thank you. Thank you so much. Here, here we go. Okay, thank you to um, all the organizers and all of the speakers, especially Natalia, for your really interesting presentation. And thanks to everyone who's watching. I really appreciate um, your time. Um, so, um, Today, we're going to talk about, obviously, assessment for learning and how to implement and how to approach practically um, this really interesting approach to assessment um, and how to do that in the first lessons um, and also throughout the year, because obviously we're going back to school. So we want to know how to start off um, our school year and how to go throughout the school year. Um, with our assessment. And I've categorized this um, a little bit similar to how Natalia um, categorized her presentation, which was by um, who is going to lead 
the assessment so or the dance as natalia so interestingly put it so will the teacher be leading this assessment or dance will it be the learner or will it be a combination um with their peers or will it be a whole group huge dance of everybody <laughs> assessment okay so let's start off by teacher-led assessment and the first thing that i wanted to talk about is holistic observation um, so holistic observation is a way of assessing students by just making notes and writing full sentences about um, what we observe what we monitor in the first lessons and throughout the year um, and you have the freedom to really write whatever there's no check boxes just really to write whatever problems or whatever strengths or whatever comes to mind that you think is useful to know about that student and to share with yourself to remember for later or with other students uh, with, with other sorry teachers or with the parents um, so this is really like a school report that you would usually get at the end of the year um, but you can also do it in the first lessons as a kind of observation activity um, so you can do this completely freely or you could use a template like this one this is on entry observations and you can choose whatever categories are useful for you um, and this you can see it says EYFS this is um, the British system it means early years so this is for very young learners and this method of assessment teacher-led assessment is very useful um, for very young learners um, and um, it's a kind of could be non-explicit methods that you can um, just write whatever is pertinent for that student and you can share or not share with the students and with the parents um, or you can just use it to inform your future assessment. Um, so the next method of teacher-led assessment that I wanted to talk about was um, explicit feedback. Uh, this is probably the most um, common or the one that we're most familiar with type of assessment. Um, but as we have just talked about assessment for learning, we know that it's important to involve the student in their assessment. And it's also too important to give um, comment only feedback or non-numerical feedback. So instead of giving the student a number, you got 60%. What do they do with that? Okay, you can give them comments or other non-numerical types of feedback. Um, so how do I approach this? Um, how do I involve the student? Well, this is my little form that I like to use. And the student can, you see that you have these little faces, they can kind of react and review maybe whatever test they've done. In my school, we had to give them a specific test created by the school or so this is quite common. Um, and so they can review it, say how they think it went, how did they feel about it? And this is very important because we, because we can assess the student's level of confidence, like attitude to English or attitude to that particular test, um, which can really help us for the future, help us how to approach uh, teaching and also assessment of that particular student or that particular group. Um, and then the second section is my stars. Um, I like to give one of those little ink stamps and depending on kind of how well they did in the test, I will give them three or maybe five. Um, mine are stars, but you can use whatever shape um, of stamp or sticker or whatever you like. Um, uh, I did this in order to kind of try and mirror the Cambridge system where they give shields. So it's a non-numerical feedback uh, for your students. Um, and finally, uh, we give them a target, which as we know, is very important for assessment for learning, an explicit target, something that the student can work on for the next time um, or going forward. So then this test is, or the assessment is driving the student forward, um, as we know, is very important in assessment for learning. Um, and finally, as Natalia said, um, this type of assessment for learning, it can be very time consuming. So what is a way that we can sometimes try to speed up the process um, of assessment in assessment for learning? Well, you could use an initials checklist, which uh, mine looks a little bit like this. So here at the top, I have whatever targets I have for that particular period. Here it's taken from actually from the Cambridge um, targets for young learners. Um, and you can say, is the person exceeding, achieving or working towards? And this gives you a patchwork, a kind of 
look at the class on how they're each doing. These are initials. This is just fake students. It's nobody real. I just made it up for this. Um, but this is a way you can just write their initials. And then you can see, for example, this MM person needs a bit more support. And everybody could maybe do with a bit more support on talk about likes and dislikes. So that is a great way to see how the class is doing as a whole um, and just to really speed up the process. So it's time saving. Um, all right. And so now we are going to talk about self-assessment, which thanks to Natalia, we also recognize the importance of self-assessment in assessment for learning. Um, so when I say self-assessment, I don't mean only assessing attainment, but again, once again, assessing attitude, motivation, and many things. So how can we assess attitude, motivation, interest, level of interest at the beginning of the year um, when we go straight back to school? Well, I like to use an emoji chart, and you can do this within the first lessons or the first weeks, just so the student says how they feel about the lesson, which emoji is... Um, appropriate for their day at school. And then they just write a little bit about why they feel that way. So we're also assessing how they feel, like what what kind of relationship they have with English, with school. So this is super useful to know um, about our students, obviously, and can help us going forward to know how to assess, know how to teach that person. Um, and a second thing, which also Natalia spoke about in her assessment for learning, presentation was about setting personal goals. So um, we can set personal goals in the first weeks, the first lessons, and then the student can self-assess against those goals throughout the year or throughout the week or the quarter, whatever you want to do. So this could be on a wall, uh, a goal wall, like the one you can see here. Um, which you could put everybody's goals there, or you could also ask students if they prefer to keep it private in their notebook. Um, and this goal wall also obviously can be virtual or physical, depending on um, how we're teaching this year. Um, and you could combine setting personal goals with um, a learning autobiography. So you can begin a learning autobiography with, for example, an about me um, form, about me kind of worksheet, where students um, start their kind of learning autobiography, um, and you can um, you can learn many things about the student, about their level of English, their attitude to English. And in this particular version, you have um, a section for also the parents to comment about um, you know their child's learning journey. Um, and this about me section could form the beginning of as I said, learning autobiography, which can facilitate collaboration between parents and other teaching teachers. Um, so what is a learning autobiography? If you don't know, it's something which looks a bit like this. This um, I have downloaded actually from Incredible English, if you know those textbooks, um, but it's available um, for many textbooks. It's also available for English file, kids box, so adults, um, children, every age group, um, basically has their own um, from each textbook. Most of them have their own learning autobiography that you can download, or you could create your own. Um, and you can just complete this. This is for the first few units of the, um, of the book and students can kind of assess how they've done, uh, self-assess. And um, the great thing which I really like about this is it, okay, it assesses their English language ability, but here at the bottom it says my work and it assesses what have they done so, okay, maybe they don't remember all of these words or they've completely forgotten some things, but they can say, look, I made a weather map. Okay, so it's not only assessing, you know, how much they've learned, how much they remember, but also like what they've achieved, their personal achievement, making a weather map is, you know, something quite nice for them to do. And, it, you know, for them, it's a personal achievement. So um, I quite like this aspect that it only focused on language, but also, personal achievements as well. Um, okay, instead of a learning, auto, learning autobiography for perhaps younger students, um, or to save a bit of time, you could make a um, an assessment flower. What is an assessment flower? It looks a little bit like this. And you see here, um, this is about communication and language understanding. Um, so what I would do is probably replace these sort of milestones, which we have here, and here, 
um, replace them with I can statements. So similar to maybe um, what we had in the previous slide, I can say words for outdoor activities. And when they can do that, so I write that here, when they can do that, they color this part in. So throughout the year, they see their flower become more colorful and develop um, as they are developing. So it's quite a nice metaphor and it's quite a nice, you know, everybody enjoys coloring in, it's relaxing and it also shows their students' achievements. So that's an alternative to a kind of classic learning autobiography. Um, all right. Uh, and this also allows students to self-assess constantly. Okay. And another way that students can constantly self-assess is through traffic light systems like this one. So here they could use these sort of systems on their desk throughout the lesson and say, okay, I'm okay with this part. No, now I'm struggling. Or they could use it at the end of the lesson or at the end of the school day um, to self-assess how they're doing at that particular moment or on that particular day as a whole, um, which is very empowering, I think, for the students to really think about, take responsibility for their learning and think about how are they doing at this moment? Do they need help or do they are they doing just fine? And they don't need any help. Um, Okay, and such systems, such traffic light systems are actually built into many textbooks as well. You can see this is from Incredible English um, also. And you can see at the bottom you have not bad, good, very good after they've completed these activities at the end of the unit. So like this, students can once again self-assess and take responsibility uh, for their learning and know if they need to review or if they need to ask for some help from the teacher. Okay, and now we will move on to another method of assessment, which is group and peer assessment. Um, so collaborative assessment, let's call it. Uh, so for group and peer assessment, you could set up a learning wall, um, which may look something like this. Um, so on your learning wall, uh, you could begin this at the beginning of the year um, so that, you know, you know where to start off with your assessment for the year. And um, students, it can be physical, obviously, or virtual. Here we have physical walls, but if you're teaching online, it can be also a virtual wall, why not? Um, and once you've established this in the first lesson or lessons, um, students can write, for example, a summary sentence at the end of a particular lesson about what they personally think they learned, um, or they could even write simply one word that they might have learned. Um, and yes, can be physical or virtual. And um, you could also spice this up a bit by um, asking students to maybe include a lie. So some students might write something which is not true and the other students have to find that. Okay, so maybe somebody writes, ah, for present continuous, I use auxiliary um, have. And obviously that's a lie. So students can try to spot what lies there are, um, which just makes it a bit more fun as well. Um, all right. So another way to um, implement uh, group and peer assessment is by um, collaborative text tests. So for example, running dictation, um, which I'm sure you have all used, or maybe collaborative spelling tests, which could look something like this. Each child has a card and they have to arrange themselves rather than doing a spelling test where they write everything down. They're working together and you're assessing their knowledge as a group. And this is you know, really important because if somebody is a bit weaker, the others can help them, they can work together, just like in the dance that Natalia was talking about, somebody who's a bit stronger will help the weaker one. And th this way, um, this is really a, an embodiment of assessment for learning because the students are learning as they are being assessed. So um, that's really ideal for that kind of assessment. Um, and this uh, also enables a teacher to get a whole class view um, of the um, where the class is at that point. Um, and once again, students learn through the assessment by collaborating. Um, and finally, you have a kind of more classic uh, approach to peer assessment where one student assesses another student. And you can, this type of assessment is really ideal for presentations and projects. And um, it works really well when the teacher provides an assess um, assessment checklist or assessment framework, for example, like this one. This is about reading. And um, students just tick off what they think. OK, they had a clear voice. They took their time. They forgot to pause at the commas. And um, so 
by assessing someone else, the student can also think about their own performance. Um, and it's just a bit nicer than always the teacher telling you what to do. They're collaborating. Um, so um, you can obviously change this to be whatever you're assessing. You can change the criteria. Um, and uh, yeah, that's really all for my uh, presentation. So uh, I hope that my ideas have helped you a little bit. And um, yeah, thank you to everyone who's watched and who's spoken. Okay, thank, thank you, Rosie. Rosie. It was really amazing. Uh, can I ask you? To, yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. So, um, and I'd like you to see the comments right now because, um, again, Dr. Abdel Majid said that stars interesting way of motivating young donors. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, you, you can read these comments. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, thank you. So Poland, you, Poland said that targeting is a very nice idea. Yeah, and I like, um, you know, uh, Mr. Abdel Majid emphasized that the idea of assessing feelings is really important. And we sometimes forget about it. It's not just only about knowledge, but we should take care about our students' personalities as well. Um, yeah, you can see so brilliant ideas for assessment. Thank you very much. You, I'm pretty sure that you've inspired so many teachers right now after this presentation. Yeah, yeah, as our teaching <laughs> says, well done, Rosie. And yeah, you can see absolutely brilliant ideas. Yeah, thank you very much. And again, I'd like to remind you that if you would like to see, uh, to enjoy that webinar on how to teach phonics presented by Rosie, you can find it on our YouTube channel and please enjoy it. Uh, in case you need um, Rose's presentation, I mean for that webinar, you can always contact us on sr.teachandlearning at gmail.com and we'll be more than happy to share her presentation because uh, it seems that Rosie thinks the same way as we do, like sharing is caring. Am I right? <laughs> of course, absolutely. It's fundamental and I've learned already so much from the teacher spoken today so thank you to everybody i really appreciate your contributions thank as you well. very much so we should continue and rosie i do hope to see you in the chat box and you can continue okay. talking to other teachers because yeah by the way if you have a question here <laughs> uh, i'm 30. <laughs> no, you look wonderful, dear. Really. <laughs> like so young, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Congrats, great presentation and wonderful ideas. I completely agree. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. See bye. you. Say hello to Italy. Bye. <laughs> okay. Bye. bye. Ola, what should be done next? Next, you're going to present the next academic. <laughs> yeah, and she's here and she's waiting. So the next person who's going to present is um, Sivil Aliva from Azerbaijan. So you see, uh, we started with Ukraine, then we yeah. went to Italy, and now we should move to Azerbaijan. So uh, Miss Sivil is an experienced teacher of general English as well as Cambridge exams who currently works as a language instructor and a teacher trainer at the Western Caspian University in Baku. Her motto is, do what you love and love what you do. Mm -hmm. And I do like this idea. Hello, Miss Sivil. Hello. Hello. Hello, how are you there? I know you've been waiting for so much time. <laughs> anyway. Okay. It's been a pleasure okay. for me. Thank you. I'm doing great. Yeah, thanks. Okay. So let's get started. Can you make your presentation in a presentation mode right now? Uh, yes. Like a full screen. Yeah, yeah, I can see. So good luck with your presentation. And here we go. Thank you. So good day, our dear participants, colleagues and organizers. Thank you so much. It's an honor for me. Many of us remember a situation where we were instructed to do a task, however, could not understand what exactly we were supposed to do. 
So in my presentation, I will highlight the importance and rationale for giving clear instructions in the second language classroom. And my partner, Mr. Ralph, he will provide techniques for giving effective instructions. So uh, good instruction giving is a challenge for both native and non-native language teachers, for both experienced and novice teachers. However, instruction giving is a skill that is sometimes neglected. New teachers might assume, might assume that it is a skill that will be naturally mastered. More experienced teachers might assume that it is a skill that they have already mastered. But let's see what Scrivener said about this. Instructions and their delivery can be the determining factors as to whether a lesson succeeds or fails. Also, according to her, learners see the ability to explain things well as one of the most important qualities of a good teacher. So we cannot underestimate the importance of good instructions first. So why are good instructions important? Uh, for all language teachers, instruction giving is an area that deserves attention and practice as it has a major impact on how well students are able to carry out activities and as a result how well they learn because clear instructions impacts learning tremendously if a student cannot understand what he's supposed to do an activity becomes disorganized and may fail so uh, there are some tips for a giving a, a clear instruction. And one of the tips or a solution may be uh, using language one. But is it a key to understanding an instruction? Let's see. Uh, so uh, there, are, uh, there are methodologists and theorists who think that um, some use of the mother tongue might be necessary. But on the opposite, oh, we have opinions that students should be introduced to the use of English from the first class. So use of the mother tongue for delivering, delivering instructions can be justified for starters. As you proceed, it turns into a hindrance rather than a help. So uh, what can we say in short? That there might be instances when the use of the language one for instruction giving is justified for the sake of efficiency and clarity, but there is a danger of overuse and the possibility that students and teachers will become accustomed to the comfort of instructions in the language one. But we should bear in mind that a teacher might not know the student's uh, native language, or another case is that the group is um, multilingual. So, but what to do in giving instructions, planning or improvising? Um, so first, of course, plan, because instructions are often not as clear to the students as they can be to us. So good instruction giving starts from the preparational stage. And it is important to plan instructions in advance until you feel confident that you can deliver acceptable instructions without pre-planning. So practice makes perfect. So, but even with sufficient practice, you might find that you sometimes need to plan instructions, especially when you are planning some complex or multi-step tasks and particularly for beginners. So plan, practice, but still plan. Um, so we have uh, like uh, three steps, uh, stages before you give instructions, during you give instructions, and after you give uh, you give an instruction. So um, before you give instruction is uh, important. Then um, then you have always set your students' pairs, groups, and desks before you give instructions. Why is it important? Because you may see that students uh, may be um, not selected. One, is, one student may not be selected and he will uh, feel uncomfortable. Also, uh, another very important uh, observation, you should not hand out worksheets or other materials before giving instructions. Why? Just the attention may be distracted. Also, 
very important, very important uh, point uh, that you have to take your students' attention, grad students' attention before you start your instruction. If they are not listening to you, the quality of your directions is irrelevant. This is according to Scrivener, and I cannot agree more. So now we are in the stage of during instructions. How should you deliver this instruction? Speak naturally, but clearly. What does it mean? So this is the great. This is all about grading your language. Uh, like Scrivener suggested. Uh, that uh, we have to aim our instructions to be a level or even two below our students' current level. Also, it's necessary to pause after giving an instruction so that the learners um, have time to absorb the message. Now we are in the after instructions uh, stage, and uh, after you give an, uh, an instruction, it's uh, wise to model the activity and monitor. After you give an instruction, whenever possible, mod possible model what you want your students to do. As students begin an activity, circulate around the room to see if they are carrying it out correctly and give help as needed. This is about monitor monitoring. And after we do all these steps, after we pre-planned how to give out our presentation, our instruction, uh, when we uh, modeled it, when we monitored and we uh, uh, actually had our class, uh, it's time for our um, reflecting. So what to do? Immediately after a lesson, a teacher should make notes of the in-class instructions they give. So. We can also ask a colleague to observe for them and give peer evaluation. Shortly, uh, to detect our instruction giving practices, evaluation methods such as self-reflection, self-observation, as well as peer observation should be used. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope that it was useful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, can you see the screen? I'd like you to see the comments. Hmm. Actually, it's missing. Yeah, you, you uh -huh. can stop uh -huh. sharing the screen. Yeah, uh -huh. people say that you're a great teacher, and that's wonderful. So, and right now we'd like to continue this topic because it was some kind of rational and yes. we would like to go to Absolutely. practical ideas. Okay, thank you. Join us on YouTube. And thank you. I'm happy to see your comments. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Thank with you us. very much. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Okay. Bye. Goodbye. Okay, and now, uh, I, and now, sorry, I'd like to give the floor to the next speaker, Raouf Pasha Bailey who is a TESOL certified ESL EFL teacher and TED Talks leader. Uh, by the way, if you would like to know more about Hello. Hello, you can watch uh, an interview on Instagram with lovely Olga Bond. Yeah. Hello, everyone. It was an honor for me to handle this uh, the meeting itself. Uh, so today's topic is going to be the instructions, giving instructions, and, and uh, also I have one question. Uh, if I interact with audience, is it okay if I answer through the phone? So, like, uh, the communication should be like the one on one. Is it possible? Uh, you can interact, but please remember that we have the time gap of 13 yeah. or 15 seconds. So, if you Perfect. ask a question, you should wait for 13 seconds to get the answers. Yeah, okay. So, let's get started. Yes. Good luck. All right. Thank you very much. I need okay. your screen. Yes. yes, 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 one second. Here we go. Okay, so now the question is um, to the audience, like I was, I'd like to start from this one. How do you think giving instructions, are, is it easy enough or no? How do you think? 
So please write please in the chat if it is easy or it's not. But basically, I already wrote here the comment. Ha! <laughs> I will say that because giving instructions is absolutely not that easy. So please write in the comments. I would like to see uh, if there is anyone who would actually tell me if it's easy or maybe for someone it's pretty hard. So let's just share. It depends. Okay, that's right. It's very good. What else? Mm, so while we're actually explicing it, uh, I would like to talk about the instructions. Uh, basically, regarding the instructions, we can explain to a student what he or she should achieve during this progress. Um, so exactly, the good answer is it depends because uh, first of all, it depends on the level of the student. Uh, also, it depends on the age itself and no matter how the comprehension is going. So. Okay, I see there's no, it's not so easy, depending on the level of students, easy from an experience. Perfect, very good, very good answer. So let's uh, move on to the next slide and I will show you actually what is made of the instruction. Okay, and what is needed for an amazing instructions? So we got here the basics uh, that we have to cover it. So number one, get 100 attention. Like, of course, it's pretty obvious. If you come into a classroom where there's no absolute attention, there'll be absolutely no progress and the students will be like, ah, uh -huh, yes, of course, teacher, whatever you say. So it's not effective. So then set a time limit. I'll show you why basically this is the something like essential and the setting a time limit will bring some kind of a spark during your lesson. Uh, next, chesting. Chesting is a pretty good technique that will show your ability of giving instruction in a good level. Uh, the short and simple language. This is uh, pretty obvious again, and also one of the most important things that you can give during your instructions. Because if you speak too academic and if you speak like something that student will not understand, um, pretty obvious that student will be in the stuck moment and will say like, sorry teacher, I don't know what to do and how I actually should um, come out this, from the situation. So short and simple language is also the most important thing here. And of course, checking the understanding. Uh, we should know that our lessons, uh, it doesn't matter we, what kind of lesson it is. Let's let it be English lesson, let it be ICT lesson, let it be, let's say, uh, biology lesson, any lesson. It should be productive and progress matter. So like at the end, we have to see if our students understood the material that was given. Okay, let's actually go to next and we will cover all this uh essential parts of the great instructions okay number one 100 attention make it fun if you really want to um gather the 100 percent of attention you have to make it fun you have to inspire students so that uh student will be like oh my god this is so fun this is not something like a boring lesson like a student like sitting here and say like yeah stay here that's pretty interesting good it is it's not working like this you have to make it fun. More activities, uh, more fun situations. Let's say, uh, even if it's needed, you can make, uh, let's say, the outside lessons, like you can nature lessons or something like this. Just use your creativity and make it fun. Like, don't make it a pretty boring lesson so that it's nonsense. Okay, so this is number one. To get the 100 attention, you have to make it fun. That's one. Number two. The time limit is adrenaline rush. What does it mean? Uh, whenever we see some kind of, let's say, boundaries that ends, we already think like, oh my God, it will end in the right second. And this is like brings out to the situation where there is something called like competition. So you feel like uh, students as if they are, uh, you know, inspired to win someone. However, they are doing the same job altogether. But because of the time limit, they will be like saying, okay, I'm, I'll be the first. Now another, another one will say, no, I'll be the first. And it will bring the competition part, let's say computer soul or something like this, and it will bring the spark to a lesson. And of course, it will be a very fun lesson also, which will be uh, very productive. Okay, now number three, testing. Makes it easier to see. Uh, believe me or not, uh, sometimes I use uh, this technique uh, even if I have the, let's say, the whole monitor uh, and I can show it from my computer, but I always use the chesting. What does it mean, chesting? When you hold the material and you show it from the chesting, you show what you have to do for them, what the students should do. For example, you say, um, you, for example, let's say, uh, Steve, 
you have to do this exercise and you have to fill in the blank and blah, 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 whatever you say here. So the students should understand what is the point of this exercise and what he has uh, should do exactly. Okay, let's go next. It helps students to understand what should be done where. Yes, exactly, where and why. Because students will get the material. Yes, he will read the instruction, but at the end, it will be like, mm, okay, teacher, I need a question. I have a question, I have a question, I have a question. And he will feel something like, you know, mm, more like the dependency because of your uh, say description. So what you have to do, you have to explain this way so the student will not have any question. Okay, next makes it easier for teachers to uh, avoid misunderstanding. Again, the situation. For example, you give a material, you didn't explain in the chesting mode. Uh, what happens? Student writes as if uh, he thinks it's right, but at the end, you understand that this is not the thing that you wanted to get, right? Uh, and it will bring to the misunderstanding and it will cause a lot of uh, problems because of like, if there isn't progress, progress problems, there will be, of course, the problems with your school or the administration, because teacher and student is something like they have to work together. Uh, when someone, for example, is not working, it's the whole mechanism is not uh, providing the progress. Next, it, uh, chesting helps in situation where students are afraid or feel uncomfortable to ask questions. Uh, we all know that we are all different. And some of us, for example, are introverts, some are extroverts. For someone, it's really difficult to raise their hands um and like say like, teacher can you please help me i need your help uh please it's it's, it's okay for extroverts but for introverts oh my gosh it's pretty difficult i'm saying because i was in the situation of the introvertive uh i couldn't raise my hand and i said ask the teacher teacher can you please explain me this uh exercise and always i had some problems with this because teacher didn't use the chesting situation so that's why uh also keep in mind the situation like people are not uh, the same they always uh can come up like with the introverts and extroverts or the one who wants to be like, oh, I'm cool. I'm pretty cool to ask this question. I don't want to ask this question. People will think that I'm stupid or something like this. So especially teens. In the teens, young age, it's basically a very, very common situation. All right. So that's it about chesting. Now, number four. Oh, this is me, basically. Sometimes I have to also chest out the, where is the exit because some people don't know it. Yeah, in this situation where I need my coffee. Okay, now the force, the short and simple, make it simple. So, as I said, if you use academic language, uh, it will bring out the progress to the people who are already in the age of, let's say, uh, 20 and plus, because they are already uh, getting ready for going into, let's say, uh, masters or bachelors. So they are basically use this academic language. But if you teach to key stage three or key stage four, these students, um, it will be pretty difficult for them to understand what do you mean. So therefore, you need to grade your language and you have to bring it simple as much as possible. So what's benefit? Students definitely will gather info way faster. Of course, uh, if you explain in a difficult way, they will ask questions, they will take time and it will not bring to any progress. You will stay in the same situation. Next lesson, they will again ask the questions. Some of them will uh, ask the question about the last lesson. Next, for beginner teachers, less pain in finding words and constructing rules. Yes, uh, when the teacher is beginner, uh, he tries to make it possible as if uh, to make student to talk more than a teacher because in beginning situation, teachers are finding themselves in an awkward situation, in embarrassment. So uh, they find the good student, like the most the cleverest one, and they say, like, okay, you will be the one and you will explain the lesson. I'll just give the materials, nothing more. So basically, be beginner teachers uh, will get this better. So less pain, fine words, and constructive rules. Next, less time wasted. Uh, Beloved or not, uh, basically, this is a practical one. When you go to, uh, to the classroom, where there's an academic, it takes, it takes a lot of time to describe something simple in, uh, let's say, in a very academic level of language. And you will be like, oh, gosh, uh, what this person wants to say. And at the end, 
he brings out in a si super simple thing and uh, what you can actually explain in two words. So less time wasted because time is precious, you know this. And of course, it's a productive way in teaching. Um, less time wasted brings us to the situation where we can cover more material and the more material we cover and the more the student can understand in a quality way, it will be more productive of our teaching. All right, let's go next. Check understanding, uh, make it perfect. So what does it mean, check the understanding? Mm, as you see here, did you understand? Yes. So in this case, uh, you have to always get the feedback from a student because we, sh we don't want our lesson to go like we didn't cover anything. So therefore we need to make it for sure that we uh, made students understand what we wanted to, let's say, explain. So as we see the 100% guarantee that student accepts all given material because we basically give, uh, let's say, the test or let it be, for example, the verbal testing, uh, the student will answer us and we'll basically get the understanding that yes, uh, student not didn't get the gist, but student get the whole material that we wanted to explain. Uh, next, if something wasn't understood, teacher will explain it in, during the lesson. So that doesn't take long while for student after class. Um, let's say this situation happens a lot, uh, especially in the beginner teachers. Uh, for example, they explain in a fast way uh, because they feel awkward and they feel embarrassed. They don't want to uh, make the situation where they will be asked another question. So this situation brings out the street where the students, for example, didn't understand something. He raises his hand and asks, uh, for example, Mr. Steve or Mr. John, I didn't understand the situation. Can you please explain it? Uh, so therefore, when we don't do this feedback check, uh, it happens that student goes with this gap to the next lesson and it brings out another gaps and another gap because everything is chained. And therefore, we have to always uh, keep in mind the situation. Next, a visible documentation of progress or the kind of assessment. So what you do um, during this, um, let's say the evaluation, you have to get the student uh, to give you the progress that he has right now, right second, because let's take it serious. Uh, tomorrow, let's say he has some problems. Uh, parents will come out here and they say, hmm, uh, why my student doesn't get, uh, let's say the high result. But if you show that, you got the something to show. For example, if you show them like the document that shows his progress, that he doesn't do anything, therefore his progress like this way, then the parent will say, oh, so there's a problem with my student. Um, my child should work more on this. But some of them, of course, say that there's a problem in teachers. Uh, but in most cases, they say like, okay, uh, we will work on our, let's say, comprehension, on our, let's say, the matter of understanding. So, Always you have to get this visible document that you can provide to someone who asks uh, that you do the work. You do your work and the student should do his or her work. This basically works like this, the whole mechanism itself. Now, um, the last thing that I would like to say uh, regarding this, uh, the checking the materials, you can do it in a very interesting way uh, called it's actual hurricane. What does it mean? You just go through the every student and say, ask them, what did you understand from today's lesson? Even one word at least, if he tells something from this lesson, you can already check it out that yes, this student got it. So for example, you can say, mm, okay, Steve, what you got from this lesson? Okay, he answered and you can just go to another lesson. So make it active and make it more likely and again, the competition level, okay? So this is about the checking and understanding. Now, monitor makes it possible to see um okay i will explain about the monitor thing what does it mean monitor uh it's definitely not this one it's not for sure not uh the monitoring is actually uh helps you as a teacher to see how is it going in the situation of students for example uh number one it's additional navigation for students for example let's say the let's imagine the situation and student uh writes the test and you forgot, to, um, for example, to show the instruction while testing. You forgot about it. Student took the test and he starts writing in his own way as, he's understand, as, as he understands. Uh, however, you need another material. So what happens? He writes a wrong 
material. You write the wrong answer. But if you come in and you come to monitor this, you can see that student makes this uh, let's say mistake and you can fix you come you get document itself, it will show the good result itself. So it's additional navigation for student because you come there and you show that oh, so it's not like this way, you have to fix this and that and that. But of course, in a silent way. Next, monitoring, it actually gives you the checking ability in your giving instructions. So imagine you gave an instruction, imagine you gave uh, a perfect way, but still you're just checking yourself in ability of uh, giving instructions. You come to this, uh, let's say the desk and just looking through this, he's testing and say, hmm, okay, that's good, keep going and see if your instructions well structured so that students go in the right way. Next, show care and love towards them. That's also uh, something that's very important because in any assessment, a student feels himself or herself in a very intense moment. They cannot, uh, let's say, feel themselves in a relaxed way because they think, oh my God, this is something that uh, their parents will say something and this is something that will uh, make them to look in a bad way, in a stupid way. So therefore, they have a lot of uh, ideas to get them to the matter of anxiety, uh, embarrassment, and awkwardness. So therefore, you just come there and they say, okay, don't worry, relax. Uh, it's just a test, no worries. So you just reduce this anxiety level. Okay, uh, so I said that it's monitor, it's not this one. And basically what you have to do is being their hero. Uh, I have a question to an audience. Uh, can you please tell me what do you understand by being their hero? I just need uh, some sentences, just um, share your ideas. What does it mean to be their hero? And yes, to the world, you may be just a teacher, but to your students, you're a real hero, as you see in this screen. Dear teacher, you're my hero because you believe in me and I never give up. If you really believe in student, they will achieve in a real good height. Okay, so uh, please write in the chat, uh, what do you understand in being their hero? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So while the answers are coming, uh, I would like to go to the next slide, basically. And this slide is uh, thanking you for your attention. And this is a quote that I want to say by myself, but this is a quote that belongs to Mr. Brad Henry. A good teacher can inspire and ignite the imagination and instill a love of learning. So thank you very much for your attention. I still wait your answers in the uh, comment section. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ralph. We do have some answers. like being the best teacher for your students or pupils also we have like can help anytime uh, and we have another comment like growth your star <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> yeah that's great also to be an artist and creator good <clears throat> sorry um yeah heroes save lives. Right. and actually uh, i do believe that teachers they do change lives um Ralph, you know what uh, I have one thing to offer, and actually it's not only about you, uh, all those teachers who are watching us right now, I'd like you to join this, um, some kind of game, because I think that from time to time we need some kind of physical activity, because we've been watching this uh, marathon for so long time, so please, viewers, I'd like to ask you to see it just to relax and to be attentive. So what's gonna happen right now? Uh, I'm going to read a story, maybe you've heard about it before. This is the story of the Wright family. By the way, if you've heard about it before, let me know the story of the Wright family. And each time when you hear the word right, Ola and Rauf, I'd like to ask you to point with your two hands to the right and when you hear left you should point to the left let's check if i say this is the story of the right family two hands oh. right 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 yeah this is the story of the right family again let's model because it's about clear instructions yeah. be attentive last night the right family 
went to see a baseball game. Yes, exactly. So are you ready for this story? And I do hope that our viewers will be able to do the same stuff. Let's try it. We do need some kind of physical training. Actually, no um, okay. So are you ready? I'm going to read from this monitor. Anyway, be attentive. So last night, the Wright family went to see a baseball game. They left the house at six o'clock right after the family finished dinner. Mr. Wright drove everyone to the game in the Red Family van, which is always parked on the left side of the garage. In the van were Mrs. Wright, Bobby Wright, Katie Wright, and Joey Wright. As they drove down the street, Mrs. Wright waved to Lisa, their neighbor, who lives two houses down on the left. She was watering her garden on the right side of her house, at the Wright family approached Fenway Park, Mrs. Wright exclaimed, I can't remember where I left my tickets. Joe Wright said, Dad, I saw you put them in your right-hand pocket. How do you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mr. Wright checked, but they were not there. Katie said, no, Dad, it isn't right. You left the tickets with me for safekeeping. I have them right here in my purse. Uh, what a relief, said Mr. Wright, as he turned left into the stadium pocket lot. Joy almost left his baseball glove in the van, but right when Mr. Wright was about to lock the doors, he remember, remembered he had left it under his seat. The Wright family had to wait in line for a bit, but finally made it to their seats in left field. As they sat down, Mr. Wright looked to his left at the whole Wright family and smiled had made the right decision in getting tickets for this game thank you very much so guys <laughs> do you know this game i'd like i'd like to add um this is the text for this game but it's not the end because you know you i don't know if you like using this game in your virtual or your physical classrooms you can do it because we have several ideas how you can use this game so the first offline version that every time students hear the word right they pass the object in their hands. So when we say this is the story of the right family, so the object should be passed to the right, and then you continue with left, and you should pass the object to the left. And actually then the person who has the object at the end, he wins. The second idea how you can use this story is just if we can work in physical classroom, uh, you can simply ask your students to stay in a circle and when they hear the word right or left, they should make a step. They should take a step to the left or to the right. And believe me, it's so funny. And anyway, if we're talking about bottom-up uh, listening, yeah, we can pay attention to this activity. And it's not about only one story, but the right family. So I prepared several stories. This is story two that you can use in your classrooms, the same idea behind this story, and story number three as well. So all this stuff will be included in the uh, material folder, which will be sent to you in the follow-up email, I mean, to those who registered for this um, marathon. Okay, so I hope um, you feel better right I now. Want add, <laughs> I want to add one thing uh, regarding the stories. The stories are really good and perfect itself. Uh, however, this game itself reminds me uh, the game maybe you know this Simon Says. So yeah, yeah. the idea here is like you have to give instruction to a student. For example, if the student stands in front of you, all students, and you say, okay, if I say Simon says, it means you have to touch it, for example, nose or eyes. But if I don't say Simon, it means like you shouldn't touch it. For example, let's say Simon says touch your nose. Uh, and if I say Simon says, you touch it. But if I say touch your nose, you shouldn't touch it, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's a famous activity. I think that all the teachers, all teachers yeah. use it. It's mm -hmm, like basic definitely. activity when we start yeah. that comprehensive stage. Yeah, Rob, thank you very much for thank participating much. in this activity and for sharing your ideas about giving clear instructions. I mean, thank you very much. Thank you, thank, you. thank you, thank you for joining, and we continue. So, again, we should travel from Azerbaijan to Ola. Do you remember the country? Uh, Georgia. Yeah. So now I'd like to present another person. By the way, the topic which we are going to 
um, listen to him is really amazing. I'm not sure if you're experts in this topic, like reading logs, uh, what is more, we are going to talk about extensive reading, so about extensive reading and reading logs, which we, we can use while doing that extensive reading with our students. The topic is really amazing. And I'm pretty sure that this session will be very productive. So and the people let me, are really amazing. Yeah, and the people are amazing. So let me introduce the person who is waiting on the backstage. So Tamuna Dilavierova from Georgia is an assistant professor of BAU International University, Batumi and an invited lecturer at Batumi Shataru Savelli State University. She has been an EFL ESL teacher for more than 12 years. She also teaches Georgians to the Georgian to the foreigners. Yeah, great. And she's also actively involved in research. She has published more than 15 articles in high-ranked linguistic and educational journals. Teaching is her lifetime mood. So let me try. Tamuna, hello. I'm really happy to hello. have you here. Hello. Good hello. luck to Tamuna, says Natya Vasadze. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So let's get started. Uh, can I start? Yeah. So uh, can you can you make your presentation in the presentation mode right now? Of course. Is it start? Yeah, so I added to the screen and here you go. Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you for your very, very interesting introduction. Uh, as Eva has already mentioned, I'm Tamila Dilaverova. I'm an assistant professor at BU International University and I'm a, I'm a very active uh, so say EFL and ESL teacher. So English is my love. So today uh, we are going to speak, I'm going to speak about extensive reading and uh, my uh, Cooperative co collaborator, so to say, is going to speak about reading books. So, uh, first of all, before we move in, uh, before we move to ex uh, exactly to uh, extensive reading, I would like to emphasize the importance of reading itself. So, uh, there is no way to study a language, no matter whether it is native language or uh, it is a foreign language. A person needs to read in order to study the language. Well, reading kind of just uh, pushes you become successful to say it, to be true. So, as it is mentioned on the slide people who read are more likely to get get ahead when it comes to their careers and life in general this is this uh, quote really emphasizes the importance and the necessity of reading so uh reading turns out to be one of the main skills for acquiring for the esl acquisition so to say esl or efl acquisition so as stephen Krashen uh, mentions people acquiring a second language have the best chance for success through reading because when you read it's kind of receptive skill but generally it facilitates a learner to be uh, to uh, so to say uh, to have better productive skills like speaking and driving so what is extensive reading general inside the classroom no, classroom most of the teachers do intensive reading so i uh, will speak about it a little bit later but now i would like to emphasize uh, to give definition for extensive reading that is usually left out of english platform the extensive reading is kind of reading for joy it's reading uh, a lot of material uh, on a target language in reality but it is not a reading for joy it just helps you to be exposed to the, a lot of grammatical and vocabulary uh, structure so that you don't even use the dictionary so what's the difference between extensive reading and intensive reading uh, the first difference uh, between them is uh, that extensive reading is not part of the curriculum generally, but intensive reading is an innovative, inevitable part of our curriculum. So uh, in extensive reading, you read longer texts and develop general reading tasks. While in intensive reading, you read in details with specific learning games and tasks. So in intensive, e extensive reading, sorry, you read longer text, but you generally understand the general idea. You read for cheese. So for while in intensive reading, shorter text, you read shorter text, much shorter in reality, and you need to, uh, you you get full understanding of the text. In, in extensive reading, you never ever use dictionary because diction, the use of dictionary may how to say spoil your pleasure while reading the fiction. And uh, well, in 
that's what I think. The dictionary is the, a key, the most necessary tool. So, and uh, the last difference that appears to be also important, it is uh, the fact that extensive everything is generally done outside the classroom. It's a fault, I would say. So, well, uh, intensive reading is always done inside the classroom with the help of a teacher. So, uh, again, I would like to just turn to Stephen uh, Kershaw, who mentions that, that uh, who underlines the importance of extensive reading. He says that the best methods are therefore those that are quite comprehensive in like inputting low anxiety situations containing the messages that students really want to hear. I would say that this definition is kind of uh, just uh, how to say is a reflection of iceberg principle because the definition is quite short, but it uh, says a lot of good things. It means that whenever they read the material that a teacher has chosen for them cleverly, uh, skillfully, Etc. they really get the message that they really want to hear. This is the key of the uh, definition. So what is the aim of extensive reading? So the key aim of extensive reading is to motivate students reading English and like it. Yeah. And another uh, very important uh, aim of extensive reading is to achieve an increase in reading fluency. No matter what you read in English or in French or in, in a way, native language, more you read, better fluent you become. So uh, what are the key characters? It's how should we just uh, understand uh, and how should a teacher understand that uh, she's doing extensive reading and what she, cho she should consider to deliver uh, lessons just full of extensive reading approach. The key, different, the key characteristic is that students read a lot and they read often. So the as I've mentioned, they should read a lot of material and they should it, uh, read it very often. So the main purpose of the reading reading is not just getting acquainted with the vocabulary, it's getting uh, getting pleasure, getting a lot of information and getting general and have general understanding, so to say. So the uh, text should not be interesting, should not only be interesting, they should be engaging, involving, compelling them. This is where the role of the teacher becomes more clear. So uh, in extensive, while well, doing extensive reading, the uh, students have a choice. So they choose what they want to read. In reality, the teacher should provide them with the, the uh, material that is in the competence of the, of the students, in the language competence of the students. And then out of the choice of the teacher, either it is uh, the online library or offline library, so to say physical library, the students choose what, wherever they want to read. But if they find the beginning of the book not interesting to them, they can even just change it. So uh, as for the uh, reading part, reading is individual and silent necessarily. While in intensive reading, we generally uh, read orally just loudly. So speed is faster and not del deliberate. And the key characteristic of the extensive reading is that the teacher explains so the procedure clearly and the monitors so that we will move to the monitoring a little bit later now. So how do the students benefit benefit from extensive reading? The key benefit of extensive reading is that it is really increases the reading speed. It also improves the reading comprehension because you know when you just read the first book, uh, you you maybe have you may have some difficulty while understanding some vocabulary out of the context, but while, uh, maybe just while reading the third book or the third long story, so to say, you become uh, you comprehend much better. So it improves your grammar, grammar and vocabulary. Yes, while doing extensive reading, you're exposed to the things, to the grammatical structures that maybe your teacher has never taught to you. But just while, when you repeat, when you read something again and again, this structure becomes native to you, so to say, and you can already use it. And improves writing, listening, and speaking. So as you see, it improves the productive skill, receptive skills. So of course, listening when you read a lot, just your speed of listening also increases, but for writing and speaking skills, it, it really becomes productive. If it provides you with grammar and vocabulary, of course, it improves your writing and speaking skills. There are, these are the ideas of a lot of researchers who underline the importance of extensive reading. They say that extensive reading can give you an increase in reading rate, increase in reading, listening, writing proficiency, increase in writing proficiency, again, increase in vocabulary, knowledge, motivation, attitude, etc. As you see, not only us and not only some years and the FL teachers, but a lot of researchers underline the importance of extensive reading. So 
if we consider, if we, if we try to prove that extensive reading is so important, why do the teachers avoid to use it? Because a lot of teachers don't even know the definition of extensive reading. The first problematic part of avoiding using uh, extensive reading is insufficient time. What, what, what I mean when I say insufficient time, it means that when our curriculum is full of material, we need to just uh, how to stick to the textbook, stick to the material that is inside the curriculum, and we try to just leave it out. But, uh, and it's a mistake because uh, how it's learning process. When does you teach not, not how to say using teaching, but when you teach using learning, this is the key of extensive learning reading story. So extensive reading can also be kind of costly. So why? If a teacher needs to equip the classroom library, of, if a school needs to uh, equip the classroom, classroom library, it can be costly because you need to equip A2 level uh, books, uh, equip the library with A2 level books, B1 level books, B2 level books, and it can turn out quite costly. So uh, e, uh, extensive reading, as I have already mentioned, is not linked to the syllabi and examination. And it is kind of how to say the students may not even do extensive reading if, you, if the teacher doesn't motivate correctly because it's not included in the examination in the uh, syllabi and it can be uh, how to say kind of obstacle for the teachers so uh, another problem is, is uh, i have also already mentioned lack of understanding of extensive reading and its benefits because a lot of teachers a lot of even researchers consider that it is not as beneficial beneficial as others consider but i think i have already underlined the benefits of uh, extensive reading so now uh, and uh, uh, another problem is download pressure on teachers to conform to syllabi and textbooks and resi resistance uh, from teachers who uh, find it impossible to stop teaching to allow learning to take place this is a key problem so What's the teacher's role in extensive reading? If extensive reading is kind of learning by yourself, if you read silently, individually, etc., what's the role of the teacher? As I have already mentioned, the key problem is that it's not included in the examination. So in order to motivate your students, the teachers should be a big kind of role model. If a student sees that you love reading, so you are, you're keen on reading, keen on just discussing the details, including in the reading, they also feel encouraged to read more. This will be kind of top encouragement for the students to just go on reading and to do extensive reading. In this uh, issue, the teacher should also appear as a motivator because when you tell your students, when you choose the material, the correct material for the students, neither too, too difficult, nor too easy. When they can understand the, some things out of the context, they feel even more encouraged to read more and to do more reading. And the last part where the teacher appears to be the the, the teacher has a very important role is that the teacher should keep records for herself. This is the, how to say, the main thing how we should motivate our students to do extensive reading. When you keep records like just reading books, it's very important. The student feels that you're interested in what they read, and the student also feels obliged to, to do a kind of assignment. Plus, when you just keep re when you help them keep records of their reading, and you just read these reports, you also observe how they evolve, how their grammar evolve, how their structures evolve, vocabulary structures evolve. This is why exactly the teacher should keep records for herself and uh, for uh, as the students develop. So now the uh, practical part of our presentation is really about keeping records. It is about reading books, and my co-laborator uh, uh, Pravina is going to, to speak about the importance of reading books and introduce you with uh, the practical, uh, how to say, experiences that you can use while uh, experimenting uh, the reading books and extensive, extensive reading inside your classroom. So thank you for attention. So I think that I give the floor to Pravina now. Thank you, Tamila. It was really great. <laughs> Thank you, Olga. <laughs> screen. The screen. The screen. I stopped sharing the screen, I think. Okay, thanks a lot. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you uh, yeah, yeah. Great. So to confirm what you've said, yes, Russian claim that extensive reading 
for pleasure is the only way of acquiring higher order writing skills. Yeah. So if you are interested in knowing more about extensive reading, um, Mr. Stephen Krushen, he released so many articles and you can find them on the internet. Just read and enjoy because he shared lots of wonderful ideas how to deal with extensive reading and actually why. Uh, and I'm uh, personally a big fan of Stephen Krushen, so I can continue that presentation for hours about extensive reading. So I do like this topic a lot. Thank you, Camila. Yeah, become the fan of Tim and Carson because he has a lot of experiments and a lot of really creative ideas about extensive reading. The first thing that I'm going to do from September is just giving a good extensive reading material for my students. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. So we should continue. See you in the chat box. Okay. Join us. Okay. Yeah. See you. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. So now we're going to give the floor to our next speaker, Parvina Eivazova from Azerbaijan, uh, who's been teaching English as a foreign language for more than 10 years. As a teacher, she enjoys sharing her knowledge to help children progress through positive learning experiences. She strongly believes that teachers can have the best lessons if all the students are actively involved and engaged in the learning process. Additionally, being a teacher who is able to use technology in the classroom too, uh, its maximum potential is a great skill to have. So let's go. Okay, welcome. hello, Parvina. Hello. hello, 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 everybody. How are you? How are you doing? Uh, pretty yeah. well, in spite of the fact that we've been doing this marathon for four, for six hours right now. <laughs> so, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, can you put your presentation in a presentation mode? I've put it. I can't see it. It's like a black screen. Oh, yeah, I can see it. Great. So, Good luck with your presentation, and I'm pretty sure that it will be useful information about reading logs, because not all the teachers are aware about existence even of reading logs. Okay, good luck. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, good day, everyone. It's a great pleasure for me to be here, to be a part of this great uh, teacher's marathon. Hope that uh, at the end of this session, you will learn some great uh, tips and uh, tools how to implement extensive reading to your lessons. So before beginning, before passing to my presentation, I would like to uh, read the quote by Stephen King. Books are a uniquely portable magic. So once the kids, why this, once the students understand the magical power of the books, they will understand that by sitting uh, in their home, by uh, reading one book, they can travel to different places, they can learn and then they can explore different cultures, uh, they can get acquainted with different kinds of people with different characteristics. So. Uh, especially reading in ESL or in EFL, even if not uh, in ESL or EFL classrooms, generally reading improves uh, and broadens uh, students or people's um, outlook. And uh, I would like to pass to the practical side of uh, reading, extensive reading. So I, today I will mainly focus on reading log. So what is reading log? So I, here you can see some uh, tips, uh, Parts of the definition. So a reading log is much like a journal. So uh, it doesn't it doesn't matter if you use it within the classroom or outside the classroom. It doesn't matter whether you use it with the kids at school or uh, as adult. You can use a reading log. It's kind of journal where you. Uh, uh, record your reading activity and thoughts. So after reading the book, you have finished with the book, yeah, when you pass to another book, you can come back uh, at any time, you can come back to your journal and uh, it, it will reflect uh, the uh, author's uh, ideas, it can uh, you can reflect what is written inside of this journal and it will be a kind of reminder for you. So by keeping this uh, journal, uh, you can uh, understand the author in, in better way and deeply and it will it is a way of uh, part of a formal assignment too so teachers can use uh, reading blogs as a part of formal assignment in their online or offline classes it doesn't matter and purposes of reading uh, logs uh, we can add more uh, options here but uh, here I wanted to uh, just add three uh, purpose uh, 
of reading logs. Uh, reading logs helps students to grow as passionate readers. So um, it helps students to examine themselves as readers and it helps students to keep the track of their reading. Uh, sometimes uh, students um, can begin reading one book and in some point they can leave the book and uh, feel um, demotivated. But uh, by keeping these reading logs, it can help them uh, to track what they have read, to be motivated by their uh, recordings, by their um, uh, information they have uh, put down in uh, reading logs. So it helps the student to grow as passionate readers, as, my, as I mentioned before. And this is very important. Uh, to uh, Growing as passionate readers is very important in extensive reading because extensive reading, reading uh, is not evaluated uh, during the lessons. So it is done uh, independently and uh, students uh, will be passionate while doing extensive uh, reading. And how to organize reading logs. So it is um, there is no such a mandatory compulsory ways that you should use or okay, you should add these, these, these facts uh, or these options to reading logs. It is uh, free. So the teacher, depending on the, uh, the teacher's goal, depending on the teacher's creativity, she can add uh, as much information as she wants uh, inside of the reading logs. So, uh, but the, there are some uh, options that is the teacher should add. So, for example, writing down the title of the book, writing down the author of the book, and writing down the amount of the time that students uh, uh, spend on extensive reading. But and another of the option, other options, it is free. So the younger children, for example, if we are working with younger younger children, they can draw a picture. They can draw a picture of the characteristics, they can draw uh, characters, or they can draw the picture of the setting, the part that they have read, and uh, it can uh, improve their uh, drawing skills as well as reading skills too, and uh, it will be more engaging. Uh, older children can find the genre of the book. So we, as we know, the, as the students uh, grow and uh, they pass from um, primary to uh, secondary or high school and they are more engaged in uh, literature and they by uh, reading uh, the different types of book, books uh, they can find the genre of the book and uh, additionally they can uh, find uh, that which kind of books they like so it's very important in their uh, extensive reading and uh, after reading the book they can or while reading the books they can rate the book so they can give stars from one to five and uh, they can rate the book uh, uh, this book and later on share the experience that they had with the book with other uh, kids with their classmates too and additionally they can write a short paragraph it's also a great way of um, a great option that teachers can add and writing a short paragraph of the part they have read and one thing i would mention that uh, sometimes reading logs um, can be boring for students if uh, it is not done properly so sometimes the teachers only just add write uh, the title of the book write the author uh, write the minutes and that's all and they end uh, the uh, parent's uh, signature or guardian's signature. And uh, sometimes it can be boring. And uh, the teacher can't be sure if the student has read this reading, uh, reading, has read the book, has done extensive reading, or hasn't done. How can we be, uh, can we be sure uh, that uh, the student has done uh, extensive reading on a daily basis? So we can add different ideas to our reading logs. So here I will show you some uh, part of ideas. So you can enlarge, you can add your own options here. It, it really depends on your creativity and on your goal. So for example, my reading logs mainly um, are assigned for one week. So the teacher hands in uh, on Monday reading log and in the, at the end of the week, the students are uh, handing back this uh, paper. And um, for every week, teacher can add different idea. For example, for one week, she can ask the students, she can write down this idea and ask the students, uh, write about your favorite part of the book. So uh, for every day, for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they are writing down information about their favorite uh, part. So it's kind of summarizing and um, just in paragraph form, they are writing down this information. For the next week, they can uh, add, write down setting uh, about the second setting and characters. So another week, also's purpose, 
another week, a main idea, and interesting words, and so on and so on. So by doing this, the teacher uh, becomes uh, confident and becomes sure that uh, the students are doing you know, extensive reading and they are responsible while, you know, in, while doing response, uh, reading lots, uh, while doing extensive reading, because they have to answer these questions. And here, one example of reading log. So you can see here, it's just an example. As I said, that uh, organizing reading logs really depends uh, on teacher's uh, creativity. She can add whatever she wants uh, to engage students to this reading process. On the left bar, you can see book, date, minutes. It's just traditional way of reading logs. So it, in every reading log, we should add these details, the book, the author, the title, date, and the minutes that uh, students mainly spend on reading. And the, on the right bar, it can be, um, it's different. It can, uh, you can add any idea that you want on this part. For example, in this example, uh, for each day, so this is uh, for um, from Monday to Friday. So for each day, we can see different ideas. For example, for Monday, what was your favorite part from today's reading? Uh, for Tuesday, another, for Thursday, another idea. But it doesn't mean that you should do it like this too. As I mentioned before, you can choose, for example, the first question, what was your favorite part from today's reading? for all the days from monday to friday for next week you can use other options but it you are free of doing of choosing any idea any version any uh design that you want and it, it depends on your students uh interest it depends on your uh, lesson goal or the in your generally uh, your way of teaching so you can uh, design it as you want and in the end uh, it's not visible here. In the end, we have parent signature, parent or guardian's a signature that they have to put their signature. And what are the parents uh, or teachers? Um, we have a guide. So we have um, here I've shown just uh, five uh, guide, uh, five guides. So for everyday basis, students will uh, spend on extensive reading 20 minutes. It can be 10 minutes. It can be 30 minutes. It's just overall. Uh, 20 minutes. So uh, for a uh, daily basis, um, it can be uh, before sleeping, uh, any time after school. Uh, so they should do 20 minutes reading. And uh, as I mentioned, that uh, reading logs uh, can be sometimes um, uh, can turn as a disadvantage for teachers, uh, and students can be bored uh, with uh, the book and with doing extensive reading. How can we make it more interesting? The students themselves they choose a book and they do uh, reading pro uh, reading independently. So in our classrooms, uh, mainly we have some baskets, some box with lots of different books and on different topics, and the students uh, can come up and. Uh, they can choose the book that they want uh, and uh, read it freely. So we shouldn't, uh, teachers or parents shouldn't make our kids to read the book that we have chosen. Maybe the book is not interesting for the student, so they themselves should choose the book. And the book that they are choosing should be to their level. So if the book shouldn't be too easy, uh, the book shouldn't be too difficult. Because if it is too difficult or too easy, they will lose their mot motivation. So it's very important that uh, in one page, for example, they shouldn't be more than six unknown words, unfamiliar words, or different uh, difficult grammatical structures. So uh, if we avoid all these factors, uh, the book should be on their uh, level, and, and they will choose the book according to their wish. So I think uh, this uh, will be more effective and we shouldn't overwhelm our children so we shouldn't overwhelm with different questions we shouldn't make them we should push them to extensive reading but we shouldn't make them to read uh, and we should encourage our kids so uh, what can parents do um, at home they can create such kind of atmosphere and they can create some reading time for their kids and they will the student uh, will feel that okay this is my reading time i feel confident i feel relaxed calm so i will do this reading and what can teachers do encourage our kids i will just show you in my next slide and in the end this is parents responsibility they will sign the log to return to school so um and the when the paper will be handed to the teacher, is the teacher should see that the parent or the guardian signed the log. And here we pass to the uh, awarding part. So what can teacher do to encourage the student? The teacher can uh, 
present certificates. So uh, I will show you one interesting uh, option uh, for um, organizing, um, for preparing certificates. For, uh, for example, you can see here December reading log sim. The teachers can choose one log sim per month. For example, for December, we can uh, we have here climbing Mount Everest. For January, we, we can have different uh, sim for March, February, it doesn't matter, different themes, and uh, to uh, engage them into uh, this reading process. So you can say name, class, my December goal beforehand, and in the end, my total minutes. So as you can see, it's a kind of mountain, and they have base cam here on the bottom, and as they are reading, their minutes, reading minutes are increasing, and they are reaching to the summit. So as we said, 20 minutes per day, for one minute, it makes 140 minutes. And in the end, it should make, uh, at the end of the month, it should make 620 minutes or plus. So it means that if they are reading in one month, 620 minutes and plus, it means that they are reaching the summit. So for every day, they are recording their minutes that they have spent on extensive reading. And if they are reaching the summit, they are getting certificates. So certificates for first place, second place, third place, fourth place, even the certificate of participation. So we shouldn't ignore any children. We shouldn't put away, uh, put aside any children. We should uh, motivate every children in extensive reading. It doesn't matter uh, if they have reached this summit, if they haven't reached this um, 620 minutes, we should uh, encourage them. By doing this, uh, by encouraging, by believing in our students, I do believe and uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, students uh, will become better and better uh, day by day. For example, maybe this month uh, they couldn't reach the summit, but uh, if the teacher supports the student, if the teacher shows maybe some uh, additional tips and ways of uh, uh, extensive reading, they will reach the first place next month. So we shouldn't ignore any student and if the certificates will be given to all of them, but uh, first place, second, third, fourth place and uh, participation certificate, it will differ in this way. And we, uh, the, this part, the till here, uh, this uh, kind of uh, reading blocks uh, is uh, very effective in our offline classes. And what can we do in our online classes? Uh, what can we do in our online classes? So we know that because of quarantine, lots of schools are closed. And uh, in order to track their, to keep the track of their reading, what can we do? We can create Google Drive files. Beforehand, we can create Google Classrooms. So in, while creating Google Classrooms, you are adding your students there. You can share different types of uh, books you can share different pdfs and uh, or maybe links and the students uh, even if they don't can't leave their homes the students can click on the link can download the book and do this extensive reading even in quarantine time even in uh, online uh, lessons too so uh, you can create this google drive and share it on your google classroom students um gets the link from this Google Drive file and answers the questions. Uh, here I showed you some samples of uh, Google Drive file. So you, what questions uh, you can add there? What's the title of the book? How many pages you have? did you read today? How many minutes did you read today? Share something interesting you read or thought about today as you were reading and did you finish your book and so on and so on. You can add as many questions as you want or you can keep it short. It depends on you. So uh, by doing this, you can keep the track of reading even in uh, online lessons and the students will send back your their responses and in the end and uh, you can uh, keep the all these um, files in your google classroom and you can keep the track uh, of their reading and one more thing that uh, i would i want to mention that uh, even if we have um, offline lessons, face-to-face -face lessons, I advise using Google Drive file uh, more uh, because um, by do, while using Google Drive file, we will save uh, paper and uh, we will not waste paper uh, because and it will help us to save our time too. So instead of uh, printing uh, every month, uh, every week one paper for every student, so it can be uh, in one classroom can be 20 students, 25 students, uh, and later on when they hand in, uh, it, it will um, 
turn into trash. So in order to avoid this, a Google Drive files is a great uh, option for uh, keeping track of reading and uh, for realizing, uh, for using reading blocks. And this is the part where we can um, use uh, not only reading logs but also other alternatives reading logs um, as i mentioned it has some advantages and disadvantages one of the uh, disadvantages is that uh, sometimes adults uh, some higher school students uh, they can be bored of uh, doing the same stuff every week and uh, doing the paperwork every day we, and how can we uh, just encourage inspire our students we can present them different alternatives to reading blocks. So here you can see different alternatives. I will give some uh, brief information about each of them. One of them, uh, book snaps, book blocks, uh, blocks, concept mapping, and give me five. So um, mainly uh, upper graders, they are uh, interested in social media. So how can we, and this is a version of uh, book snaps. What is book snap? As you can see, they are taking the photo of the book that the page maybe they are reading and they are reflecting their personal uh, ideas, their opinions. On this part, they are writing their personal reflection. And in the highlighted part, they show the text and uh, the, the highlighted text is the evidence that they are of their personal reflection. So, and and they can add additionally they can add emojis they can add emotions they can make it as colorful as they want uh, and uh, it will show their own personal reflection and what what can they do after doing this they can share on snapchat they can share on instagram they can share on uh, google classroom and even they can go social and they can share in on um, twitter but, uh, with the hashtag book snaps so it's a great tool, especially with uh, high school students, and they can use it, um, the teachers can use it uh, while doing extensive reading. Another option is book blog. So we know that blogs are online diaries. And online diaries, and there are lots of bloggers in the world, uh, and uh, one of them, one of the options that we can use this advantage of blogging, we can uh, ask the students to create book blogs. And on these book blogs, uh, they can reach to larger audience. And they can uh, write down their comments, their reviews about the book. Uh, they can evaluate it in the book. And they can... Um, also, this will improve their writing skills too. So by reaching to larger audience, uh, it will be consistent and it will be one contemporary way of reading blocks. And blocks. So we know that if we have blocks, so we should have blocks too. So we know that nowadays, uh, lots of uh, people, so it doesn't matter if you're a child or an adult, it doesn't matter. There are lots of people who are taking videos and they are um, putting on, uh, installing into uh, YouTube. And, and how can we turn this situation into our advantage? We can ask the students to shoot a short video and to pay, uh, paste it uh, and to uh, download it on YouTube and uh, uh, share with other people too. So it will help them uh, to develop their speaking skills and uh, it will uh, help uh, also for uh, teachers and for the students stuff to track his um, improvement so uh, it will show that the student uh, has read the book and he gives his comments and uh, evaluates the book that he has uh, he is reading and another version is concept mapping so concept mapping is kind of organizing it's kind of understanding also message it's kind of understanding what's going on inside of the uh, book uh, by joining them by synthesizing by evaluating uh, the uh, different characters and different settings uh, different uh, details main ideas so uh, it uh, it is the uh, visualized form of their thinking, and they can broaden it as much as they want. And the last version is Give Me Five. So Give Me Five uh, is also a great alternative to uh, reading lots. Uh, here in Give Me Five message, what do the children do? They are taking five quotes from the book uh, that best illustrates the author's uh, idea, the author's uh, opinion, and the, or maybe, uh, characteristic features of some um, 
uh, some part of the book and they are sharing it with their classmates in, in discussion rooms it, it can be in um, google classroom or in the different uh, social media and it will lead to the uh, discussion and uh, it will improve their uh, critical thinking as well as their speaking too so uh, that's all the uh, hope the um, presentation was helpful uh, i tried uh, during these uh, 20 minutes to cover all the topics uh, all the uh, practical methods that you can use uh, while uh, realizing extensive reading thank you thank you for your attention thank you for listening thank you for be being with me eva Can you yeah, hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, I've just added um, Mr. Mila because I know that you wished to highlight some moments. So I want to leave you to you on the screen and you can do it together. Yeah. I think that Corvina really disconnected uh, reading of his extensive reading and just uh, shared the experience how to productively teach, uh, how to productively use extensive reading in quotes. And one thing that I really wanted everybody to remember is the quote that says that a child who reads becomes a person who thinks. Just help your students, help your learners think more and become better thinkers. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, and I would like uh, to end our presentation, our collaboration with one uh, quote too, that good readers also make good writers. So we should keep this uh, in mind that we should encourage our students uh, to read more and open. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank it you. was really amazing. Was really as I mentioned exciting. before, I'm a big fan of Stephen Krashen uh, as well as uh, extensive reading and reading logs. And some of those alternatives are really new for me, so I'm going to research more about that. And you see, like, getting comments, like, thank you very much. Thank you, really. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks indeed. And see you later, ladies. Just see you. go and join us on YouTube. OK. <laughs> and now we are moving to Uzbekistan again, yeah? Yeah, yeah, we are moving to Uzbekistan. And let me introduce this person. Actually, uh, this person, she's with us. It, this is the second marathon when she's presenting. And last time it was something like mind blowing presentation because we had so many participants and all of them were supporting her, writing so nice comments. And I expect that we are going to have the same thing now. So let me introduce this person. Sadat Tanshibayeva is a qualified teacher trainer of TESOL and IELTS with more than 20 years of experience in teaching academic English and TESOL in different international institutions. Currently, she serves as an adjunct professor of MA TESOL Webster University, as well as deals with TESOL and teacher training courses in Uzbekistan. <clears throat> Her passion to teach resulted in facilitating variety of methodological webinars, workshops, and masterclass trainings for teachers to give them a hand in professional development. In the era of pandemic, she is moderating online webinars for teachers as a leader of the project ELT community in Uzbekistan. And as I mentioned in the beginning of our marathon, uh, this community um, is also our partner, and we are really happy to see that all the teachers across the globe, they support our idea about the fact that we should share because sharing is caring. So let me introduce and welcome Ms. Saudad. Hello. 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 Ms. Saudad. Hello. Thank you very much for a great presentation of mine. And I see, guys, you are doing very well. I'm here from the beginning of presentation. And Eva, That's great. Well, you are just fantastic. And I see all the presenters today are uh, just sharing great ideas which can help everybody in the era of pandemic as well as in offline lessons. Right? Thank you very much. Okay. So, um, let me check. Just I can't see your screen right now. Can you share it again, please? Mm -hmm. Okay. And we can enjoy the comments like thanks for new ideas. Yeah, those ideas were really new for me as well. 
at the all. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Thank you. Oh. Okay. So now she is green, right? I hope. <laughs> yeah. Let's check. Mm -hmm. So actually what we are going to discuss right now. Yeah, I can see your screen. Perfect. No. You no, no, no. You should do it no. again, please. Yeah. yeah, and open your presentation. In a presentation mode. Yeah, that's great. So we have it uh, on the screen. Good luck with your presentation. See you in 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Now, first of all, good afternoon, good evening, or good morning, everybody. Actually, nice part of the day to everybody who is watching this marathon from the early beginning. Now, it's high time to go to the most motivational part. So, have you ever thought of what is the most motivational part of your classroom? Of course, you are right. These are bulletin boards. And you know, bulletin boards are always in trend. I can see it say forever. But are they so significant in the classroom? What do you think that, about them? So the first person who comes to your school, what he or she can see? Of course, your beautiful bulletin boards. The first person who comes to your classroom, what he or she can see? Of course, your bulletin boards, because they are really eye-catching, motivational, as well as informational. So the question comes, are they so significant in the classroom today? Of course, he answers yes. Now let's turn back to the history of bulletin boards. When were they used the first? So actually, I have identified that they were firstly used in 1801. You see, approximately even more than two centuries ago, they were already in trend. And the first country to use bulletin boards were, was Scotland. And the people, the, the people in some schools were using bulletin boards with some eagerness and some interest, of course. And I'm sure that from that early times, the, uh, all the students were really involved in them. So, and what, what was the aim of this first bulletin board? Of course, it was just for posting notes. However, time by time, year by year, bulletin boards became more and more colorful and more and more versatile. So, coming to today's world, we have different types of bulletin boards. You can use these bulletin boards for daily routine. So, what you are doing here? You are just sticking colorful routine parts of your sessions and the students will know the agenda of your session. When they come to your class, they can easily observe and see what is in the agenda today and they will never miss the opportunity to cover everything. So another option is that you can use bulletin boards as word wall. So what is word wall? Word wall is the vocabulary. So where we can find all the related words to our topic. So feel free to use it as world wall. So just stick in different stickers, your topic vocabulary of today's session, and you give the chance to your students to learn the vocabulary by enjoying these bulletin boards. Okay, want to use it to, for something different? Yes, another option is you can use bulletin boards for content wall. So here, all the content of all your sessions during the semester can be hanged on. So the students will know your syllabus, even it can show the whole syllabus of your semester. And the most important part and the most interesting part to your students is bulletin boards for student work. Now give the chance to your students to be proud of their work by seeing their most colorful and the most interesting works 
on the walls, on your bulletin boards. This is not only very involving for your students, but also the parents can be proud of it because when they come to your classroom and they can see the words of their children, of course, this is the highest price for them. And of course, we can use them as classroom management. So what is classroom management here? So you are using bulletin boards for managing your activities in the classroom. So give chance to your students to use it as interactive game board. So just mind map something there. Give them some listening and they should listen and they should write down the words which are related to this listening on this bulletin board. And even you can stick some stickers here and then give them the chance to write down some words on these stickers. Or want to use it in a different way? Just write down the topic of your today's session in the center and your students should stick, should write, should draw on this board. Anything you can use bulletin boards to organize any kind of activity here, if you are using it, them for classroom management, of course. Now, so what is the most important aim of bulletin boards? Actually, bulletin boards can be really versatile. You can use them in different purposes, in different parts of your sessions. However, the most significant and eye-catching parts are motivation of your students. Do you think that your students are not so motivated? And have you ever thought why? Because maybe you are not using bulletin boards still. Feel free to use them. Just use colorful ones because you know the colors can involve all the people. When people are looking at different colored bulletin boards, their imagination works better, believe me. And then when they see some words in these colors, of course, they can remember the words. They can remember the most important concepts of your lessons very easily. Moreover, if it is the bulletin board for student works, when they see their words on this colorful bulletin board, they will feel proud. And then they can get motivated, of course, and then they will do better and better. Why? Not only because of these colorful building words, because of the content which is correctly put in this bulletin board. So motivate your students by incorporating correct content into your bulletin boards in your classroom. So second one is you can add interaction by using bulletin boards. You say how? Of course, easy. Use bulletin boards as a whiteboard or blackboard or interactive board in your classroom. It's easy. Just use some magnets or some colorful stickers or even you can ask them to hang yeah, some cards there and then interactivity begins. Just give them the chance by writing the topic of the sentence or title of the text and just ask them to text map on the bulletin board. They will read the text or listen to the recording and then they will write the most important contents or concepts of this recording or of this reading or maybe it can be writing or some speaking topics even. They can collaborate there on these built-in boards easily because, you know, visual aids can always help the people to understand the main idea of everything. So by this, they are interacting with each other and they are moving around the classroom and it activates the schemata, of course. Now, next one is building interest. So as I have already told you, building interest is really important by using building words. So of course, these colorful words and the content of them and some pictures even which are just stick on your bulletin boards can involve the interests of your students. But be sure that you are using bulletin boards with interactivity while building the interest. Without the interactivity, of course, bulletin boards can stay just 
a piece of cotton or a piece of board and that's it. So, by building interest, you are adding interaction, of course. So, the last one is review the material. Believe me, these bulletin boards can be a really good idea to review the material you have in the previous lessons or you have just covered. So, what can you do here? Here, you can ask them to draw some mind maps or to draw some charts on them. You can just provide the example and then you can ask them to mind map on this bulletin board all the ideas and concepts they have just learned during the session. Or want to use it for checking home assignment? This is easy. So ask them just to remember all the concepts and maybe grammar rules, maybe some vocabulary, right? They have learned during the previous lesson and ask them to jump down on this board or to jump down on a piece of paper and just stick all these notes on the bulletin board. Believe me, by incorporating interactivity, you can review all the material. Moreover, it can be really useful for your students to review the material by peer support. So what is peer support here? Peer support here is while they are reviewing this material and working interactively with other students, even if they have forgotten some concepts, vocabulary, grammar rules, or something else, they can just look at the notes of their peers, I mean group mates or classmates, and then they can uh, remember everything here. So it's a very good strategy, not only for reviewing the material, but also organizing some peer support. You know, in today's classroom, student-centered classroom is really important, and here the role of peer support can be the best one here. So, want to use it online? So you can tell me, Okay, we are just teaching from home and using Zoom or some other type of platform. How can we do this? How can we make our students to interact with each other? Of course, it's easy. So use virtual bulletin boards. You can use Podlet, Neopod, Peer Deck, Google Slides. Of course, you know, today's students are technologically motivated and technologically advanced, of course. Just give them the chance to use this kind of tech tools during your ses sessions. So I believe that they will learn quickly. Even they can provide the work which you even didn't expect. You see in the picture, the people, the students are just motivated to organizing some posters to creating some posters on Padlet, Neopod, and other types of bulletin board um, supported some tech tools. So, how can we use them? Of course, by sharing, by designing them and sharing them. Carlos will talk about it later, of course. And while you are using virtual bulletin boards, you can get the students involved in your lessons. You know, sometimes in online instruction, not all the students can be involved. But believe me, if you begin, just start using these kind of virtual bulletin boards, you can just attract their attention to your session. Because, you know, today's students are really appreciate student-centered classroom and using tech tools. So they can be involved in creating some kind of bulletin boards on these type of tech tools. And moreover, here you are doing double thing. You are utilizing tech tools into your classroom, which is really important nowadays. And moreover, I can say that it can assist the teacher. It can make your work easy peasy, believe me. So, and it can alleviate the workload. You are not holding lots of paper, right? You are just economizing your paper and you can see all the 30 works of your 30 even people can be seen in one screen just. 
and it can encourage active participation because you know the students are really eager to work on like these tech tools because it's really interesting while they are designing it they are working with google they are searching for some motivational quotes on the internet right and then they can even upload their own photos this this is very good chance to them to show off and to see to show their knowledge as well and of course it can incorporate innovative approach because you know the main task of today's teacher is incorporating innovative approach to our sessions so interested in this case don't miss the carlos in presentation here because he's talking what kind of talking about what kind of limiting words can be used in today's modern classroom and how can we use virtual building boards in upper classroom now yeah back Yes, Eva is. Oh, yeah, she's. Yeah, I'm here. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much for this presentation. And uh, actually, I'd like to join the next presenter because, um, Ms. Sanat, it was really nice. You know, after Carla's presentation, I'm going to share some simple ideas about bulletin boards as well. And I've already sent to you that message. And I believe that we should give that. Some kind of freedom to our students i mean i'm a big fan of interactive bulletin boards and i created lots of them in my classes and nowadays i'm i'm thinking about how to make it possible just to go online and to have those bulletin boards online as well because it's a really engaging thing uh, and you can see the comments informative as usual here yeah, thank you very much yeah thank you from georgia <laughs> yes thank you so I, I hope you can join us on um youtube and i do remember your youtube nickname <laughs> so i will see you there because last time you you typed something like you look amazing and it was the first comment i, I show it on the screen <laughs> okay thank you very much for this I wonderful present thank you very much thanks a lot yeah thanks a lot okay hola can you let us know where we should travel now now we are traveling to Panama. Yeah, and we're going to Panama, right? I agree with you. And I'm so and sorry. Uh, let me introduce Carlos de Gracia, who is a qualified teacher and trainer of TESOL and IELTS with more than seven years of experience in different international institutions, such as UNICEF in Jordan and Ministry of Education in Panama and Columbus University. Currently, he serves as an English teacher at Victoriano Lorenzo Bilingual School and Columbus University as an ESP teacher. So, Carlos, hello, hello, hello. Panama. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning from hey. Panama. A good, good evening, evening from all the part of the world. And good afternoon. And good evening, evening here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, great. Carlos, could I ask you to share your screen, please? Yeah. Okay, ready? Can you see it? Yeah, put it in the presentation mode. Okay. Yeah, okay, here we go. Good luck with your presentation. Because as far as you. I know, you go, you're going to continue this topic of bulletin board. Okay, yeah. thank you. Welcome, everyone. I'm Carlos. I'm from Panama. And today I've got the pleasure to, to show you many bulletin boards that that are really amazing for your students. Believe me, they will love it. I'm excited about this. Okay, due to COVID-19, many teachers around the world will start with online teaching and a minority will be heading to the classroom. Bulletin boards are the good complement to bring many inspirational ideas into the classroom. And I will show you why. Okay, the following bulletin boards are a collection of ideas for creative teachers. Okay, 
The first one, it's called the perfect for 2020. Okay, there is nothing more inspirational for students that show a, a, a good message for the first day of, 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 of classes. For example, this one is designed to share motivational message for all the students. You know, when you motivate your students the first day of class, they will be motivated the rest of the year. And this is what I do every single class with my students. Okay, as you know, we are in a pandemic situation. This bulletin board, it's also amazing just to, to show to your students that they can be, for example, superheroes inside a classroom. Okay, and I will tell you why. Okay, the next bulletin board, just an important way to encourage students to take precaution every day. Remember, superheroes always wear a mask. Yes, and the students will love this. Your students will love this. <laughs> In this time, using a face mask would be uh, useful to protect against the virus. For example, in this case, you can display many superheroes. And in this place, you can, for example, write the student's name, for example, Monica, Alexandra, Eva, Natalia, and all of them. And they will think, oh, teacher, I'm like a kind of superhero because look at me, I'm wearing my face mask. Oh, and oh, yes, and your student will love it, believe me. Okay, another important thing that you can do in your classroom is to, to use this kind of bulletin board. Yeah, the showcase, the rules is called this one. For example, in this place, you can put, for example, Mr. De Gracia rules, and you can display many rules in the classroom. And you can explain, and you can interact with your students the first day of class about these rules. Okay, rules in the classroom are important for every teacher at the moment of working with the classroom management. If you establish these rules and you encourage your students to follow these rules, your classroom, your lessons will be amazing, okay? Posters based on rules and take an important role in the classroom, as I mentioned before. Another one, it's called the first day. Do you know? <laughs> This one called my attention since the students uh, look at the Instagram uh, logo and they will, oh, Tisha, that is the Instagram logo. Yes, look at it. And yes, and your student will know, oh, yes, the first day of class, we are going to use the hashtag first day. And yes, and um, using this board, you can, for example, display the aims that you will have during the whole year of class. And you, for example, you can encourage the students to read them. And yes, and for example, to encourage your students to, to follow all of these rules, all of these aims, what they want to achieve. Also, you can, for example, uh, give to your students, uh, if you are a uh, face-to-face lessons, uh, for example, to write what objective are they planning to achieve at the end of the year. And you also, you can put all of them on the bulletin board. This is a nice idea. Since your students will look at this like their own objective, because when you, uh, for example, involve the students into the objective, they will feel that they are part of the class and they will love this idea. The next one, I call it the kindergarten It's school. Why? Because, for example, you can use in your online teaching classroom this idea, okay? If you have the opportunity, you can collect all the uh, images of your students and you can display them because the students will feel that they are relevant. They are relevant into your classroom, okay? And, for example, all of these images can be next to a beautiful message. Just to say, kindergarten, it's cool. They need to feel that vibes into the, into the classroom, okay? This is an inspirational message and a good vibe for the beginning of a new school year. If you teach kindergarten, this is an amazing idea for you. I teach kindergarten and the students love this idea, believe me, because they feel that they are part of the class. 
I will show you another one that is similar to the other one. This you can encourage to your students, for example, to share ideas and they will feel that they are into the classroom and, and you are posting ideas, okay? For example, share the social love is called this one. My kids are feeling like the coolest kids in the town because our class now has an Instagram. Well, about the team ball, little do they know. So, you know, so little ones, your students know Instagram. Oh, they will feel, oh, check Instagram. We are famous. We are, <laughs> we are really, 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 really uh, now. We will be really now with the rest of the classes because we are important. For example, you can use, for example, uh, the grade, second grade, how many students, or oh, for example, the room, uh, probably the province, the state, or the, or the city where you are. Uh, for example, how many posts, you can post pictures of, of your students working on the classroom. And actually you can bring ideas like this, like uh, how many followers they will have, and how many followers are following our classroom. And yes, you see, and this will be all the objectives that they will have in the classroom. Objectives that they have to follow every single day. For example, uh-huh, teamwork, focus, friendship, strength, and celebration. And they need to follow. You will tell to your student, follow these objectives follow these rules and we are going to have an amazing Instagram love classroom. Your student will absolutely love this one. Another one that caught my attention is the in -M -M. For example, Marvelous Magnifico. <laughs> you can use this idea, okay? Uh, you can, uh, for example, to put the initial goal of every single student. For example, in this one, it could be Mario, Matthew. You use that letter M just to put their name. And for example, the rest of them with all the M, um, M's colors, as you see. And your student will look, oh, teacher, this is the chocolate, my favorite one, M and N. And you can uh, inspire this to your students that this is a nice way to bring your students because as you know, uh, your students will be really identified with this idea, okay? Okay, another one, it's Ladybug Love. <laughs> Actually, if you teach to kindergarten students and younger learners, this will be amazing. Okay, look who's being spot in the kindergarten, okay? And you can use this ladybug and display all your students' names on these spaces, okay? And then the students will look at the name. I will say, Tisha, look, there is my name, Oliver and William, and for example, Molly, and they will feel identified with the classroom. This is a great one. Another one, if you want to take your students beyond, for example, you can say, shoot to the moon and you bring a motivational message to your students. For example, shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you will land among the stars. And you can tell to your students, no matter how difficult is our situation now teaching online, you are amazing. We need to go beyond. We need to be like a superheroes, astronauts in this situation and motivate your students with this idea. It's a simple message and it's reading, okay? It's an amazing message for your students. The next one, rainbow of possibilities. Oh my goodness. I, I love this one since you are showing and displaying to your students that they are a rainbow of possibilities. Every single student is different, okay? So that means this is what makes us sense as a teacher, that we have different students, different type of learning, okay? So your students are unique in your classroom and you to, to, to let them know that they are unique, okay? The next one is, okay, selfie station. <laughs> selfie station, the, the students love this, the students love, okay, teacher, look, this is my selfie. 
And if they have the opportunity to be in a face-to-face -face classroom, your students will be, oh, teacher, tomorrow I will bring my selfie and I will display that on my name. <laughs> For example, Kaden, Kaden, the, 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 the coming day, he will bring his selfie, okay? And then the student will feel motivated. Picture yourself in kindergarten. And they will be able to find each other and to know his or her classmates. And I really love it. Okay, another one, unleash your hero. Okay, this is nice to show objective and rules for every single day in your classroom. You can tell that you are a superhero student. Unleash the hero, the superhero in you. And you can use this type of acronyms and, for example, use helpful for age, E for encouraging, A for respectful, and O on task. And you can say your students, for example, responsible, respectful, safe, and you can show this kind of values to your students since the first day of class. The next one is my bulletin board. Dear colleagues, this is my bulletin board that it's behind, okay? In this one, you can show to your students, for example, in this case, objective. And in this part, uh, I'm teaching language, okay? And you can, for example, write the objective on this place, and I will show you. Is this one. Here you will find the objective. In this case, it will be, for example, language. And actually, you write the objective here. And you see, I, I teach kindergarten students. Um, for example, I actually teach math today. Um, the, and the students feel motivated because a colorful classroom, it's really, really uh, encouraging for every single student. They feel motivated with colors since they are young learners. And believe me, that they will love it. Another one, I, I will introduce ideas for the virtual bulletin boss. So this one is nice. I, I haven't tried this one, but I will try in the future. It's Google Keep. You, for example, in this one, you can bring ideas. You can use a sticky notes, and you can capture your thoughts in any format. OK? And for example, you can bring, for example, Google Maps. You can incorporate. Uh, for example, uh, instructions, you can incorporate messages to your students, okay? Each Google account automatically has access to a virtual space where they can create post its yes, for that data management. These posts can be shared with each other users. This clue can include HTML and links as well as images and get these drawings. Oh. This could be nice uh, and a nice idea. And let me show you the next one. The next one I use it with my students at the university and they can interact. It's called Padlet. And I will show you something really, really interesting about Padlet. In this one, uh, your student will have the opportunity to interact and it's for free, let me tell you. Padlet have been a go-to-go -go for a number of our educators for a while now, based on both its easy drag and drop interface and the ability to add photos and video to individual boards. Okay, right now, I will show you this. Look, it's amazing. You can incorporate many ideas and actually you can interact uh, virtual with your students. You can show many ideas. And for example, look, here are the names of the students. You can share, uh, for example, this link with your students. This will be mine, OK? But I will stop uh, this one, and I will show you one that I've got for you, OK? Uh, let me show you. Uh -huh. OK, this one. Okay, I will show you one idea that I brought. Sorry, to you. Carlos, you should you stop sharing the screen. So right now you have oh, to yes. share it again. Yes, I actually will share it again just to show to 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 them the the ideas. Okay, okay, this one it will be amazing. Can you see it, Eva? The Padlet. 
Yeah. Yes, actually, it could be a good idea, and it will explain to you, for example, how to use it. It, it is really easy, and your student will love it. For example, you click on this um, icon. For example, you can write, for example, your name, Mr. De Gracia. And for example, actually, you can submit files, okay? You can submit files to the classroom. You can, for example, add links to the Padlet. And this will be nice for a student for flipping a classroom. Actually, you can take a photo or, for example, you can share a website. Actually, check all the tools that you will have to use Padlet because, in my opinion, this is one of the most wonderful virtual bulletin boards that you will have. For example, check. This is one that I've got with many of my students, and, and it's really amazing. Okay, you can share ideas. You can be, for example, really close with your students, and you can make many of this one. And let me tell you, it's for free. Okay, it would be a great idea. I, I'm really and absolutely happy with uh, all of you because this will be a great experience as a teacher uh, teaching online. Because I just start uh, one month ago teaching online, and let me tell you you will have a universe. Your student will love you if you follow all of these uh, advices that we are giving to you, believe me. Thank you, That's Carlos. Thank you very much pleasure. for sharing these ideas. Yeah, thank you very much. And actually, um, I promise to continue this topic. And, you know, I prepared some kind of a tiny gift uh, for our teachers who are watching us, and they will be able to get this gift together with other materials. And as you can see, I, I, I've created, um, let's say, a template for the bulletin board, um, back to school bulletin board. So it's name, take what you need, give what you can. And I like this idea about sharing and caring. And actually, you can see that what, what I like to do here, I prepare two pages. One page is about take what you need and the students can read some kind of encouragement and also the instruction, like pick any of these cards you need right now, encourage yourself and stay determined in life. And the other shade of paper is about give what you can. So students, they uh, have uh, blank papers and they can read the instruction. You can provide support, you can instill confidence and you can empower. So use any of these cards and share your uh, your support and so on and so forth and I created all the cards you need so actually what teachers should do they should print these cards and cut them out into pieces so these cards should be put on the bulletin board and there is the real sat for such students and then also you have this you see uh, blank cards as well these are for give what you can so students can pick up a blank card and write their motivational phrase or what they want to share with their um, classmates and actually this is the way how the bulletin board should look as you can see this is the name take what you need and give what you can those two pages where students can read the instructions and also you can see that they simply can take what they need right now and the ideas are really different. These are supportive messages and they can share what they can share because they can take that blank card and write the idea and put on the board and someone else who, need, who really needs some kind of support can come up and take the card. So this material will be included into the material folder which will be sent to all the participants later on as a follow-up email. So. I do hope that this session was really productive for you all. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you for being Thank with you, us. Thank you, everyone. And Many please continue you. being so active on uh, in YouTube. Thank Chat you off. very much. It's a nice time to figure nice words. <laughs> OK, bye-bye. Hello bye. to Panama again. Bye-bye. OK, and now we have something special to announce. Yeah, actually, you know, uh, I've been waiting for this session for almost seven hours because this person who's going to present right now is, um, I would say, is my guru, the person who inspires me all the time. And thanks to him, I can always go further and further in methodology. And actually, 
I'm really thankful, thanks God, that one day I was allowed to meet this person. Let me introduce him. So, ta -da -da -da. This person has been a teacher of English for 37 years, for most of that time in the Middle East and North Africa. He has taught in government schools in Sudan and Saudi Arabia and was director of a summer school in Oxford for 10 years. He has been a teacher trainer since 1994 in public and private education and has run workshops for teachers across the MENA region as well as in Turkey, Azerbaijan, Ukraine and the UK. His first book was published by Oxford University Press in 2015. His special interest in the uses of drama in ELT. He is a Celta tutor and a local tutor for the Cambridge Delta course. Please, round of applause. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> Paul, how are you? Hello, we are really happy right. to see you here. Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for that lovely introduction. I'm very pleased to be here. Very pleased to be here. Hi, Eva. Hi, Olga. Hi, everybody. Um, Hello. Okay. Um, Great. Um, so, and the topic is really interesting and really important nowadays. So, right. what I'd like to ask you to share your screen, if it's possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah, and uh, please open your pres Yeah, that's it in the presentation mode. Is that okay? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, here we go. So see you in okay. 10, 11, 12, 15 minutes. I don't know how much time it right. takes us. Okay. okay, good luck with your presentation. See you. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Great. Okay, authentic materials, everybody. Authentic materials. Great. The first thing we need to say is 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 it's quite a um, there's a big difference, I think, uh, between authentic materials and what we might term semi-authentic materials. Um, I mean, we we all have that experience of uh, with clothes. You know, there's a big difference between buying a uh, I don't know. A, a designer, something which is really a designer shirt and something which looks very like a designer shirt. But, you know, if you only paid $15 for it, then it probably isn't a, a, um, a you know, it probably isn't a Gucci shirt. Um, so um, one of the first things that, 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 that teachers need to, to um, differentiate between is, are the materials I'm using actually authentic? Or are they semi-authentic? Um, and lots of course books these days, lots of course books are very good at, and, and they do it for a very good reason because, because of the reasons that I will go into. Course books try and include as much as possible material which is semi-authentic and in some cases authentic. So, if something is authentic, it means that it has been specifically designed for native speaker consumption with absolutely no thought at all for non-native accessibility. So the material, whether it's listening material or written, you know, reading material, has been designed for the native speaker market and that, that they've given absolutely no consideration to anybody who might be learning that language. That is authentic material. So if the material has been adapted in any way, so if anything in the material, whether it's spoken material or written material, if any words have been changed, if any parts have been cut to make it easier, if anything has been adapted in any way, then we can only call it semi-authentic. And if you go back, uh, just to, to go back to that that image of your your shirt, you know, if you if you if you buy a piece of clothing, if it really is, I, I keep using the word Gucci, but let's just let's stick to Gucci. If it really is Gucci, uh, then it means that he, nothing has been changed. It has come from that manufacturer. It has come from that designer, unchanged, unadulterated. So 
Authentic material then is something which is a means it is a hundred percent. If it's ninety nine percent, then it's semi authentic. Great. One of the problems, obviously, with material which has been designed for native speakers is that it is unregulated, it's undiluted, it's the language that people actually use. And that, in a minute, when we look at the advantages of using authentic material, that's one of the, 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 the very good points about it, is what you are doing is introducing learners of English to English that English people or English speaking people use with all its ums and ers and you knows and uh, with all its weird and wonderful ways of saying things. So I've underlined it here or I've highlighted it here as it's actually used by native speakers. Um, I mean, I can remember learning French, for example, at school and then going to France and thinking, is this the same language I just learned in that classroom? Really? Is it? Of course it isn't, because the French that we learn in the classroom, or anyway, the, the French that I learned in the 1970s, I don't know if it's different nowadays, but the French that I learned was, okay, the grammar, uh, uh, there were very good things that I learned in a classroom. There were very good things that I learned in a French classroom, but actually going to France and listening to how French people really use French was something completely different. Um, great, okay, so what are the good things about authentic materials? Well, the first thing is a sense of achievement. It's that, it's that, that idea that you can say to yourself, well, do you know what, today, I actually, we actually listened to a small part of a, a radio broadcast, or I actually read something which was real. It was a, it wasn't made up. It wasn't from a course book. It was, it made me feel good. It made me feel that I can actually, uh, you know, I'm getting somewhere because I can actually understand the same thing that native speakers are going to read. So, using authentic materials is giving your learners. Um, a sense of achievement. Achieving what? Achieving um, an ability to do something that 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 native speakers of this language actually uh, um, uh, speak. You know, that actually the, 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 to be able to to understand something that native speakers actually understand as well. Once you've started, I mean, this will not be the same. This will depend on the learner. But if you introduce, if you can say to learners, look, here's an English text. It's not from a course book. It's a real English text. And we've done some work on it. And you've understood. You might not have understood it all. But look, you've, you're really beginning to understand English now. It might encourage them on their own to go and do the same, to go and find other stuff. To say, well, I might not understand everything, but now I have the confidence to actually go and do some things on my own. So it's not only is it is it giving them a sense of achievement, but it's also pushing them to do things on their own. Um, I talked earlier on about the real world of communication and I, you know, just my experience of going to France for the first time when I was, uh, um, I don't know how old I was, 13, 14, uh, and listening to French people. Um, using authentic listening material means that you're introducing learners to all the, the what we might call uh, idiosyncrasies of, of, of speech, all the ums and the ers, the way that people don't actually say, I would have told him, or they said, I'd have told him. The way people don't actually say, I don't know, they say, don't know, don't know. The way people don't say, I'm going to go tomorrow, they say, I'm going to go tomorrow, I'm going to go tomorrow. You're introducing them to all these things, as well as all those filler sounds, you know? In it, all those little things that people put in. So 
it, that needs to be introduced to learners so that they, their ear is getting used to all that. So this is these are the this that's a, another very very good thing about using authentic material. Uh, it needs to be done very sensitively, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, it's no good just throwing uh, things at learners. You need to 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 do this um, quite sensitively. Um, if you're teaching vocational English. So you, you, for example, you, you're teaching factory workers or techni te technical people, people working in, 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 in different departments within a factory, or you're teaching legal English. Um, actually giving them real documents to look at is pushing them along the road to really understanding. Um, part of the reason for them uh, learning English is to be able to understand real documents. So it seems like a very logical thing. Well, if you are here in this classroom, to be able to understand documents which are real, real English documents, documents written for native speakers, then, then uh, let's have a look at them. Let's start by looking at real documents. So, um, those two things are together it's you're saying look this is a real document this is something that we're looking at in the classroom so that later you will have less trouble understanding that kind of document because you've already seen it in the classroom it won't be a shock to you um often um learners appreciate things which are up to date and if you are, are using um uh, newspapers online um, or, or commercials or, or podcasts uh, it, they're usually things which are up to date uh, and that will um, so using up-to-date material you know um, a lot of real material is material that's just been written so that's that's another a, a very good aspect of of authentic materials so basically what you're trying to do with authentic materials is to bridge the gap between a classroom and the real world a lot of our learners are learning english because they want to be able to communicate in the real world so taking stuff from the wheel with the real world and bringing it into the classroom is a great way of making that bridge between the two um, so when you're choosing authentic materials, I think four areas that I'm going to look at briefly. Suitability. You need to ask yourself, well, is this suitable? As you do with all materials, whether they're authentic or not authentic. Um, is it interesting for my students? Is it actually relevant to their needs? If they're paying students, is this what they've paid for? Is this the kind of English they've paid for? And will it be useful outside of the classroom? And will it motivate the students? Will it make them think, now I'm learning something? When you get a piece of material, and I think you'll see this uh, very much today, I've, I've been in contact with Anastasia, and um, she certainly um, has really thought about this. I can see it very clearly in what she's done. She's really... Uh, 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 sat and she's using literature today. So she's using a real book and a real film. And she's really looked at it and thought, yeah, I can get a lot out of this. So she's really gone to town, as we say, on exploiting uh, and thinking just how much can I get out of it. Um, so you may have a piece of material which is just you may be doing this with a very low level group so you may just have a a a, a, a menu from a restaurant so it's a, it's a simple menu from a restaurant um so you need to get that menu and think okay i've got these elementary learners i want them to look at this real menu how can i exploit it what kind of exercises can i do on this um to and what can i how can i get the most out of this piece of, of real uh, material um, and connected to that is looking at it and thinking well is it too easy is it too difficult 
will I have to, t if I have to pre-teach a load of vocabulary, is that going to be a little bit demotivating? I mean, one of the things that, that you, if you go on to any uh, teacher training course, they will always tell you, and of course it's very true, is you can use authentic material which is too difficult for the student, which is actually too difficult. So you can use, for example, um, a, a, a piece of literature with low level students. It depends on the exercise. It's not the material. It's what you do with the material. It's the kind of exercises, the kind of activities that you are asking to, uh, the, to the students to do that should be at their level. It's the activities that should be at their level, not necessarily the material itself. But even that has limits. Yeah, if you're pre-teaching loads and loads of vocabulary, then it probably is too difficult. Um, but uh, this is a point that I would reiterate. If you are using material which is too difficult, it doesn't matter that it's too difficult. What matters is the kind of activity that you've set on it. And, uh, you know, uh, advertising, uh, visual appeal. Does the, does the material look authentic? Yeah, is it appealing? Does it grab the student's attention? Okay, so um, is it all good news? Well, uh, those are all the good things. Um, we've looked at lots of good things. Um, so this is rather a little bit reiterating what I've said, but it's, it's worth reiterating. Lower level students might be overwhelmed by authentic material. So you have to make sure that the kind of exercises that you set on it are at their level and that the material is not too difficult so even though it's very easy to say oh well it doesn't matter about the material it matters about the kind of exercises that you set even within that there are limits what the student doesn't want to be to be faced with is something that's completely overwhelming uh, because they may just switch off going to the bottom of this page we've got copyright do 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 be careful that's a very practical um uh, consideration um other questions we need to ask about material um you need to look at it and i, I think this is um uh, you know i've worked a lot in 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 uh, for example working in saudi arabia if you're going to use material in Saudi Arabia, you need to make sure that it is culturally appropriate. We've talked already, uh, I mean, not only in Saudi Arabia, in lots of parts of the world, you need to look at material and think, are there parts of this that are not culturally appropriate? And remember, if you then adapt it, it is no longer authentic material. So you need to find something which is wholly appropriate without adapting it, and then you can call it authentic material. Um, another point here is, um, just to, to add, is high input, low output. What you don't want is material that you spend hours developing activities for, for a 15-minute slot in your lesson. So make sure that you don't have material, which is what I would call high input, low output. That's not, no good for anybody. You don't want material. Uh, it's, it's demotivating for the teacher. If you have material which is you spend hours and hours on, then you, you use it for 15 minutes. Um, out, OK, we talked about outdated. Make sure it's, it's up to date. Um, just that one at the bottom there, idiosyncrat idiosyncratic use of language and or error. Now, remember that if you're listening to um, uh, a piece of authentic listening, you may have people. I mean, native speakers don't always speak grammatically. And that's something that you need to be very aware of. Um, you you know um, you may have particular accents or particular ways of speaking which are which have idiosyncrasies which are are not they're not the same grammar that you've been teaching your students so be very careful of that. Great, okay. So I'm going to um, hand over now to Anastasia. Um, and Anastasia is going to. Um, I can see, as I say, as I've mentioned before. She's got some great material here, um, and she has, has really, um, I can see she's, she's looked at that material and she's really thought about 
what, how much can I pull out of that? She's got a whole range of exercises um, that, she could, that she's using. Great. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing there now, and I'm going to come back. Yeah, and actually, I want to invite uh, Anastasia right now. What's going on? Great. And uh, there is one reason why I'd like to do it this way. Well, I can you hear me? I, yeah, I can hear. Ah, nice you know? Look at our colors. We've got yeah, red, yeah. And yellow. Look at yellow. them. Look at us. Wow. And you're surrounded by Ukrainians right now, but I'm not sure why Olga is freezing. Anyway, we should do it. And I'm sure that Anastasia will help me a bit because I know that today is a very special day. And here we go. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, DM. Happy, Harvey. Harvey. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Yeah, and Happy I'd birthday. like to ask our participants just to uh, help us a bit. I know that right now you are typing your messages like congratulating Mr. <laughs> Paul, but please don't forget to mention the country because can you imagine that right now uh, the greetings are coming from different parts of the world and I'd like Mr. Paul to see uh, yeah, so we have happy birthday from Georgia. I know Natya Vasadze, she's from Georgia. Actually, you've already got three uh, birthday greetings and wishes from Ukraine. Again, Georgia, and Georgia is really active today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 you can see cheers from Georgia. Someone says opening champagne right now. And <laughs> here we go. Happy birthday from Brazil. Great. Brazil, right. okay. Yeah, from Brazil. <laughs> yeah, and happy birthday from Morocco as well. <laughs> yeah, can you see it? Happy birthday from Armenia as well. We can see happy birthday okay. from Ukraine. Thank and you. I saw, yeah, this one as well. Happy birthday from India. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Look at that. We're going all over yeah, the world. Happy birthday from Uzbekistan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> from all over the world. Thank yeah, you. Kev, that was I've, great. I've never had so many birthday greetings, so many international yeah. greetings before. Yeah, Thank to you. celebrate. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. And this is your birthday. And that was a really nice session. And I should tell you that I'm going to watch it again and again. Um, and we should continue with it. So now, Ola. Yeah, I'm really, really glad to introduce my lovely colleague, Anastasia Yanchishna from Ukraine, who is a passionate bilingual teacher with more than six years of tutoring, teaching, guidance, and counseling experience. She holds a Cambridge certificate in English language teaching to adults, CELTA. Uh, dedicated to creating an enjoyable, inviting, and dynamic learning at atmosphere. She implements traditional and innovative methods to motivate students to learn both English and Spanish. Anastasia conducted a large number of methodological seminars, teacher training courses, and preparatory courses for Cambridge International exams at the Agency of Foreign Languages, RUNA. She attended a variety of professional development workshops centered on learning goals, classroom management, student motivation, and engaging learning activities. Thanks well, a lot for a lovely introduction, Olga. Thank, Thank you. you. So, good luck with your presentation. So, can you uh, make your presentation in the presentation mode? Yeah. Is it okay now? Mm, let's check. Now it's just, yeah, that's great. That's great. So, here we go. Good luck with your presentation. Good. Thanks a lot. So, uh, but first, I would like to say hello to everyone and uh, warm greetings from Ukraine. It's really my pleasure to be here and to have this really great possibility to take part in this awesome event. And uh, the purpose of my talk is, first of all, to share some fascinating ideas on how to use authentic materials in the classroom effectively. And uh, what's more, I'm going to illustrate my own activities that I've designed for my students. 
Hope you'll find them useful. So let's get started. To tell the truth, uh, being a non-native speaker of English, I was been looking for various classroom approaches to help my students to have better pronunciation, to sound like a native speaker in terms of vocabulary and style, and what's more, to explore the culture. And I reckon that one of the most attractive strategies is to use English movies in order to teach them real English. So, and now I have a question for you in order to start my activities. So, can you guess the movie? Four, three, two, and now. So, I'm pretty sure you know this handsome man from the movie Sherlock, right? And now I'm going to share seven tips for using movie clips in class for different levels of English. Why is it so important? Uh, what to say that ESL video activities of any kind should be first of all fun and enjoyable. But there is a problem. Sometimes some movies, uh, like watching full length movies, can be a little bit frustrating for students. So, how can we deal with that? The answer is simple. Just please use short movie clips. And now, I'm going to show you a short video clip and then I will explain uh, what kind of activities uh, you're able to use later. Okay, so Eva, could you help me? You wearing any pants? No. Okay. <laughs> Back in your palace. I'm, <clears throat> oh, oh, I'm seriously fighting an impulse to steal an ashtray. <laughs> Seriously, what? I don't know. Here to see the Queen? Oh, apparently, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just once, <clears throat> can you two behave like grown ups? We solve crimes. Okay, that's pretty enough. So, how can we use this short uh, movie clip? The first of all, uh, you can give your students the opportunity to guess the dialect. Right? But first, of course, you need to play the scene through once without the sound and allow your students to debate what's going on and probably to guess the topic. It can be either argument or, I don't know, friendly meeting, something like that. After watching, uh, your students can try to come up with dialect to fit the clip. And after, after that, you give them the opportunity to watch the whole uh, scene again. The second activity that uh, can be useful is silent movie. It's really similar, but still. You need to divide the class into pairs or teams and uh, ask two students from the same team sit back to back. One of the students is going to describe what is happening on the screen and the other one is supposed to guess, right? And after that, after that you again watch the whole uh, movie play, right? Uh, the third one is about production game. So, um, again, it's not necessarily important to use the same movie. Of course, you can use a lot of them, but still, um, you need to play the uh, whole scene, right? And then uh, give an opportunity for students to guess what's going on next, right? And uh, what, what's, what's really important here when you use these three activities, for example, that uh, your students actually do not need to watch the whole movie, right? And at the same time, you give them uh, the opportunity to develop their speaking skills, right? And based on this communicative approach. 
And again, the um, games, the activities are pretty simple, so it won't require a lot of preparation from you, from your side. Now, I suggest you watch uh, one more video clip, a little bit. All right, so uh, Eva, help me, please, here. Anything to add, John? John? Uh, yeah, yeah, listening. What is that? That is me. Well, it's a me substitute. Don't be so hard on yourself. You know, I value your little contributions. You yeah, know, it's been there since nine this morning. Is it? Where were you? Helping Mrs. H with her Sudoku. Okay, nice. So after watching this short video, you can use this boss game. Right, that's really interesting. And by the way, uh, as I mentioned before, these activities are for multi-level, uh, for different uh, levels of English, right? So this one you can even use for uh, students uh, who have, for example, elementary, pre-intermediate levels, right? So buzz game, uh, put the students into teams and ask a question such as, for example, what color is Charlotte's sweater, right? And then start the clip. And uh, when a student sees the answer, they buzz, right? By making a comical noise, or they can also stand up, right? Or raise their hands, for example. Uh, this, the next one is about choosing a word. Here we have to prepare the list of words you're, go you're going to uh, give them, right? And uh, their task is to stand up when they uh, hear this word, not see, but hear, right? And it's really a uh, good practice for um, listening skills, uh, developing listening skills, right? Um, next one is about describing the place, right? And again, here you develop their um, like attentiveness, right, uh, for details. And they use uh, the words they know. They shouldn't use the words from the movie, right? But uh, for example, uh, they can describe the room, right, and what they can see there, right? And um, after that, they uh, share their ideas with their partners, of course. And, final, and finally, uh, my favorite one is about acting out, right? So um, you need, again, to watch a movie clip, right, and uh, give two possible ways uh, for your students. They can either uh, perform what they actually have watched before, or you can give them the script. And again, here we have the possibility to um, to practice connected speech, right? And to model and drill pronunciation of the words uh, which are new for them, right? I like it very much. And by the way, I use it uh, not only for adults, but also for uh, like teenagers and children as well. And now, uh, as I promised, uh, I'm going to illustrate my own activities I designed for my students. And the first question again, uh, can you guess the movie? I usually use this uh, activity in order to have this lead-in stage, right? In order to get uh, my students interested in it, right? So you can use either photos or even um, some um, written things, right? Uh, but it also can help uh, them to guess what the movie they're going to watch. Uh, one more question that can be about this uh, particular uh, activity is that um, there are dozens of movies and probably not all students, right, have watched all of them, right? So uh, the best way is to ask your students to prepare the list of their favorite movies, right? For example, uh, three movies they have already watched and three, for example, they want to watch. And then you'll have this list of movies and for you it won't be difficult to choose that movie that uh, they have already watched, right? So um, I think that you already guessed this movie, right? So this is actually The Great Gatsby. Uh, in order to introduce the topic, right, I usually use either um, exercise based on a poster. So here you can, uh, for example, you look at the poster and you ask them to write down 10 words. The first words that come to their minds, right? And it's really, again, a great practice uh, of vocabulary. Or you can uh, show them the trailer, the Great Gatsby trailer, and ask to predict what the movie is going to be about, right? And also, 
Um, when I give such kind of exercises, I usually divide them into pairs and ask them to work together. Because it's really important to give the possibility to speak more, right? It's not only about listening, but about speaking as well. Okay. Next, um, I decided to choose some words that I would pre-teach, for example, today, right? And I've, uh, I've uh, decided, for example, these six words, right, to give them. But again, uh, it's not about the whole movie, right? You can choose words what you actually want to pre-teach them, right? Then also you can give them a um, wide range of uh, words connected with slang, right? In order to enrich their vocabulary in that way. And also here we have multiple choice questions. Then actually can check uh, whether they remember or not, right? Next one, uh, next two activities are based on listening. So um, the first one um, is about a multiple choice task and the second one is about gap filling. And by the way, these two uh, activities is really important for those who are preparing for uh, international exams, right? Because uh, it helps to uh, practice their listening for uh, specific information, right? And for general information as well. And by the way, the best way is to do is to use uh, movies for that, right? Depending on their level, of course. Next one, if you want to uh, teach grammar, right? So here we have a nice example of exercise uh, based on um, past tenses because I've chosen the part of a movie script uh, with with all um, with examples of past tenses actually. Here you won't find, for example, future or present, right? And so again, um, first you can give them opportunity to do it uh, individually, and then you will ask them to watch this uh, whole video clip and check whether the uh, answers are right or not, right? Next one. Um, I decided to uh, combine these two, uh, like, different uh, sources of authentic material, right? So I decided to develop my own exercise based on the book and the movie. And again, here we have the question whether uh, we need to watch the whole movie and to read the whole book. No, not necessarily, actually. Why? Because you can uh, take, for example, two pieces of uh, the text and work with them, right? So uh, here you have this text A in red and text B in green. And how can you develop actually uh, your own exercises based on text, right? So first of all, uh, you divide them into paths, for example, and um, for example, into student A and student B, right? And give time to read the whole text. And then you will ask them to work together and say, uh, which ta text is uh, taken from the movie script and which one is uh, uh, from the book. That's really interesting because they have the possibility to uh, to check and to compare the style, right? Uh, the vocabulary, right? Okay. And after that, after that, they have already discussed, you have been monitoring them. You give a uh, next task, right? So uh, to student A, you give uh, the task uh, with text A, right? That refers to text A and uh, to student B, the text that refers to text B. What is important here? You give them uh, time to work with vocabulary. Of course, you can choose your own words, right? But uh, before you give this task, uh, fold the paper with uh, the answers. So they are uh, not able to see the answers, right? Like you here, you see now, right? So, and after that, uh, when you give them, for example, five minutes, right? They finish. And after that, in order to save your time for checking the whole task, you ask them to unfold their papers and below you see the answers. That's really nice um, exercise in order to check whether they understand or non, not some words, right? So what else can you do with the text B, for example? It is taken from the uh, movie script, right? And again, you can give them opportunity to watch the whole uh, movie clip, right? And 
um, either to work with a partner and role play this text, or you may practice with them again, connect a speech and uh, elicit some uh, unknown vocabulary, for example, if you want to produce, right? Some kind of words. That's really an uh, interesting task. Why? Because they, you get them interested not only in uh, watching movies, but also in uh, reading uh, authentic literature, right? Okay. Next one. Again, uh, these exercises are based on the book. Um, I have chosen some words. And uh, what the first task? I asked my students to work together and discuss the meaning, try to guess the meaning right without any context after that uh they have opportunity to match the words with their definitions it's another task after that and uh, finally i give them the um paragraphs right again taken from the um script and their task is to complete with missing words and the words they use are given in the task number one right of course, uh, step by step, when you do task number one and task number two, of course, you'll provide them with uh, correct answers for sure. That's why they uh, won't have uh, problems with task number three, right? That's really interesting uh, to give them the opportunity to work with um, words, right? That actually also are used when he was writing right, this um, novel, right? Um, what is important? What, why I like um, exercises based on vocabulary? Because it, it gives a uh, really great possibility for them to use them in everyday life, right? But um, when you teach vocabulary, it's really important to give them opportunity to first define the meaning, right? Then uh, spelling, pronunciation, which you can do with the help of movies, right? and use the usage of these words again you can use either movie scripts or um scripts from the uh book right um there is a problem that sometimes when students uh, do their tasks they don't know the vocabulary and in order to avoid translation right because uh, it's, it's not the best way um, to translate all the time it's really important to elicit the meaning either from the context or um, give them opportunity to guess whether it is for example positive or negative good or bad right so uh when you choose the list of words you're going to pre-teach for example so um you use the meaning right of the words and then you just ask simple uh, simple questions right is it positive or negative right as you see here uh, on a slide okay and here i prepared uh the list of um, online and offline sources you might use in your classroom of course there are lots of them and uh, by the way all those um exercises i prepared and all those um, all this information I've uh, discussed with you today, uh, you will get um, in a folder. Let's keep in touch. Unfortunately, I haven't got the possibility to see all of you now, but I feel your support. And I want to wish you a happy back to school day. Thank you. Thank you, Anastasia. It was really useful. It's, it's it's just the ready-made lesson plan. And uh, I think that those who are watching us are really lucky because after this marathon, they will get the ready-made lesson and they can simply use it whenever they want. It, that's really great. And it was a very interesting session. And then there's, so I guess, have some problems <laughs> with my pronunciation <laughs> after eight hours of this marathon. But anyway, I'm still just feel a bit energetic, a bit. I did okay. all my best in order to make it more interesting for the audience. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, and you can see the comments like, thank you. And thank you, Mr. Paul, for commenting. So he said that plenty of variety, useful ideas and confidently delivered sessions. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank I'm you happy very to, much. to read it then, right now. Yeah, so I should tell you guys that it was the last session for today. Thank you for your session, Miss Anastasia, and we're going to um, have a good day. Finish. Bye. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. Bye. See you. 
And what is what we want to do right now, Ola? <laughs> can you tell yeah. us? <laughs> yes, I can. So it was really a long but super productive and enjoyable day. So we would like to, to, to send huge thanks to all the speakers who were presenting today. Um, uh, you know, Eva, why not to go back to 12 o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> when we said hello? Yeah, yeah, when we started with those um, pictures of our presenters with some kind of energetic music and um, I'd like to tell my huge thanks to Tamar Dalidze, Georgia. And Olga Bond from Poland. Elmira Tajibaeva, Kazakhstan. And Sonia Cook from the UK. Um, Akbar Kafori, Iran. And Nanam Sakuradze from Georgia. Uh, Professor Abdel Majid. Ozyan, Morocco. And Rashida Gyozim from Morocco as well. Sevilla Liva, Azerbaijan. And Gulbahar Mamadiva from Uzbekistan. Natalia Diechuk, Ukraine. And Rosie Finnegan from the UK or Italy. <laughs> Both yeah. countries. Fatima Samedzadeh, Azerbaijan. Um, and. Um, uh, I've lost something, I guess. Gilbahor Mamadiva from Uzbekistan. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Thank many you. presenters. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Adat Tajibaeva, Uzbekistan. Mm, and, and who? Our, our very special person uh, from Panama. Carlos de Gracia, <laughs> yes. Yeah, also, um, I, I, I don't remember if you said about Rauf Pasha Bayli. No, we haven't. So, Sevilla Liva, Azerbaijan, and? And Rauf Pasha Bayli from? Azerbaijan, Tamuna Tilaverava, Georgia. And Parvina, Parvina, Parvina. Eva Parvina? Eva from? Azerbaijan. From Azerbaijan. And, so many speakers. Yeah, and the last pair of speakers. Mr. Paul Harvey, the UK and Morocco, and happy birthday, Mr. Paul Harvey. And Anastasia and Chishna from Ukraine. Thank you very much. And of course, I'd like to extend my greetings and thanks and everything in my heart to you, in spite of the fact that we are in Ukraine right now, but we in different places in different cities and just about 800 kilometers separate us from each other so Ola thank you very much for joining this marathon and thank you for being with all the speakers for almost eight hours can you imagine that no I can't thank you for having invited and Eva for making it happen because this is your idea <laughs> yes I, I have to tell this secret it's not a secret anymore but still so yeah. huge thanks to you and now i guess that all the teachers are ready to start in the new school year with great ideas to yes. implement in their classrooms thank you very much and again i want to remind you that firstly if you want to share this marathon um, with your colleagues you can always click the share link copy the link and send and even to um to give a piece of advice what kind of session would be interesting for them to watch also um in in a day or maybe a bit later because you know today people from other parts of the world like philippines indonesia we have registrations from those countries as well they're going to watch it a bit later so in a day um or more we'll send you a follow-up email with the link where you can go and um download all the materials speakers shared today with you also you will have that presentation that we show with you as well and you can get all those stories like right and left bulletin boards and all that stuff and also you will have that 
card for Mr. Paul Harvey as well, because it's included in the presentation. So we will always remember when his birthday is. And if you wish, you yeah. can always send him greetings, greetings um, each year, why not? So thank you very much for being with us. It was a long day, I believe, just eight hours. Just thank you. eight hours. <laughs> yeah, just eight hours. So thank you very much. See you. Thank you. Soon. Guys. Don't forget that we are going to run free webinars, workshops, courses with Mr. Paul Harvey, with Mr. Samad Samadov, as well as with so nice Sonia Cook. So see you soon. Please follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, and also don't forget to check your emails because from time to time we can send you some kind of offers. And if you think that you have something to share with other teachers across the globe, don't hesitate and contact us. And who knows, maybe you will be presenting during the next marathon, Teachers Voice. Just don't hesitate. Let your voice be heard. Love you all, guys. See you. Bye. Bye. -bye.